this topic. Let's open up with John 8.32. Let's start there. John 8.32. All right? John chapter 8, verse 32. Come on. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. Read. And ye shall know the truth. And you shall know the truth. Come on. And the truth shall make you free. And the truth shall make you free. Read again. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. Read. And ye shall know the truth. And ye shall know the truth. Come on. And the truth shall make you free. So this is Christ speaking. He says, you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. One thing you need to understand as a nation, we don't know the truth. We have not been taught the truth. We are deceived. We are confused. We are lost as a nation. It's time for us to, to know what the truth is according to the Bible. Read that theme one more again for me. Okay, come on. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. Read. And ye shall know the truth. And you shall know the truth. The 12 tribes of Israel, you shall know the truth. Go ahead. And the truth shall make you free. This is the black Messiah, Jesus the Christ speaking. He says, we shall know the truth and the truth shall make us free. Because as a nation, wherever we are scattered in the lands of our captivities, we are in the diaspora on this day. Guess what? We don't know the truth. We've been destroyed. We've been confused. We've been lost, oppressed and depressed. We don't know what the truth is. We've been feeding on lies ever since we got here. Understand that. But it's time to know the truth as it is written. Give me that in Psalms 119, verse 142. Let's get to what the truth is, okay? Because as a people, we have not been taught what the truth is. We're going to know what the truth is. The truth is not only that, but we're going to learn who the devil is upon this earth. We're going to know who the 12 tribes of Israel are upon this earth. We're going to know who the men of sin. We're going to know who Lucifer is. We're going to know all that. Today's will be a revealing class. Understand that. Read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 142. Go ahead. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. Read. And thy law is the truth. What is the truth? And thy law is the truth. According to the Bible, the laws of God is the truth. We have not been taught that. We have never understood what the truth was until this day. Now, according to the Bible, we know that the laws of God is the only truth upon this earth. The Bible is the only true book on this planet earth. And the 12 tribes of Israel, the Bible was only given to you and your sons and your daughters. Understand that. Go back to John 8, 32. Watch this. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. And the reason why I love this verse so much is because as a people, we've been living in darkness. So this scripture right here will reveal unto us what the truth is of who we are, where we come from, what happened to us, and the nations that are oppressed us, what are they called in the Bible, and who the devil is. Read again. Read that. 832 verse. The book of John chapter 8 verse 32. Read. And ye shall know the truth. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. And the truth shall make you free. Okay. Jump up to verse 31 now. Because Christ was speaking to the disciples here. Read that. Verse 31. Come on. Then said Jesus to those Jews. Then said Jesus to those who? Then said Jesus to those Jews. Come on. Which believed on him. Because Christ was only teaching the Jews. He wasn't teaching other nations. He wasn't teaching other races. You understand? Likewise, when we teach today, we don't go to the other nations to teach them the gospel because it wasn't for them. And it's not for them. You understand? Read that again. Then what? Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. Then said Jesus the Christ, the black Messiah, to those Jews, to those Israelites which believed on him. Go ahead. If ye continue in my word. If we continue in the word that he taught us, read. Then are ye my disciples indeed? Then are we my uh, then are ye my disciples indeed? So we must not only was we believe on Christ, but we must continue in the things which he taught us. We must continue in the laws of the Most High God that He commanded unto us when He walked the earth, when He retaught us God's laws. Understand that? Give me Isaiah twenty nine verse eighteen, because the truth the truth of the Bible is going to reveal unto us is going to open our eyes because our spiritual eyes are closed. Our spiritual ears, they are closed also. We are blind and we deaf. But with this Bible, our spiritual eyes will be opened and our spiritual ears will be opened. We'll understand, thus saith the Lord. Read what you got. Come on. The book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verse 18. Read. And in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book. You see that? Shall the deaf do what? Shall the deaf hear the words of the book. In that day is this day, is the last days. We are in the last days. It says, in that day, they shall what? In that day. In the last days, which is where we are in the times we're living in now. We're living in the last days. Go ahead. Shall the deaf hear the words of the book? The deaf will hear the words of the book. Because as a people, we've been spiritually deaf. But the Lord says, through Isaiah, 
in that day, in these last days, when the laws, when the Most High God wakes up the 12 tribes of Israel, we're going to hear the words of this book. Go ahead. And the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity. You see that? The eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity. Meaning what? Out of darkness. Because we're spiritually deaf and blind. But the Lord promised us that we're going to see out of obscurity. We're going to hear the words of the book. Give me that in Matthew chapter 11, verse 5. Because Christ taught this. Christ said the same thing that Isaiah is saying. You understand? Watch this. Matthew chapter 11, verse 5. Come on. The book of Matthew chapter 11, verse 5. Read. Really? The blind receive their sight. You see that? The blind receive their sight. Because who's the blind? We're the blind. But today, on this day, we're receiving our sight back. We're getting our sight back. Go ahead. And the lame walk. And the lame walk. Because we're going to walk uprightly now going forward. Go ahead. And the lepers are cleansed. And the lepers are cleansed. Come on, because... We, we defile by the customs and traditions of these nations. But on this day, we are going to be cleansed from all that filthiness. Read. And the deaf hear. And the deaf what? And the deaf hear. The deaf hear. The words of the book. Read. The dead are raised up. The dead are raised up because we spiritually dead in this captivity. We spiritually dead. Give me that in Proverbs 21, 16. It says the dead are raised up. Are we physically raising the dead? No. But we are spiritually raising the dead of our people whose spirits have been what? Destroyed and now they are dead. Read what you got. Come on. The book of Proverbs chapter 21 verse 16. Read. The man that wandered out of the way of understanding. Because as a nation we have wandered out of the way of understanding of this Bible. Because now the Bible is being taught by the precepts of men. The other nations have conquered us and colonized us, particularly the so-called white men. They conquered us, they taught us white Jesus. They taught us a demonic doctrine which is not found in the Holy Bible. You understand? So we have wandered out of the way of understanding as a nation. Read. The man that wandered out of the way of understanding. The understanding of this book, come on shall remain in the congregation of the dead. You see that thing? Shall remain in the congregation of the dead because we're spiritually dead. That's why it says the dead are raised up. Christ and them and the apostles, they did it physically back then. But today, we're doing it spiritually. We are raising the dead spirits of our people. Go back to where he was at now. Matthew, chapter 11, verse 5 again. Come on. Matthew 11, verse 5. Read the book that. of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 5. Read the blind receive their sight. The blind receive their sight. With the blind, we're receiving our sight back. Read. The lame walk. The lame walk. We're walking uprightly now in the spirit of Christ. Come on. The lepers are cleansed. The lepers are cleansed. We're the lepers that are being cleansed from the filthiness that we've been, we've been, we, we, we caught from the nations. Read. And the deaf hear. Then the deaf will hear the words of this book right here. Go ahead. The dead are raised up. Spiritually, because we're spiritually dead in these lands of our captivity. Come on. And the poor have the gospel preached. And the poor have the gospel preached to them. Who's the poor? Give me that in Isaiah 14, the last verse. Let's find out who the poor is. And the poor have the gospel preached to them. Let's understand who's the poor. The poor is not talking about a hungry Russian. No. It's not talking about a hungry Moabite. It's not talking about a, a homeless Muslim. No. Read that. Let's see who the poor is. Come on. The book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 32. Read. Read. What shall one then answer the messengers of the nation? Read. That the Lord has founded Zion. The Lord has founded Zion. Come on. And the poor. And the, the what? And the poor. And the what? And the poor. And the poor. Come on. Of his people. Of his people. Zion is the poor of God's people. We are the poor. The only poor that you read about in the Bible is Zion. But we rich. The reason why we don't have the riches yet is because we broke God's laws. Now we are in captivity, oppressed by these nations. Read it again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 32. Come on. What shall one then answer the messengers of the nation? Read. That the Lord has founded Zion. The Lord had founded Zion. Zion is another name for Israel. Okay, come on. And the poor of his people. And the poor of his people. Zion is the poor of his people. Read on. Shall trust in him. We're going to trust in the Lord of hosts. Understand that. Okay, so go back. Matthew 11, verse 5 again. I need you men and women to understand this thing, both online. Take notes. This is your history. This is glorious gospel coming out this day. You understand? Read that again. The book of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 5. Read. The blind receive their sight. We're the blind, but we're receiving our sight because the Lord delivering on his promises. Read. 
And the lame walk. And the lame walk. Come on. The lepers are cleansed. The lepers are cleansed because we defile by these nations right now. Read on. The deaf hear. And the deaf hear this book. Come on. The dead are raised up. And the dead are raised up. Come on. And the poor have the gospel preached to them. Oh, preached to the Most High. That's a beautiful thing right there. You understand? Get that in Second Ezra. Okay. Second Ezra chapter one. Watch this. Because on this day, when the Lord raises us up, we're going to return back to this book in full force. And the nations, there's nothing they can do about this thing. Okay, understand that? Second Ezra chapter 1. Read verse 35. Watch this. Because the most high God has promised that, that he will raise us up in these last days. And he's doing just that. Read what you got. Come on. Second book of Ezra chapter 1 verse 35. For those of you who don't know which book we're reading from, we're reading from the Apocrypha. You understand? The Apocrypha have always been part of the Holy Bible, which was taken out in the Bible in the late 1700s by the Protestant Church. But the, the Apocrypha books, they've always been in the Holy Bible. Okay? So we're gonna, we are reading 2nd Ezra, 2nd book of Ezra, chapter 1. Chapter 1, verse 35. Read that. Come on. Your houses will I give to a people that shall come. It says, your houses will I give to a people that shall come. The people that shall come is us. Us, our sons and our daughters, mothers and fathers, grandfathers and grandmothers. We, we are those people that will come back into this truth. Read. Which not having heard of me, uh -huh. yet shall believe. Me. Because we never heard of the Lord. We never heard of the Lord in these last days. You understand? We've been in the Christian churches learning lies. You understand? We've been in politics learning lies, which is the same thing anyway. You understand? So we've been blind. We've been learning all manner of demonic doctrines ever since we got here. Read. To whom I have showed no sign. The Lord did not see, because we didn't see the signs. We didn't see Moses part the Red Sea. We didn't see uh, Joshua uh, part the Jordan River. We didn't see that. We didn't see Christ walk on water. You understand? We didn't see Jonah in the fish. We didn't see none of that stuff. But we believe. Go ahead. Yet they shall do that I have commanded them. But we're going to do what the Lord has commanded us, which is the keeping of God's laws. Today is the Sabbath day. You understand? Under normal circumstances or so-called abnormal circumstances, that was uh, um, under abnormal circumstances, where should we be at? We should be in the clubs. We should be jollering. We should be going to parks, braying. You understand? We should be doing all manner of evil. But because the most High God has had mercy upon us to wake us up in these last days, today, instead of doing all those evil things that, are our, that many of our people are still doing, guess what? We are in this truth now. Keeping the Sabbath day holy as it is written. Read on. They have seen no prophets. We have seen no prophet. We never saw Isaiah walk the earth, but the prophets are back. Go ahead. Yet they shall call their sins to remember. We're gonna, we're gonna repent. We're gonna bethink ourselves and repent. Give me Baruch 2 verse 30. You understand? They will call their sins to remembrance. We're gonna remember who we are. We're gonna bethink ourselves. Because the Lord will raise up the prophets in the last days to wake us up so that we, we return back to our heritage, to our culture and our history. And that's what we're doing right now. Glorifying the most High God in the spirit of Christ. Read that. Baruch 2 verse 30, come on. The book of Baruch chapter 2 verse 30. Read. For I knew that they would not hear me. Because the Lord says he knew that we would not hear him. Go ahead. Because it is a stiff-necked people. Because we're rebellious. we stubborn, we rebellious people. Come on. But in the land of their captivity. But where? But in the land of their captivity. In that day shall the deaf hear the words of this book. But in the lands of our captivities, wherever we scattered, because here we scattered in South Africa, saving hard bondage over here, under the Boers, under the, the British, you understand? Under the Dutchmen, under the Afrikaners and all that. Read. Under the Hamites. Go ahead. But in the land of their captivity. But in the lands of our captivities, which is where we are now, in South Africa, in a foreign land, read. They shall remember themselves. We're going to re remember who we are. We're going to return back to who we are. Read. And shall know that I am the Lord their God. And we're going to know that he's the Lord our God because now we know who is the Lord our God. We didn't know this before. We didn't know that the God of this Bible is the God of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We didn't know that. Because the nations deceived us in the Christian church. They deceived us. You understand? We thought their God is our God. But they worship Satan. You understand? In the Christian church. They worship a black dumb rock in, in Mecca called Allah in Islam. Our people cooped up in there. Our people draining Buddhism. They worship Buddha. That fat man. You know, that's what's going on. But on this day, the Lord says, I'm going to wake you up. Read again. 
the book of Baruch chapter 2 verse 31. Watch this. And shall know that I am the Lord their God. Mm -hmm. For I will give them an heart. The Lord says he's going to give us a new mind. Go ahead. And ears to hear. And new ears to hear. Spiritual ears to hear. We are going to be born again. Read. And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity. That's what we're doing right now. Oh, praise to the Most High God for that day. We're praising the Most High God in the lands of our captivities. In slavery. Read. And think upon my name. We're going to think upon the name of the Lord, which is God's commandments. Read. And return from their stiff neck. And we're going to return from our wickedness. You understand? We've got, but we're going to call our sins to remembrance. Read. And from their wicked deeds. And from our evil demonic deeds. Go ahead. For they shall remember the way of their father. We're going to remember the ways of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We're remembering them now. That's why we're keeping the Sabbath holy on this day. Read. Which sinned before the Lord. Uh -huh. And I will bring them again into the land which I promised with an oath unto their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All praises to the Most High God. Is that it on that? No, sir. Go ahead. And they shall be lords of it. We shall be what? And they shall be lords of it. We're going to be gods on this earth. We're going to rule over these nations with a rod of iron. Read on. And I will increase them, and they shall not be diminished. When, when the Lord will increase us, we shall not be diminished. So, go back to where we're at now. Second Genesis 1, verse 35 again. Okay, because I don't think I actually mentioned what the topic of the class is. I will mention it. Just stay with me. Read what you got. Second Genesis 1, verse 35. Come on. Second book of Ezra, chapter 1, verse 35. Watch this. Your houses will I give to a people that shall come. He says, your houses will I give to a people that shall come. We the people that shall come. This is prophecy coming to pass before your eyes. Read. Which not having heard of me, mm -hmm. yet shall believe me. We're going to believe the Lord. Come on. To whom I have showed no signs. Uh -huh. Yet they shall do that I have commanded them. Read. They have seen no prophets. We have seen no prophets. Come on. Yet. They shall call their sins to remembrance. Yet we shall call our sins to remembrance. We shall bethink ourselves. Go ahead. And acknowledge them. We're going to acknowledge our offenses and repent. And the Lord will have mercy upon us. Come on. I take to witness the grace of the people to come. The people to come is the people we read in the verse before. Go ahead. Whose little ones rejoice in gladness. Whose what? Whose little ones. Rejoice and glad the children, meaning what you see. I'm seeing, I'm seeing the glorious daughters of Zion over here. They are all dressed up looking glorious as hell. All praise to the Lord. You understand? Because what you are seeing is is prophecy coming to pass. You understand? I'm I'm happy to see young daughters, you understand? Our sons and our daughters happy to observe the Sabbath day. Don't give not giving a damn about Christmas. They know that Christmas is of the devil. Not giving them about New Year. They know New Year is of the devil. But they care about the Passover. They care about the Sabbath day. They look forward to the new moon. They just celebrated the destruction of Nicaena. You understand? We just celebrated the Feast of Purim. Understand that? The young daughters and sons, they are excited about this day. That is a glorious day. That's prophecy coming to pass before your eyes. Read. Second book of Ezra, chapter 1, verse 37. Are we still good online here? Okay, come on. I take to witness the grace of the people to come. The grace of the people to come because why? The Lord will give us the spirit of grace. He will give us a chance for us to get our minds right before he returns. Read. Whose little ones rejoice in gladness. Come on. And though they have not seen me with bodily eyes. Because we have never seen the Lord with bodily eyes. But watch this. Come on. Yet in spirit. Yet in what? Yet in spirit. But in our spirit, what's going to happen? They believe the thing that I say. We be, they be, we're going to believe the things that are written in this book. We're going to believe that even though we didn't see that our Lord and Savior walk the earth, but we read about him walking the earth. We read about him on even how he was born. He was born from, he was born from a man and a woman dealing with each other according to the laws of marriage. He was not born of an angel. You understand? He, was, he didn't pop out of the sky. Out of, no, mm -mm. He was born from Mary and Joseph having sex. That's how Christ was born, just like the rest of us, because he's our brother. He is our big brother. He was born just like how we were born. Understand that. So don't be listening to the demonic lies of the Christian church. They're going to deceive you. Brothers and sisters, black men and black women, come out of the Christian church so you can hear this Bible for the first time with new eyes and new ears. Understand that. Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, now today's topic is called the house of the dragon. That is today's topic. The Sabbath day. Today's topic is called the house of the dragon. House of the dragon. That's today's topic. Okay, let's get into it now. 
Give me Revelation 12 verse 3. Let's start there. The book of Revelation chapter 12 verse 3. Okay. Some of the... Some, I'm going to be speeding up on some point for time's sake. Okay. Because we started late. Okay. So I'm going to be pushing a little bit faster at the beginning. And I'm going to slow it down. All right. So Revelation 12 verse 3. Let's start there. Come on. The book of Revelation chapter 12 verse 3. Read. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. There appeared another wonder in heaven. Read. And behold, a great red dragon. A what? A great red dragon. A great red dragon. Come on. Having seven heads and ten horns. Uh -huh. And seven crowns upon his head. You see that thing? So now, what we're reading here, this is John the Revelator. Okay? He's on the island of Petmos. The Lord is showing him many things. So a lot of the things that are written here, they are written in parables, in dark sayings, in allegories, in metaphors, if you will. You understand? So read that verse 3 again so we can get into it. Come on. The book of Revelation chapter 12 verse 3. Read. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns. And seven crowns upon his head. So what you want to notice is that the Bible is written in parables and allegories a lot of the times. Okay, give me Hosea 12 and 10. Hosea chapter 12 and verse 10. Let's start there. So we understand that the Bible is written like this for a reason. Okay? It's not for everybody to open it and just understand what it's saying. That's why they need, there's the needs be teachers, you understand, to teach the gospel, to open the eyes of the people of what does say the Lord. Read that. Hosea 12 and 10. Come on. The book of Hosea chapter 12 verse 10. Read. I have also spoken by the prophets. The Lord says he's spoken by the prophets. Come on. And I have multiplied visions. He did what? And I have multiplied visions. He multiplied visions in the Bible. Come on. And used similitude. And used what? And used similitude. Similitude means an illustrated story. You understand? He's saying one thing but it means something else. And used what? And used similitude. And used similitude. Come on. By the ministry of the prophets. By the ministry of the prophets. Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Okay, go back to Revelation 12 verse 3 now. You understand? Because what we read in Revelation 12 verse 3, it is a similitude, okay? It's not written directly. Watch this. Come on. The book of Revelation chapter 12 verse 3. Read. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, mm -hmm. and seven crowns upon his head. Read. And his tail. No, no, that's it on that. Now let's understand who is this great red dragon. Okay, because like I said, this is an allegory, it's an illustrated story. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of Job 30, verse 29. Because dragon here is making reference to wicked men, it's making reference to men. Okay, a race of people which is referred to as the house of the dragon. You understand? Now read that for me. Job 30, verse 29. Come on. The book of Job, chapter 30, verse 29. Read. I am a brother to dragons. I am a what? I am a brother to dragons. I am a brother to dragons. Come on. And a companion to ours. You see that? I'm a brother to dragons. Because the dragon here is not making reference to an actual dragon. It's not talking about Godzilla. It's not talking about Leviathan that is sitting at the bottom of the ocean that the Lord will release in the day of judgment. It's not talking about that. It's talking about a race of people upon this earth. That's why it says, I'm a what? Read that again, verse 29. The book of Job, chapter 30, verse 29. Read. I am a brother to dragons. I am a brother to dragons, meaning evil and wicked men. Okay? Give me Genesis 25, verse 19. Let's get the history. Okay? Now we're going to... This is a revealing class. We're going to find out who the dragon is. The identity of the dragon. That's what we're going. Read that. The book of Genesis, chapter 25, verse 19. Read. And these are the generations of Isaac, mm -hmm. Abraham's son. Abraham beget Isaac. Abraham beget Isaac. Abraham, our forefather, a black man. Isaac, our great, our grandfather, a black man. Go ahead. And Isaac was 40 years old when he took to Rebecca to wife. You see, our forefathers were honorable men. They got married. Our forefathers didn't sleep around. Because, listen, I know somebody will be saying, but did you not do that in the world? Yes, I did that in the world. But guess what? We're repenting now. We're no longer doing those things anymore. You understand? That's why I can say what I'm saying. Read again. The book of Genesis chapter 25 verse 20. And it's time for you to repent also. Come on. And Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife. Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife. Come on. The daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian of Padan Aram. Read. The sister to Laban the Syrian. Come on. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife. 
Pray. Because she was barren. Because our foremother Rebecca was barren, she couldn't conceive. Go ahead. And the Lord was entreated of him. Uh -huh. And Rebecca, his wife, conceived. So the Lord had mercy and opened our foremother Rebecca's womb so she can conceive. Go ahead. And the children struggled together within her. Now she's pregnant with twins. You understand? The children are struggling together within her womb. Read. And she said, If it be so. If it be a blessing, if this is a blessing, why am I having this war in my belly? Go ahead. If it be so, mm -hmm. why am I thus? Why am I thus? Why do I have this war in my stomach? Come on. And she went to inquire of the Lord. Ray. And the Lord said unto her, mm. Two nations are in thy womb. What did he say? Two nations are in thy womb. Are two nations are in your womb, Rebecca. Go ahead. And two manner of people. Two manner of people. Two different types of people. Go ahead. Shall be separated from thy bowels. You see, they shall be separated from thy bowels. So it's two different types of people in her stomach. Go ahead. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. One nation will be stronger than the other nation. Go ahead. And the elder shall serve the young. Whoever comes out first will be a servant to the younger one. Go ahead. And when a day is to be delivered, were fulfilled. Now it's time for her to give birth. Go ahead. Behold. There were twins in her womb. There were what? There were twins in her womb. So there were twins in her womb. So these are not identical twins. These are fraternal twins. Because it says two nations, two manner of people shall be separated from your bowels. Go ahead. And the first came out red. And the first came out what? And the first came out red. The first boy came out red. Hmm. Now he's starting to become more clear now. A little bit. Is that the first boy came out what? And the first came out red. The first boy, his complexion, his color was red. Why was he red? Because the color, the, 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 he does not have melanin. The first boy that came out did not have melanin on his skin like we do. He wasn't brown like us. He wasn't black like us. He wasn't black like me. You understand? He was red because his blood showed through his skin. You understand? Read that again. The book of Genesis chapter 25 verse 25. Go ahead. And the first came out red. All over like an hairy garment. He was red and he was hairy. So is, you see this red man because you're going to come to find out Lord, on this earth there's no people called white people. They don't exist. There's so-called white people because they are not white. They are red according to the Holy Bible. I'm not making this up. It's not because I have an attitude. It's not because I hate so-called white people. No, I don't hate white people, so-called. No, we are just revealing who they are in the Holy Bible. Okay, go ahead. And the first came up red all over like a hairy garment. They are red and they are hairy. Okay, that's why Gillette Company was started in the first place. Okay, go ahead. And they called his name Esau. They called his name Esau. Esau means wasted away is he. They called his name Esau. Okay, go ahead. And after that, came out his brother out. No, no, read that right. And after what? The book of Genesis, chapter 25, verse 26. Read. And after that, came his brother out. And after what came his brother out? His brother, which is the younger one. Go ahead. And his hand took hold on Esau's heel. Read. And his name was called Jacob. You see that? And his name was called Jacob. Come on. And Isaac was three score years old. When she bare, when our former mother Rebecca bare us. Now watch this. What you want to notice here is Jacob's color is not mentioned. Why? Why is Jacob's color not mentioned? Get that in Genesis two verse seven. Let's read Jacob's forefather. Okay. Let's read about Jacob's forefather and how everybody looked during that time on the earth before this red man came out. Read that. The book of Genesis chapter two verse seven. Read. And the Lord God formed men of the dust of the ground. He formed men of the what? And the Lord God formed men of the dust of the ground. He formed men from the dust of the ground. What is the color of the dust of the ground? The soil. The soil is brown. The deeper you dig in the soil, the more darker it becomes. So Adam was a black man. Today that's what he would be called. Adam was a black man. So Jacob looked like everybody on the earth from the time when Adam was created. You understand? Adam was a black man. I know it's news to you, brothers and sisters. You didn't know this. But, and you read the scripture all the time in the Christian church, but they never sat down to give you the sense of it. Adam was a black man. Adam was your great-great-grandfather. The first man on this earth, a black man. Read again verse 7. 
The book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 7. Read. And the Lord God formed men of the dust of the ground. Come on. And breathed into his nostrils. And breathed into his nostrils. Come on. The breath of life. The breath of life. Adam was given the commandments. Adam was given the breath of life. Wisdom was given to our forefather, Adam. Read. And man became a living soul. And became a living soul. Give me now to Sarah 17. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 17. Start at verse 1. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 17, verse 1. This is in the Apocrypha. Okay, come on. The Lord created men of the earth. The Lord did what? The Lord created men of the earth. The Lord created men of the earth. That's what we just read in Genesis 2, verse 7. He created men from the dust of the ground. He created men of the earth. You understand? The, dig the deeper you dig in the soil, the more darker it becomes. Go ahead. And turn him into it again. You see that? And turn him into it again, meaning when he dies. But what I want to show you is that the Lord created men of the earth from the dust of the ground. Okay? Now, go back. Genesis 25, 26. The book of Genesis, chapter 25, verse 26. Read. And after that came his brother out. Came his brother out, Jacob, come on. And his hand took hold on Esau's heel. You see that? Jacob is holding the heel of his brother Esau. Read. And his name was called Jacob. And his name was called Jacob. Come on. And Isaac was three score years old when she bathed. You see that thing? So Jacob's color, the reason why it's not mentioned here in Genesis is because Jacob looked like everybody on the earth from the time of Adam. The reason why this, this born, this first boy is mentioned here is because he was different. He didn't look like everybody else during this time. That's why it was noteworthy for the Lord to tell Moses, write that down, write that down. He don't look like everybody else. Why? Because there was a reason for that. You understand? Which we'll discover later on. Now, um, jump down to verse 30 now. The book of Genesis, chapter 25, verse 30. Okay, come on. And Esau said to Jacob, mm. Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage. Go ahead. For I am faint. For I am faint, read. Therefore was his name called Edom. So Esau's name was also known as Edom. So his name was changed from Esau to Edom. Edom means raid. Get the Zondervan Bible Dictionary now. Get it for the, for the brother. Come on, brothers. We're going to go to the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary to get the definition of Esau, Edom. Okay? We're getting the identity of this red boy that came out. All right? Come on, brothers. Esau. There it is. Come on. The Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. Edom. Let's get the definition of the word Edom. Edom. Take notes. Take notes. Okay? You're not going to be able to remember all these things by just following along. Follow along but must write notes. Alright? And highlight. You understand? Make some notes on the side of your Bible. Okay? Did you find it? Read it. Reading from the Zondervan Bible Dictionary. Page 141. Come on. Edom. Edomite. No, no, no. What did he say in the brackets there? Edom. Edomites. Raid. What? Raid. Raid. Because Edom means what? Raid. Okay? Edomites. They are raid. Okay? Now, we're going to find out later on who they are. Okay? But what we just read here is Esau, Edom, they are raid in color. Even the scholars, they confirm that. Because the Bible is the first and foremost authority on knowledge and history. You understand? Now watch this. Give me that in Isaiah 34. I know I'm jumping ahead with this one, but I want to go into it anyway. Isaiah chapter 34. Read verse 5 for me. Okay? Isaiah 34 verse 5. Read that. The book of Isaiah chapter 34 verse 5. Read. For my soul shall be bathed in heaven. My sword shall be bathed in heaven, meaning the empire that's ruling right now. Go ahead. Behold, mm -hmm. it shall come down upon I do. It shall what? It shall come down upon I do. It shall come down upon I do me. God's judgments will come down upon I do me. Go ahead. And upon the people of my curse. So I do me is the people of God's curse. Read. To judgment. To what? To judgment. So the Lord is prophesying through Isaiah that when he, the Lord, when his son returns, he's going to judge Idumia. Let's get the definition of Idumia in the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. Let's get that. 
the definition of idumia. Okay. Let's get there. Idumia. Read that for me. Reading from the Zondervan Bible Dictionary. Read. Page 239. Come on. Idumia. Uh -huh. Pertaining to Edom. What? Pertaining to Edom. So Idumia pertains to Edom. The, the scholars are letting you know that Idumia is the same name as Edom. So Edom and Idumia, they are synonymous. Go ahead. Greek and Roman name. What? Greek and Roman name uh -huh. for Edom. So you see, Idumia is a Greek and Roman name for what? Greek and Roman name for Edom. Greek and Roman name for Edom. So Idumia is a Greek and Roman name for Edom. Who are the Greeks? The so-called white people. Who are the Romans? The so-called white people. Today they call themselves Europeans. They call themselves the Dutch, the French, the British, the Portuguese, the Afrikaners. You understand? The, the Americans. That's what they call themselves today. Russians. But it's all the same. Iso, Irom, Idumia. They are the same race of people. This is their forefather that we're reading about. Genesis 25, is here again. Come on. The book of Genesis, chapter 25, verse 30. Read. And Esau said to Jacob, uh -huh. Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage. With that same red pottage, come on. For I am faith. The same red pottage, because why? What was Jacob making? Jacob was preparing meat. You understand? That's why it says with the same red. They mean the same red pottage that looked like him, because he's red. You understand? How do we know it was meat? Hold that. Give me that in Hebrews 12, verse 16. We need to understand what the Lord is saying, what they are talking about here, because they say, no, it was a pot of stew. It was, it, it was beans. No, 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 it wasn't beans. It was meat. It was meat. Okay? Inyama. Venison. Read what you got. Yeah, Hebrews 12, verse 16. Come on. The book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 16. Read. Really? Lest there be any fornicator. Lest there be any fornicator. Come on. Or profane person. Fornicator and a profane person. Read. As Esau. As who? As Esau. The Lord is telling you that Esau is profane and Esau is a fornicator. That's why when you see on the news, on the media, social media and all that, in the movies, there's always people doing all manner of naked stuff. They are promiscuous. They're pushing promiscuity through Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, and all that. They are pushing all manner of promiscuity on YouTube, on social media. Because why? Esau Edom is running the show. It's his kingdom right now. He's profane. That's why when you watch a movie, they say it's got a strong language. It's because Esau is the one that's responsible for all that. Because why? He's profane, the Lord says. Read the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 16. Come on. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person. Or profane person, come on. As Esau. As who? As Esau. Esau, Edom, Idumia. The Greeks and the Romans. Read. For one morsel of meat. For what? For one morsel of meat. Of meat. Of meat. Of meat. Of meat. So it wasn't beans. No, it was meat. For one morsel of what? For one morsel of meat, uh -huh. sold his birthright. He sold his birthright for one morsel of meat. So what made the meat to be red? Go back to Genesis 25 now. Verse 30 again. The reason why the meat was red, it was because it was still rare. It was uncooked meat. That's why when you go to their restaurants, our brothers and sisters that are bourgeoisies, that they quote-unquote made it in the world, when they go to restaurants to order food because they think they've made it, they say, no, medium rare. You don't understand what you're saying. You don't understand what, you, what you're ordering because you're following the customs and the ways of your oppressor because they, they are, they, they, that's their culture. They eat raw, raw meat. The one that is still blood, still dripping on it, they eat that. They don't care about salmonella and all that. They eat that. Read what you got. The book of Genesis, chapter 25, the state. Go ahead. And Esau said to Jacob, Read. Feed me, I pray thee. Uh -huh. With that same red pottage. With the same red pottage, meaning the same red raw meat, red meat that, that look like me, that still has blood on it. Go ahead. For I am faith. Because he's hungry. Go ahead. Therefore was his name called Edom. Therefore was his name called Edom. Now go back to Revelation 12 verse 3 now. Now we have an understanding. We have, now, we, now the Most High God has revealed unto us the identity of this great red dragon. We know who the dragon is now. The so-called white man. He is the dragon. Okay, come on. 
the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 3. Read. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Mm, in the, the heaven here, it's not talking about where the most high God is. It's talking about in rulership. You understand? It's talking about in rulership. Give me that in Lamentations 2, verse 1. Just to give an example. When we were in heaven. When we were in our heaven. Okay. Watch this. Read that. Lamentations 2 and 1. Come on. The book of Lamentations, chapter 2, verse 1. Read. How had the Lord covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud in his anger? The Lord covered the daughters of Zion with a cloud in his anger because the Lord was mad with us. Read. And cast down from heaven. And cast down from where? And cast down from heaven. The Lord cast us down from heaven. It doesn't mean we're floating up there in the sky. No. He cast us down from our rulership. He we took us out of our rulership. Go ahead. Unto the earth. Unto the earth we went into captivity. We went, we became at a low estate. That's what he's saying. Read. The beauty of Israel. The beauty of Israel. Because the beauty of Israel, that's when Israel is ruling all nations on earth. That's when you're going to really see the beauty of Israel. Keeping the commandments, ruling all nations on earth. That's the beauty of Israel. Read. And remember not his footstool in the day of his anger. Okay, is that it on that? Yes, sir. Now hold that. Give me Sirach 10. Okay, I'm going to show you something. Something similar here. Okay. Yep. Sirach chapter 10 verse 8. That's the one I want right there. Watch this. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 8. Watch this. Read. Because of unrighteous dealings. Because of unrighteous dealings. You understand? Unrighteous dealings. Because of sin. That's what he's really saying there. Go ahead. Injuries. Injuries. Go ahead. And breaches God by deceit. You see that? We started to do harm, cause harm one to another. We broke the royal law. We no longer kept the royal law anymore one towards another. Go ahead. The kingdom is translated from one people to another. That's what happened. When we're cast out of heaven into the earth, that's when the kingdom was translated from us and the nations conquered us. You understand? So the heaven is talking about, it's not talking about somewhere in the sky. It's talking about rulership upon this earth. Now go back to Revelation 12 verse 3. Now we understand what he's saying here. Read that. Come on. The book of Revelation chapter 12 verse 3. Read. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. There appeared another wonder in rulership. Go ahead. And behold, mm -hmm. a great red dragon. This white man, that's the dragon. That's the great red dragon in rulership. Read. Having seven heads and ten horns. Having seven heads and ten horns. Come on. And seven crowns upon his head. So the crowns goes into what? This, the, the white man's empires. His major empires upon this earth. That's why it says seven crowns upon his head. Because the crowns are worn by kings. You understand? In rulership. So now we're going to go, what, who are the seven heads of this white man? Meaning the seven major empires of the white man. Okay? Write this down. Greece. Okay? Greece is the first one. Greece. Okay? Rome is the second one. So Greece, Rome, Spain, France, Germany, Russia, and Great Britain. Let me repeat that again. The seven heads of the white man's major empires, okay? Greece, Rome, Spain, France, Germany, Russia, and Great Britain. These are the seven major empires of this great red dragon, which is the so-called white man. Okay, read that again, verse 3. Come on. The book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 3. Read. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Read. And behold, a great red dragon. A great red dragon. Having seven heads and ten horns. Uh -huh. And seven crowns upon his head. I'm going to touch on something on those seven heads just for a second. Give me that in First Maccabees, okay? Give me First Maccabees 1 and 1. First Maccabees 1 and 1. I'm going to show you one of these, some of these heads in the scriptures. Okay, watch this. First Maccabees 1 and 1. First book of Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 1. Read. And it happened. Mm -hmm. After that, Alexander. After that, who? After that, Alexander. Alexander. But watch this. What I want to show you that in the book of the Maccabees, there's things that are declared plainly unto us. But our forefathers, the prophets, Daniel and them, they saw it. They wrote down what the Lord showed unto them in parables. Hold this. Give me Daniel 8 and 1 real quick. Daniel 8 verse 1. I'm going to show you something. Before we read 1 Maccabees 1 and 1, I'm going to show you something. What Daniel saw. Okay? Daniel. Read that in Daniel 8 verse 1. The book of Daniel chapter 8 verse 1. Watch this. Come on. In that third year, 
of the reign of King Belshazzar. Belshazzar, Nebuchadnezzar's grandson. Go ahead. A vision appeared unto me. Uh -huh. Even unto me, Daniel. Read. After that which appeared unto me at the first. Go ahead. And I saw in a vision, and it came to pass. Because remember, we read in Hosea 12 that the Lord will speak unto us in visions and parables. Go ahead. And I saw in a vision, and it came to pass. When I saw that I was at Shushan in the palace. I was at Shushan in the palace. Go ahead. Which is in the province of Elam. Elam. So this goes into the Persians and the Medes. Read. And the I, East Indians of today. Come on. And I saw in a vision. Mm -hmm. And I was by the river of Ulam. Go ahead. Then I lifted up my eyes and saw. Mm -hmm. And behold, there stood before the river a ram. So now Daniel is seeing this ram. He saw before a river a ram. Go ahead. Which had two horns. Mm -hmm. And the two horns were high. Go ahead. But one was higher than the other. One was one one horn was higher than the other. Go ahead. And the higher came up last. Because the last horn that was higher was the was the was the was the, was the higher was the major empire of these two horns on a ram. Now let's see who are the, who, who who's does the ram represent? Because Daniel is talking in parables here. You understand? He's not making it plain. Jump down to verse 20. Let's see who is the ram, okay, that Daniel is seeing. That had two horns. One was higher than the other. Come on. The book of Daniel, chapter 8, verse 20. Read. The ram which thou sowest having two horns. The ram which you see having two horns. Come on. Are the kings of Media. Are the kings of what? Are the kings of Media. Are the kings of Media. Come on. And Persia. And Persia. So now we know who the ram is. The ram is the kingdom of Media and Persia. Okay. Now watch this. Jump back up. Jump down to verse 5 now. Now we know who is the ram. Is the kingdom of Media and Persia. And Persia was the higher horn that came up last. Which was higher and more successful than the Medes. Read what you got. Come on. The book of Daniel chapter 8 verse 5. Read. And I was considered. And as I was considering. Read that right. Come on. And as I was considered. Meaning the vision now. Go ahead. Behold. Mm -hmm. And he goes. And what? And he goat. And he goat. Now he's seeing a goat. He saw a ram which represents Persia and Media. Now he's seeing a goat. Go ahead. Came from the west. Mm -hmm. From the west. Okay, read on. On the face of the whole earth. On the face of the whole earth. Come on. And touch not the ground. Meaning this goat was powerful. This goat right here was powerful. He says it was so powerful that he didn't even touch the ground when it walked. Read. And the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. The goat had a notable horn between his eyes. The horn goes into a leader, a king. Go ahead. And he came to the ram mm -hmm. that had two horns, mm -hmm. which I had seen standing before the river. Read. And ran unto him in the fury of his power. You see that? So when the when the goat showed up on the scene, it didn't come. It, the, the goat did not show up as a nice, a, 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 being nice to the ram. No, no. The goat destroyed the ram. That's what happened here. That's what Daniel is explaining to us. Go ahead. And I saw him come close unto the ram. Mm -hmm. the, the goat came close to the ram. Go ahead. And he was moved with choler against He him. was moved with great anger against the ram. Read on. And smote the ram. And smote the ram. Destroyed the ram. Come on. And break his two horns. And break his two horns. Meaning what? Those empires. So the Persia and the Media was over, over, overthrown or conquered by this ram. right? This goat right here. Go ahead. And there was no power in the ram to stand before him. You see that? There was no power to deliver the ram out of the hand of the goat. Who's the goat? Jump down to verse 21. Daniel 8, 21. Let's see who the goat is. That was so powerful. That destroyed the ram with a quickness. Come on. The book of Daniel chapter 8, verse 21. Watch this. Come on. And the rough goat mm. is the king of Grisha. And the rough goat is what? And the rough goat is the king of Grisha. The rough goat is the king of Grisha. Grisha is the Greeks. Idumia. You see that? Esau, Edom, Idumia. The rough goat is the king of Grisha. Read. And the great horn mm -hmm. that is between his eyes. The great horn that is between the goat is what? Is the first king. Is the first king of the Greeks. Now, let's read it in plainly. First Maccabees 1 and 1. Watch this. First Maccabees. We need to understand what's going on here. We're unpacking the history before your eyes. Understand that in the spirit of the Lord, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Read what you got. Come on. 
First book of Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 1. Go ahead. And it happened mm -hmm. after that Alexander, son of Philip. Alexander, Alexander, Alexander the so-called great. Because he's not great to us. He's great to them. Alexander the so-called gay. Go ahead. Alexander the gay. Not Alexander the great. Alexander the gay. Because he was a homosexual. You understand? He's not great to us. You understand? Read again. First book of Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 1. Read. And it happened. Mm -hmm. After that, Alexander, son of Philip. Alexander, son of Philip of Macedonia. Go ahead. The Macedonian. You see that? The Macedonian. Read. Who came out of the land of Chittim. Chittim is Rome. Go ahead. Had smitten Darius, king of the Persians and me. You see that? So Alexander conquered the Persians. You understand? When Darius took the throne. This is Darius the third. He took, he took control from. He took, we conquered Darius the third. Write that down. This Darius here is Darius the third. Because Alexander's father came against Darius the first. He could not overthrow him. That's why when Alexander took over, he went to avenge his father. He found Darius the third sitting on the throne. Understand that? Read that again. Okay, come on. First book of Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 1. Read. And it happened. Uh -huh. After that, Alexander, son of Philip, mm. the Macedonian, Read. who came out of the land of Kittim, had smitten Darius, king of the Persians, and me. Read. That he reigned in his death. He did what? That he reigned in his death. He took over. Come on. The first over Greece. The what? The first over Greece. That's what we read in Daniel 8, 21. The first over Greece. You see that? The first over Greece. So, what we're reading here, this right here is the first head of the dragon. The seven heads. I'm just giving you a little history of the first head of the dragon. The first empire of this white man. This is around 333 BC. Around 333 BC, Alexander took the throne. Understand that? Give me first Maccabees chapter 8 and 1. I'm going to show you the second head of the dragon here. Okay? Then we're going to continue. We're going to, we're going to go back to Revelation. I just want to show you something here. First Maccabees 8 and 1. Watch this. First book of Maccabees, chapter 8, verse 1. Come on. Now Judas had heard of the fame of the Romans. He heard of the fame of the Romans. Come on. That they were mighty and valiant men. Now Rome is coming into power. This is 509 BC. 509 BC under the Roman Republic. Okay. Read. And such as would lovingly accept. All that joined themselves unto them. Because Rome accepted allies. You understand? Allied countries, as they call them today in, in today's world. Allied countries. They accepted all those that joined themselves unto them. Read. And make a league of amity. You see that they made friendships with those that joined themselves unto them. Those that did not join themselves unto Rome, they got destroyed. Read. With all that came unto them. Uh-huh. And that they were men of great valor. They were made of great. They were men of great valor. They came for war. Read. It was told him also of their wars and noble acts. You see that their wars and noble acts, because this sin, this white man right here, the white man has the spirit of war upon him. That's what you need to understand. The white men don't vote for nothing. Esau, Edom, Idumia, they don't vote for nothing. They come with the gun and with the sword. They conquer. They destroy. They rule. They 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 rape. They rob, they murder, they pillage. That's what they do. That's how they're able to have everything that they have today and the positions they have. It was through rape, robbery, and murder. Understand that? Read. Which they had done among the Galatians mm -hmm. and how they had conquered them and brought them under tribute. You see that? They made them to pay tax, colonial tax. Like we're still doing today. Did you know that South Africa is still paying colonial tax to Britain? We're still paying colonial tax to Britain till this day. You understand? Colonial tax because we are a colony. You understand? We are a British colony over here. Understand that? Now, um, I show you two heads of the dragon, Greece and Rome. You understand? Give me Hosea 8 and 1. I'm going to touch on the third one. Then I want to continue. Watch this. Hosea chapter 8 verse 1. Now we're fast forwarding on the third of the dragon, which is Spain. Watch this. Hosea 8 and 1. Read that. Hosea chapter 8 verse 1. Read what you got. Come on. The book of Hosea chapter 8 verse 1. Read. Set the trumpet of thy mouth. Mm -hmm. 
He shall come as an eagle against the house of the Lord. It says, he, shall, the, he that shall come as an eagle against the house of the Lord. It goes into Christopher Columbus and the conquistadors. 1492, the Spaniards. Excuse me. Go ahead. Because they have transgressed my covenant. Because we transgress against the laws of the, the Most High God. Come on. And trespassed against my law. Read. Israel shall cry unto me. The Lord says we're going to cry unto him. Go ahead. My God, we know thee. Mm. Israel has cast off the thing that is good. Meaning we cast off our first faith, the commandments. We stop keeping God's laws. Therefore, our kingdom was translated from one nation to another. Go ahead. The enemy shall pursue him. The enemy will pursue us. Who's that enemy? Christopher Columbus, the Spaniards. They'll come against us. Okay, northern kingdom over there in the Americas. During the, the, the time when it's called the age of discovery. But before they got to the Americas, guess what? They, 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 we, we were going through the Portuguese Inquisition. We we're going over the, the what? The Portuguese Inquisition and the, the Spanish Inquisition. You had two Inquisitions. Portugal and Spain. And who was over there in Portugal and Spain? Black people. Israelites. Calling them the Moors. We call ourselves the Moors. You understand? That's why today, even our surnames, we started hiding amongst these other nations. Mo, Twa. Just hiding. You see that? Because we the Moors, so-called. Moors just means black. More, the word more just means black. Latin to means black. That's all it means. Okay? So they conquered the Moors in Spain, the Moors in Portugal. You understand? In 1444, in Portugal. You understand? Okay. So now, read that again, verse 3. Watch this. The book of Hosea, chapter 8, verse 3. Read. Right. Israel has cast off the thing that is good. We've cast off the thing that is good, which is God's commandments. Go ahead. The enemy shall pursue him. The enemy will pursue us. Is that it on there? Yes, sir. Jump down to verse 6. Watch this. Verse 6. Mm -hmm. For from Israel was it also the workmen made it. Therefore, it is not God. It is not God. But the calf of Samaria shall be broken in pieces. You see that? We are going to overthrow Northern Kingdom was going to be overthrown. That's what we're reading here. In the Americas. So before they got to the Americas, they kicked many of our brothers and sisters in Spain and Portugal. You understand? The Spanish and Portuguese Inquisition. And then after that, they went to the Americas. You understand? So when they kicked out of Spain and Portugal, we ran deeper into the continent. We started to hide. And when the transatlantic slave trade came later on, they took us over there. But guess what? Northern Kingdom was already in the Americas before us. Understand that, okay? So I just wanted to I just wanted to show you um, the 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 three heads of the dragon, which is the seven heads. But I want to show you the scriptures where they are written, where they are found. You understand? But France, Germany, Russia, Great Britain, they are also found in the scriptures. I'm not going to go through that today, okay? Now go back to Revelation 12 verse three. Revelation 12 and verse three. Watch this. The book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 3. Because they are not written, it's not playing like that. Okay, I'm going to touch on it later on in the class. Watch this, read that. The book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 3. Come on. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Read. And behold, mm -hmm. a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns. The great dragon, we know who the great dragon is. We discovered the identity of the dragon. Iso Irom Idumia. Go ahead. And seven crowns upon his head. And seven crowns upon his head. Meaning the seven major empires of this great red dragon. Today is called Iso Edom Idumia, the Caucasian race. They call themselves by different names. You understand? Now watch this. Let's, let's see who is the ten horns. Okay? I'm here to write this down. I'm going to give you the list of the ten horns. You understand? It's France. Luxembourg. Okay? Belgium. Italy, Netherlands, Germany, okay? I'm reading these for a reason, okay? France, Luxembourg, Belgium, Italy, Netherlands, Germany. I've read six so far. Four is missing. I'm going to go into that. Now, so Neham, I need you to read the article now, okay? Get the article. We're going to go over the 10 common markets. You see, the 10 horns goes into the EU, the European nations, also known as the 10 common markets. You can look it up on Google. There's many references about that. The main 10. Okay. Now read that article for me. Okay. Tell us where you're reading from. You can go all the way up. You see the top, the website we're reading from. 
so that somebody, everybody else can go to it and read for themselves. All right. Did you find it? Yes, sir. Okay, read that. Okay, come on, come on. Reading from lumenlearning.com. Lumenlearning.com. You can look it up on Google. Okay, come on now. Go to the path that I showed you that you must start at. We're going to go over the little history of the 10 common markets, okay? Now read that. The European Economic Community. The European Economic Community, also known as the what? Also known as the Common Market. The Common Markets, the EEC. The European Economic Community, also known as the Common Markets. The 10 Common Markets. Go ahead. In the English-speaking world, and sometimes referred to as the European Community. The European Community, come on. Even before it was renamed mm -hmm. as such in 1993. 1993, go ahead was an international organization created by the 1957 Treaty of Rome. You see that? It was created by the, the, the term common markets. They come out of what? Read that again. I'm showing you their forefathers. Today they call themselves Europeans. They call themselves Americans. They call themselves the Dutch, the French and all that. Belgium, Italians and all. Mm -mm. They are Romans. They are Greeks. Read that. Come on was an international organization so the eu the 10 commandments this is an international organization go ahead come on was an international organization created by by the 1957 by the 1957 treaty of rome treaty of rome the 1957 treaty of rome the first head of the dragon the 1957 treaty of rome okay go ahead its aim mm. was to bring about economic integration. You see that? Was to bring about economic integration. Because in order for you to integrate, you have to have your own things to integrate in the first place. They had their own things which they stole from us. From the time of the Spanish and the Portuguese Inquisition. Read on. Including a common market. A what? Including a common market. A common market. This goes into economics here. Okay, go ahead. Among its six founding members six founding members that's why on the 10 common markets i only started with the six six what among its six founding members the six founding members of the 10 common markets or the eu go ahead belgium belgium was one of them go ahead france france read germany germany italy italy luxembourg luxembourg is that it on that? And the Netherlands. And the Netherlands. So this, these, these are the main ones that started the EU. You understand? They started the common market. You understand? To trade among themselves with the riches they stole from us. During the time of the Spanish and Portuguese Inquisition. Because we had wealth. We had gold. We had silver. We had diamonds. We had all manner of precious things. You understand? And they took all of that. They started their economy. They would not be alive today if it wasn't for us. They wouldn't be surviving today if it wasn't for us. France, Germany, Russia, Britain, America would be third world countries if it, if it wasn't for us and this continent here in Africa. They wouldn't be alive. They wouldn't survive. Understand that? Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Okay, now read the next part now. The six states that founded the EEC. The six states that founded the EEC. These six states is France, Luxembourg, Germany, Italy, Netherlands, and Germany. Read. And the other two communities were known as the inner six. The inner six, okay. Read. The outer seven mm -hmm. were those countries who formed the, the European Free Trade Association. The European Free Trade Association. Watch how this comes together. Keep going. The six were France, mm -hmm. West Germany. With Germany, go ahead. Italy. Italy. And the three Benelux. Benelux, go ahead. And the three Benelux countries, uh -huh. Belgium, Belgium, the Netherlands, the Netherlands, and Luxembourg. And Luxembourg. So now, keep going. The first enlargement was in 1973. There it is, right there. So now they started. Now they they are expanding now. The ten cause the prophecy is not fulfilled yet. So they have to expand the com the 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 the, the 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 economic market that they formed. You understand? To line up with Bible prophecy, which was written way before then. You understand? Read that part again. Come on. The first enlargement was in 1973. Now they started to enlarge these common markets. Go ahead. This common market. Read. 
with the accession of Denmark. Denmark. Now Denmark is added into this. Go ahead. Ireland. Ireland was added. And the United Kingdom. And the UK was added to this list. Go ahead. Greece. Greece was added to this list. Go ahead. Spain. Now this those came after this. The, remember, Spain is part of the seven heads of the dragon. So they are all the same, but the main ten is Greece now, France, Luxembourg, UK, Ireland, Belgium, Italy, Netherlands, Germany, Denmark. These are the ten common markets here. These are the main ten. Now go back to Revelation 12. Verse 3 again. The book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 3. Read. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Go ahead. And behold, mm -hmm. a great red dragon. A great red dragon. Read on. Having seven heads and ten horns. Come on. And seven crowns upon his head. The seven crowns is going into the seven major empires of this white man. So you've got the seven major heads and then you've got the ten common markets that help them to trade. The EU. You understand? That's how they are able to what? They are able to work together. You understand? They rob us collectively. And they separate us, but they rob us collectively. And they all have one mind. You understand? They all have one mind. They all work together. Okay, I know I'm jumping ahead. Revelation chapter 17. Okay. Revelation chapter 17 verse 12. Watch this. Read 11 and 12. The book of Revelation chapter 17 verse 11. Go ahead. And the beast that was. The beast that was. Go ahead. And is not. And is not. The beast that was in John's vision. And is what? And is not. And is not in rulership yet. Even he is the eighth. Even he is the eighth out of the seven. Go ahead. And is of the seven. Is of the seven major heads that we just read about. That's the Americas, by the way. Babylon the Great. Go ahead. And goeth into perdition. And it goes into destruction. And it's going to take the Lord one hour to wipe it out. Go ahead. And the ten horns. The ten horns, which is the EU, the main ten. Read. Which thou sowest. Which thou sowest in your vision, John. Come on. Are ten kings. Are ten kings. Come on. Which have received no kingdom as yet. Which have received no kingdom as yet. Go ahead. But receive power as kings. They do what? But receive power. They receive power as what? As kings. As what? As kings. As kings. Come on. One hour with the beast. One hour with the beast. Meaning they support the beast that came out of the seven is the eight which came out of the seven. So they are still supporting the seven heads of the dragon either way. Because the eight comes out of the seven and they all support it. Because it's all one race of people. They call themselves different names, but they are one race. But watch this. Go ahead. These have one mind. These have what? These have one mind. They all work together. They all have the same mind. Russia might be going the other way. Europe might be going the other way. You know, America, they are all working together. These are just family feuds being shown on TV and CNN. But this is a family feud. Brothers just having some... Brothers having scorn one with another. They're using the media for us to watch the show. But guess what? It's prophesied in the Bible because they are greedy. That's why we're talking about them. The Lord is prophesying about them. And their destruction is our deliverance and salvation. All praise to the Most High for that thing. Read that again verse 13. The book of Revelation, chapter 17, verse 18. Go ahead. These have one mind. These have one mind. They work together. Read. And shall give their power and strength unto the beast. You see that they shall give their power and strength unto the beast. So they will support America 100% until the day when they will turn against America. That has not happened yet. Read. So the end is not yet. The EU has not turned against America yet. So therefore the end is not yet. Read. These shall make war with the Lamb. These shall make war with Christ, the Messiah, when he returns. Read on. And the Lamb shall overcome them. The Christ is going to destroy them all. All praises. Go ahead. For he is the Lord of lords. He is the Lord of lords. And the King of kings. And King of kings. Go ahead. And they that are with him. Uh -huh. And they that are with him, the saints, the angels, read. Are called and chosen and faithful. Do you see that? They are called, chosen and faithful. The 144,000 men. Understand that. Heavy stuff, man. Heavy stuff. But this have not destroyed. They have not turned against America. Read verse 16. Because this day will come. It has not happened yet. We are leading up to that. But not yet. Read that. The book of Revelation chapter 17 verse 16. Go ahead. And the ten horns 
which thou sowest upon the beast. The ten horns which thou sowest upon the beast, which support America. Read. These shall hate the whore. They're going to hate the great whore. Who's the whore? Jump up to verse 5. Let's see who's the great whore. The great prostitute upon this earth. Read that. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. And upon her forehead was the name written. And upon this woman's forehead was the name written. Go ahead. Mystery. Babylon the Great. You see what it's called? Mystery. Mystery. You understand? Not everybody knows that America is Babylon the Great. Because it's called mystery. Because ancient Babylon is in Iraq. So that's not a mystery. We know where um, uh, uh, Iraq is. So that's not a mystery. The mystery right here we're reading about is America. Okay? Read that, up, read that part again, verse 5. Mystery. Babylon the Great. Mystery. Babylon the Great. Go ahead. The mother of harlots. The mother of prostitutes. Read. And abominations of the earth. America is an abomination of the whole earth. The entire Caucasian race. Read on. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints. Mm, yeah, this woman, this is America. She is drunken with the blood of the saints. Who are the saints? Psalms 148 verse 14. Let's see who the saints are. This woman is drunken with the blood of the saints. She is not drunken with wine. No, drunken with the blood of the saints. That means there's a, America is floating on a pool of blood. South Africa is floating on a pool of blood of our forefathers. You understand? Read that. Then we go Psalms chapter 148 verse 14. Read. He also exalted the horn of his people. The horn of our people is Jesus the Christ, the black Messiah. Read. The praise of all his saints. The praise of all his saints. Come on. Even of Indeed, the, come on. Even of the children of Israel. Even of the children of Israel, come on. A people near unto him. A people near unto, we are a people near unto the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. You better praise the Lord for that. Praise the Lord for that thing. That we are the horn of his, that we are his saints. Praise the Lord for that thing. You understand? Okay, go back to where he was at now. Revelation 17 verse 6. Let's finish that verse off. Then I'm going to go back. The book of Revelation chapter 17 verse 6. Read. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints. This woman is Babylon the Great. The United States of America. She is drunken with the blood of the saints. The blood of our forefathers and foremothers. Okay, come on. And with the blood of the of the mother. Of the mothers. Of the murderers, murderers of Jesus. The murderers of Jesus talk about our forefathers that died defending this truth. The Apostle Paul. You understand James. You understand Peter. You understand so on and so. Our forefathers that died for this truth. He's talking about them. Read on. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Because John is like, who's this woman? Who's this glorious woman that, listen, because the Lord is showing him the vision. He's like, wait a minute, who's this woman who's all decked up and dressed up? That is the most powerful woman on earth, America. Because America is not in existence yet. 1776, that's what is inception out of Britain. You understand? So John is wondering it in admiration of, wait a minute, this glorious kingdom, which kingdom is this? You understand? That's what we're reading here. Okay, now, I'm going to show you something. What you need to understand is this. We went over the ten common markers, the seven heads of the dragon and all that. Its inception, okay, 57, and its expansion in 1973. Okay, because this goes into the EU, the League of Nations. You understand? Because now it's more than 10. But the main 10, the ones that started it, we went over them. Okay, now watch this. What you need to understand is that there's many names that this great dragon is called. It's not just called, it's not just called the great red dragon. The great, this great red dragon has many names in the Bible. The same way when they took over, they conquered, they robbed, they murdered, they raped, they pillaged, they stole, they changed their names also. They have different names, but they are the same race. They call themselves the Dutch, the French, the British, the Portuguese, the Spaniards, the Americans, and so forth. Guess what? They have many names also in the Bible. I'm going to touch on those. Watch this. Give me the book. Give me the book of Revelation 13 and 1. Because in Revelation 12, it's called the Great Red Dragon. Let's see in Revelation 13, what is this great red dragon? What is it called? Now read that. Revelation 13 and 1. Come on. The book of Revelation chapter 13 verse 1. Read. 
And I stood upon the sand of the sea uh -huh. and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. And I saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Okay, come on. Having seven heads and ten horns. Having seven heads and ten horns. Yeah, open them. Having seven heads and ten horns. Come on. And upon his horns, mm -hmm. ten crowns. And upon his horns, ten crowns. Come on. And upon his head, the name of blasphemy. The name of blasphemy. Read that verse again, verse 1. Brothers, there's another light here that can be used, all right? Okay, read that again. Come on. The book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 1. Read. And I stood upon the sand of the sea. He said he stood upon the sand of the sea. Come on. And saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Read. Having seven heads and ten horns. There's seven heads. That's the same thing we read in Revelation 12. Seven heads and ten horns. Go ahead. And upon his horns. And upon the horns. Ten crowns. Ten crowns. The ten common markets. Go ahead. And upon his head, mm -hmm. the name of blasphemy. The name of blasphemy. The blasphemy to speak against the laws of the Most High God. And to speak against God. And to speak against the saints of the Most High. Read on. And the beast. Which that, that's it on that. That's it on that. So we're going we're gonna to continue. We're going we're gonna to come back here later on. But what I'm going to show you in verse 1 is that this great red dragon, the chapter before is called the great red dragon. The next chapter over is called the beast. Okay, is called the beast. Now, Revelation 12, verse 9. Go back to Revelation, the 12th chapter. Read verse 9. Watch this. The book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 9. I'm going to show you many names that this dragon is called. Read. And the, and the great dragon. And the great dragon. We know this dragon is red. And the great red dragon, come on. Was cast out. Was cast out, meaning out of rulership. This has not happened yet. The great red dragon has not cast out, has not been cast out of his rulership yet. Meaning what? The white man is still ruling the whole planet Earth. You understand? They are still ruling the whole compass of the earth. So this prophecy has not come to pass yet. Read. That old serpent. That old serpent. You see, is called the dragon, is called the beast, is called the serpent. You see that? He's got many names in the Bible. All this. Second Corinthians chapter 11. We're going to go back to um, Revelation 12 verse 9. But I'm going to show you something here. Second Corinthians chapter 11. Read verse 1. Watch this. Second book of Corinthians chapter 11 verse 1. Watch this. Come on. Would to God you could bear with me a little. He says bear with me a little while I break this down. Go ahead. In my folly. Uh -huh. And indeed bear with me. Indeed bear with me brothers and sisters. Go ahead. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. Why? Because I want you to keep God's commandments, he's saying. Read. For I have espoused you to one husband. The Lord espoused us to one husband, which is the Lord Christ. Come on. That I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. We must be presented pure as a chaste virgin to Christ. Go ahead, meaning keeping the commandments sound in faith. Read. But I fear, mm -hmm. lest by any means, lest by any means, come on, as the serpent, as the what, as the serpent, as the serpent, come on, beguiled Eve. Now the apostle Paul is taking us all the way back to Genesis. Now, pay close attention. As the serpent beguiled Eve, Genesis. Go ahead. Through his subtlety, through his subtlety, through his trickery, his deceit. Read. So your minds should be corrupted. From the simplicity that is in Christ. He's going to tell us who the serpent is that beguiled Eve in the garden. Go ahead. For if ye that cometh mm -hmm. preacheth another Jesus. It, it says the serpent will come and preach another Jesus. Because the Jesus of the Bible is a black man with woolly hair. And, bra and skin that is the skin of brass as if he burned in a furnace. He's a, dark, he's a black man. Read. Who we have not preached. Because the apostles never taught about a white Jesus. With blue eyes and blonde hair and pink skin. Read. Or if ye receive another spirit. Because they guess what? This white Jesus comes with another spirit. The spirit to go against the laws of God. Read. Which ye have not received. Because we have not we not received that. Read. Or another gospel. Another gospel. Because they're gonna use the Bible, they're gonna teach something different, disguising it with the Bible, which is the doctrine of Christianity, that doctrine of devils. Read. Which ye have not accepted. We're not going to accept that. Come on. Ye might well bear with him. Ye might well bear with him. We're going to bear with him in the scriptures. We're going to rip his hair off with the, with the word of God. Understand that. So the serpent that beguiled Eve in the garden is the spirit of this white man. 
So the white man is the biblical devil. He's the biblical devil. Understand that. So go back now. Go back to where he was at. Revelation 12 verse 9 now. Come on. So he's called the dragon. He's called the beast. He's called the serpent. Read. The book of Revelation chapter 12 verse 9. Come on. And the great dragon was cast out. That great dragon was cast out, which is still yet to happen. Go ahead. That old serpent. That old serpent in Genesis that we just read about in 2 Corinthians. Go ahead. Called the devil. Called the what? Called the devil. Called the devil. This is another name that the white man is called. He's called the devil. The word devil means deceiver. You understand? Go ahead. And Satan. And Satan means opposer. He opposes the things that are written in this book. The Bible says Christ is a black man. He says no. Christ is a white man and he's going to make him look like him. You understand? That's why, he's, that's why the white man is called Satan. Read. Which deceiveth the whole world. You see that? He deceives the whole planet Earth. Read. He was cast out into the earth. He was cast out into the earth, meaning he's going into captivity. Read. And his angels were cast out with him. Meaning the nation that support him, they also going to get destroyed when the Lord returns. Because they must all meet the Lord and be destroyed at the, at the wrath of his coming. Understand that? Now give me Revelation 2 verse 9. Because this, this is another name. He's called the devil. The devil means deceiver. Okay. Revelation 2 verse 9. Watch this. The book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 9. Read. I know thy works mm. and tribulation and poverty. This is Christ speaking. Go ahead. But thou art rich. Because all the promises in the Bible are promised to us. Read. They pertain to us. Read. And I know the blasphemy. I know the lies. Come on. Of them which say they are Jews. Because there's people on this earth calling themselves Jewish. They're calling themselves Israelis. And they are in the land of Israel today. You understand? In our homeland. They run the media, they control the banks, they control who gets funding. They are the ones that control the entertainment industry and all that. Read on. Which say they are Jews. Because they say they are Israelis. They say they are Jewish people. Go ahead. And are not. But they are not the real Jews of the Bible. The real Jews of the Bible is you brothers and sisters have been here. And you brothers and sisters online. Listening to the word of the Most High God coming out this day. You understand? Jeremiah 14 verse 2. Let's see what the Jews look like. Real quick. You understand? Because there might be some doubting Thomas is online. Read that. Jeremiah 14 verse 2. The book of Jeremiah chapter 14 verse 2. Read. Judah mourning. The Jews are mourning. Go ahead. And the gates they of love. Because the Israelis, the Jewish people, Amalek, that's what the Bible calls them. They are not mourning. They are rejoicing. They are running the earth. They control the wealth of the world. So they are not in mourning. We are in mourning. We are in the ghettos. You are living in shacks. We're living on top of each other. You understand? We're not rejoicing. We're mourning. Read. They are black. They are what? They are black. The Jews are black. You understand? The Jews is the so-called black people of today. The so-called Bantus and Negroes, Hispanics and Native American Indians. Those are the biblical Israelites. Okay? Go back. Revelation 2 verse 9. The book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 9. Read. I know thy works. I know thy works. Come and, on. And tribulation. Read. And poverty. Uh -huh. But thou art rich. But we rich because all the promises in this Bible pertain to us. Read. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews. The lies of those white people in our land today calling themselves Jewish. You understand? Amalek. Okay. Israelis. Read. And are not. But they are not the real Jews of the Bible. Those are not the sons and daughters of Jacob. Those are the sons and daughters of Esau. The great red dragon. The beast. The serpent. Read. But are the synagogue of Satan. You see that? That's it right there. But they are the synagogue of Satan. Satan means deceiver. They are the synagogue to deceive the whole planet Earth. Read. Fear none of those things. Which thou shalt suffer. The Lord says we must not fear the things that we're going to go through before the Lord returns. Go ahead. Behold, mm -hmm. the devil. The what? The devil. The devil, go ahead. Shall cast some of you into prison. So if the devil was this puff of smoke, how is this puff of smoke going to cast you into prison? Because the devil is not talking about some... some there is the spiritual demon Satan, okay? But it's not talking about him here. It's talking about the children... Of the spiritual demon Satan, which is who? 
the white man, the Caucasian race, Esau, Edom, Idumia. Okay? Read verse 10 one more again. The book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 10. Go ahead. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Read. Behold, uh -huh. the devil shall cast some of you into prison. Read. That he may be tried. You see that he may be what? That he may be tried. So, brothers, some of us are going to be cast into prison that we may be tried. Who's going to cast us into prison? The devil. Who's the devil? Satan. Who's Satan? Idumia, the great red dragon. Today they call themselves Europeans. That's them. Let us get some examples of the devil casting some of them into prison. Give me that in Acts 12 and 1. Acts chapter 12 and 1. Let's get an example of the devil casting some of us into prison. Acts 12 and 1. Watch this. The book of Acts chapter 12 verse 1. Read. Now about that time, mm -hmm. Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex Satan of the church. You see that? Herod. Get the definition of Herod in the Zondervan. The Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. Okay. Herod. Who's Herod? Now read that. Herod. Reading from the Zondervan Bible Dictionary. Uh -huh. Page 224. Come on. Herod. Mm -hmm. Idumian rulers of Palestine. You see that? Idumian rulers of Palestine. Idumian. So Herod is an Idumian. Herod was an Idumian. A, a so-called white man. A Roman. Okay, read that again. Herod. Idumian rulers of Palestine. Mm. Line started with Antipater. Antipater, go ahead. Whom Julius Caesar mm -hmm. made procurator. Pro procurator meaning governor. Of Judea. Of what? Of Judea. Of Judea. Okay, come on. In 47 BC. In 47 BC, come on. Herod the Great. Mm. First procurator of Galilee. You see that? Go ahead. Then king of the Jews. Mm. Built Caesarea temple at Jerusalem. Okay, that's it on there. Now. Go to Luke 1 and 5 real quick. Okay? Just to see why he was set up over Judea. He says he was a king of the Jews. He was not king of the Jews. He was set up over us by Rome. Understand that? Read that. Luke 1 and 5. Come on. The book of Luke chapter 1 verse 5. Watch this. Read. There was in the days of Herod. There was in the days of Herod. Come on. The king of Judea. The king of Judea. How did Herod become the king of Judea? Give me first Maccabees 8 verse 13. Because Rome set him up. You understand? As governor over Judea. Read that. First book of Maccabees chapter 8 verse 13. Watch this. Read. Also that whom they would help to a kingdom. Mm -hmm. Whose reign. Those reigned. Those reigned. Read that right. Come on. First book of Maccabees chapter 8 verse 13. Read. Also that whom they would help to a kingdom. So it says whom they would help to a kingdom. They what? Those reign. They reign. Like Ramaphosa today. He was helped to a kingdom. Now he's the president. Because the Oppenheimers helped him. They put him in that position. Brothers and sisters online, those that have voted for the ANC and all, it was not your vote that put him in, 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 in office as the president. No. It was the white monopoly elites. It's in the Bible. They're the one that set him up. That's what we're reading here. Read again verse 13. Your vote didn't mean nothing. Your vote don't mean nothing, by the way. That's why we have a thing called the Electoral College. Why do you think we have the IEC? The Independent Electoral Commission, ne? Yes, they're the ones. It's not you. Read them. First book of Maccabees, chapter 8, verse 18. This is how things are set up in the world, if you, don't, if you didn't understand. Read. Also that, whom they would help to a kingdom. Whom they would help to a kingdom, come on. Those raids. The same way they set up Herod over us, they set up Ramaphosa over you. Go ahead. And whom again they would. They displayed. If they didn't like you, if you didn't play ball, they destroyed you. Look what happened to uh, Juvenal Moise of Haiti. They destroyed him. Ne? They put him to death because he didn't want to play ball with America. You understand? They tried to assassinate the president of Madagascar. Okay? They, the president of Zambia also. Because they did not want to play ball. That's exactly what happened. Patrice Lumumba didn't want to play ball. They put him to death. You understand? Thomas Sankara of Burkina Faso did not want to play ball. They put him to death. You understand? Okay? Chris Hani, who did not want to play ball. That glorious man right there. 
They put him to death, our forefather Khizani, because he did not want to play ball. He is as another, Steve Biko. He didn't want to play ball, they put him to death. You understand? Who's another one? Tiazi Mashinini, that glorious young man who was a leader in his, own, in, in his own right in his time. You understand? Guess what? They put him to death. You understand? Robert Sobukwe, another glorious forefather, he didn't want to play ball. They even created the Sobukwe clause, specially made for him to keep him there at Robben Island as a prisoner. They, they made a law specially for him to keep him in prison. Robert Sobukwe. You understand? The PNC don't give a damn about that forefather. ANC don't give a damn about him. You understand? Because he was not pushing what they are pushing. You understand? So they displaced him. That's why. Now read that again, verse 13. Come on. First book of Maccabees, chapter 8, verse 13. Read. Also that whom they would, they would help to a kingdom. Those raped. Come on. And whom again they would, they displaced. You see that? Like, like Robert Sobukwe with the machine. Go ahead. Finally. Mm -hmm. That they were greatly exalted. They were greatly exalted because they had what? They had allied countries. That's what they call them in the history. Read. Yet, for all this, none of them wore a crown. Because he did. America, Rome made, wanted to make sure everybody was kept in check. That's what America is doing today because America is an extension of ancient Rome. They are the police of the world. Read. Or was clothed in purple. Do you see that? Meaning was clothed in purple because the royal pattern. Go ahead. Goes into royalty, rulership. Ray. To be magnified thereby. You see that? They did not want any nation to be magnified more than they were. That's what America is doing today, till this day. You understand? Now go back to Acts 12 and 1. Acts chapter 12 is 1. So the reason why Herod was set over Judea is because Rome put him there. Okay? Now read there. The He's the devil that cast some of our forefathers into prison. That we read about in Revelation 2 verse 10. Go ahead. The book of Acts, chapter 12, verse 1. Read. Now about that time, mm -hmm. Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. To vex certain of the, the disciples, the apostles. Go ahead. And he killed James. He did what? And he killed James. He killed James, our forefather, the apostle James. Come on. The brother of John. Uh -huh. With the sword. You see what they did? Read. And because he saw it pleased the Jews. You see that? And our people were okay with that. Our people were pleased when Herod was killing the apostles. Like, as it happened back then, it's going to happen today, brothers and sisters. You understand? Brothers, you must prepare yourself for war. Sisters, you must prepare yourself for this war that's coming. You must stay in the spirit. Okay? You understand that? Oh, praises. Go ahead. And because he saw it, it pleased the Jews. Because he saw it pleased the Jews. You understand? Isn't the thing that happened to us? When we were in Sharpville, when we were teaching the gospel over there, the brother came and emptied maybe two or three magazines on us. You understand? But he didn't shoot directly at us, but he was right in front of us, meaning two steps away from us. And he was shooting, shooting guns. You understand? Wanting to put us to death. The following day, we went back to the same spot. And what did they do? They, were, they wanted to set us on fire. You can watch the videos, it's online. You understand? They wanted, to, they, they wanted to give us a Colombian necktie. When they came with tires, they set the tires on fire and they wanted to burn us to the ground. I'm showing you that when it says it pleased the Jews and the people in Sharpville, they were pleased. You understand? Mothers, fathers, uncles, sons and daughters, they were all pleased when the people wanted to put us to death with guns the night before. They were pleased when the people wanted to set us on fire the day after. They were okay with that. So those are the same people we're reading about here that they were pleased when the nations were put, when the Romans were putting us to death. They were pleased. You understand? Read on. The book of Acts chapter 12 verse 3. Read. And because he saw it pleased the Jews. He saw it that it pleased the Jews. Go ahead. He proceeded further to take Peter also. Uh, the apostle Peter. Read. Then were the days of unleavened bread. Because we were celebrating the feast of unleavened bread. Come on. And when he had apprehended him, mm -hmm. he put him in prison. He did what? He put him in prison. He did what? He put him in prison. That's what we read in there. He didn't kill the Apostle Peter immediately because why? He wanted to use the Apostle Peter as an example to the rest of the Jews. That I'm going to kill, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to celebrate my demonic custom called Easter. And then after that, I'm going to kill the Apostle Peter so that everybody can see. He wanted to do it publicly. 
And it pleased the Jews when he did it. You understand? So as it happened back then, it's going to happen today in these last days. Understand that thing. Okay? So we must build our faith on this wise. Okay, give me that in Acts 10 verse 38. Watch this. Acts 10 verse 38. The book of Acts chapter 10 verse 38. Go ahead. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth uh -huh. with the Holy Ghost and with power. Read. Who went about doing good mm. and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. All that were what? And healing all that were oppressed of the devil. So Christ when he walked the earth, he was healing our forefathers and foremothers, sons and daughters that were oppressed of the devil. Who was the devil? Rome. Rome is the devil being referenced here. Rome was the devil. You understand? A specific race of people, Caucasians. You understand? Because they are called Satan and the devil in the Bible. Now watch this. Let's get some more names in the Bible because they are called by different names in the Holy Scriptures. Give me the book of Malachi chapter 1 and 1. Malachi chapter 1 verse 1. You understand? We got the identity of, of the dragon. Now I'm giving you the different names that the Bible calls this white man, so-called white man in the Holy Bible. Read that. Malachi chapter 1 verse 1. Watch this. The book of Malachi chapter 1 verse 1. Read. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. By Malachi. Come on. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yet he said, wherein hast thou loved us? You see, the wherein have you loved us, Lord? Go ahead. Was not Esau Jacob's brother? Was not Esau what? Was not Esau Jacob's brother? Was not Esau Jacob's brother? Esau is the brother to Jacob. Go ahead. Save the Lord. Save the Lord. Read. Yet I loved Jacob. So the Lord says he loves Jacob. So the Lord loves us, brothers and sisters. We must understand that. We must praise the Lord for that thing. He loves us. Read. And I hated Esau. He says he hates the white man. We don't hate the white man, but the Lord does. You understand? We don't go around hating white people because that's another thing they're going to try to use against us. They say, no, we hate other... We don't do that. We don't wish, we don't wish um, death and destruction unto them. We just read the Bible, what the Bible says about their fate. That's what we're reading. We're not going around the robbing and doing all men of evil to white people or any other reason for that matter. We just read the Bible. Read the Bible again. The book of Malachi, chapter 1, verse 3. Read. And I hated Esau. The Lord says he hates Esau. He hates Esau. Who's Esau again? The great red dragon. Esau is Idumia. Esau is Greece. Esau is the Greeks and the Romans. The British, the French, the Dutch, the Africaners, the Portuguese, the Spaniards, the Americans, the Europeans. That's them. The Lord says he hates them. Read. And laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Because this is during the dark ages. During the dark ages, they became impoverished. Because when Rome fell in 193 AD, under Septimius Severus, Rome was came to the Rome fell in 193 AD. And during that time, it was the beginning of the dark ages, the middle ages, or the medieval times, as they call them in history. That's when they became impoverished. Because when you read in the history in Genesis, they were the first dukes on the earth. They were rich. How did they become impoverished when Rome fell in 193 AD? And we pushed them to the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia, between the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea. Read. Whereas Edom saith, Whereas Edom saith, go ahead. We are impoverished. We are what? We are impoverished. So they were impoverished. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished. When did they become impoverished? When did these white people become poor? During the Dark Ages. Because during the Dark Ages, we ruled the earth for more than a thousand years. Don't be fooled, brothers and sisters. We ruled during the Dark Ages. That's why it says, the knights at the, at the round table, who King Arthur, hmm? who Shakespeare, who Mozart, Mozart, uh -huh. who Beethoven. Those were black people. You know, don't be fooled. They say Beethoven was a, was a, was a Timonite. He was a German. No, he wasn't. He was an Israelite. Understand that. Read. Whereas Edom said, mm -hmm. we are impoverished. We are impoverished. Read. But we will return. We will what? But we will return. But they say they are going to return. Okay, go ahead. 
and build the desolate places. Then build the destroyed places, meaning there are empires that was destroyed, like Rome, when it fell in 193 AD. Go ahead. Thus says the Lord of hosts, uh -huh. they shall build. Meaning Esau is going to return and build. Read. But I will throw down. The Lord says, I'm going to throw you down. I'm going to destroy you. Go ahead. And they shall call them. They're going to call Esau Edom what? The border of wickedness. They what? The border of wickedness. The border of wickedness. Meaning they are the wicked. So the, the another name, what they are called in the Bible, they are called the wicked. The wicked. That's what they are called. They shall call them the border of wickedness. Meaning the beginning and the end of all evil, of all wickedness upon the earth will be pushed by them. I'm going to give an example. Hold that. Give me Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14. We coming back. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14. I think it's verse 27. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon 14. Yeah, read verse 27. Watch this. I'm going to show you this. He says, they shall call them the border of wickedness. Meaning the beginning and the end of all evil. They'll be the ones that are pushing them. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 27. Go ahead. For the worshipping of idols. For the what? For the worshipping of idols. For the worshipping of idols, meaning idolatry. Go ahead. Not to be named. Not to be worshipped. Is the beginning. Is the what? Is the beginning. Is the beginning, come on. The cause. The cause. And the end. And the end. Of all evil. You see that? So the worshipping of idols is the beginning, the cause, and the end of all evil on earth. Who's pushing that? The so-called white man. He is the one that is pushing idolatry upon this earth. Because the first idol worship was the spirit of the white man in the garden. You understand? Pushing our former the Eve to worship what? To worship the sun, moon, and stars. Idol worship. From the time of Genesis. That's what we're reading here. He is the beginning. The this writer is telling you he is the border of wickedness. The beginning, the cause, and the end of all evil. So go back. Malachi 1 verse 4 again. The book of Malachi chapter 1 verse 4. Read. Whereas Edom saith. Edom saith. We are impoverished. We are impoverished. We are poor. Come on. But we will return and build the desolate places. First. Thus says the Lord of hosts, mm -hmm. they shall build, but I will throw down. The Lord says he will destroy them, come on. And they shall call them the border of wicked. The beginning, the cause, and the end of all evil on earth. Read. And the people. And the what? And the people. No, the person. And the people. The individual. And the people. The people. Meaning the people goes into what? Nation. And the nation, go and the nation or race. Read. And the people against whom? Against whom? Come on. The Lord has indignation forever. Righteous anger towards them forever. So they are the wicked. So another name that they are called in the Bible, they are called the wicked. Understand that. Now give me 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 8. Watch this. I'm giving you different names. the different identities of this white man in this Bible. Okay, 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 8. Watch this. 2 Thessalonians 2 and verse 8. Watch this. Read that. 2 Book of Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 8. Read. And then shall that wicked be revealed. And then shall that what? And then shall that wicked be revealed. Shall that wicked, you see that wicked is written in what? In capital letter W. The wicked. The main wicked upon this earth. The so-called white man. That's what we're reading here. It says, and then what? And then shall that wicked be revealed and then and then shall that wicked be revealed go ahead whom the lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth the spirit of the lord's mouth is this bible he is going to be consumed spiritually with this bible first and foremost by who by us the prophets first and foremost we the ones that are going to do that in the spirit we're going to use the word of god to consume him with the spirit of the Lord's mouth. We're going to go to the street corners. We're going to teach the Bible. That's what we're going to do. You understand? Read. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Then the Lord will destroy him with the brightness of his coming. When now he's going to destroy him physically. You understand? We're destroying him spiritually right now. 
with the word of God. That's what we're doing. Okay. Now, but it says, and then shall that wicked be revealed. What would happen before that? Jump up to verse 3. This is what would happen before the wicked is revealed. Watch this. Come on. Second book of Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 3. Go ahead. Let no man deceive you by any means. Let, don't let no man deceive you by any means. Who's this man making reference to? Rome. Go ahead. For that day shall not come. The day of Christ shall not come. Come on. Except. Except. Read. They come a falling away first. Do you see that? He says, there must be a falling away first. Before the Lord returns, there must be a falling away first. Go ahead. And that, the, and that man of sin be revealed. So, guess what? There, there must be a falling away first. But you notice here, there's a new name that they're giving him here. The man of sin. He's called the great red dragon. He's called the beast. He's called the serpent. He's called the devil. He's called Satan. You understand? He's called the wicked. And now he's called the man of sin. The borer of wickedness. Read. That the man of sin. That that man of sin be revealed. That that man of sin be revealed. Go ahead. The son of perdition. The son of perdidas. The son of perdition. The son of destruction. That's another name here. The son of perdition. Okay. When it says except they be a falling away first. Give me that in Luke 21, 24. Except they be a, they come a falling away first. What is this falling away making reference to? The book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 24. Watch this. Come on. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. You see that? The Israelites shall fall by the edge of the sword. Because why? Rome will come against us, will destroy us in 70 AD. You understand? The abomination that maketh desolate. Read. And shall be led away captive unto all nations. We're going to be led away captives unto all nations on slave ships, forced migration, colonization. Go ahead. And Jerusalem, and Jerusalem, read, shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. He's telling you who's in the land of Jerusalem today. The Gentiles, the Gentiles have trodden, uh, have trodden down our land. You've got white people in our land today calling themselves Jewish. You understand? Israelis, Amalek, the Bible calls them. And not only that, you've got the Palestinians in that land too. They say that's their land. That's not their land. But he's saying the what? The Jerusalem shall be what? And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. Come on. Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Until their time of rulership is over. You understand? The sign that their rulership is coming to an end is because Israel is rising right now. Israel, we are on the rise. Okay? Israel is waking up. That's why their time of rulership is coming to an end. Understand that? Now, go back to um, Revelation 2. Revelation 12. Revelation 12 verse 9. One more again. The book of Revelation chapter 12 verse 9. Go ahead. And the great dragon was cast out. The great dragon was cast out. Read. That old serpent. That old serpent from Genesis. Go ahead. Called the devil. Called the what? Called the devil. Called the devil. Read. And Satan. And Satan. Read. Which deceived the whole world. Because they deceived the whole world. The whole planet Earth believes that they are God. They believe that they are Christ. They believe that they are the angels. They believe that they are the people of God. They are not. Read. He was cast out into the earth. He was cast out into the earth. Read. And his angels were cast out with him. You see that? And his angels were cast out with him. Now. Now, watch this. I'm going to show you something that the same thing that Isaiah said. Isaiah 14. Isaiah chapter 14. Read verse 4. Watch this. Because we, I'm giving you different names that this man is called in the Bible. So you're not confused. Okay. Isaiah chapter 14. Read verse 4. The book of Isaiah chapter 14 verse 4. Watch this. Read. That thou shalt take up this prophet against the king of Babylon. Against the what? Against the king of Babylon. You see what Isaiah is calling him? The king of Babylon. Read again, verse 4. The book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 4. Read. That thou shalt take up this proverb mm -hmm. against the king of Babylon. You're going to take up this proverb against the king of Babylon. Come on. And say, mm -hmm. how have the oppressor seen? You see what he's called? He's called the king of Babylon and he's also called the oppressor. 
How has the oppressor seized it? Go ahead. The golden city seized. The golden city seized. So, hold on a second. We just read this earlier on. That all said, go back to Revelation 12 verse 9. I'm going to show you the same thing that John is saying. That Isaiah is saying. Okay. The book of Revelation chapter 12 verse 9. Watch this. And the great dragon was cast out. The great dragon was what? And the great dragon was cast out. Was what? Was cast out. Was cast out. Go back to Isaiah 14 verse 4. Pay close attention. You understand? Make notes. Connect the precepts. Read it. The book of Isaiah chapter 14 verse 4. Go ahead. That thou shalt take up this prophet against the king of Babylon. Against the king of Babylon. Come on. And say, mm -hmm. how has the oppressor seized? How has the oppressor what? How has the oppressor seized? How has the oppressor seized? How had the oppressor seized? That old serpent was cast out. That's the same thing he's saying here. That old serpent was cast out. How had the oppressor seized? Okay, meaning cast out. Go ahead. The golden city seized. The golden city seized. Because here says the king of Babylon. Okay? Because you might be thinking, but he's not telling us that Esau Idumia is Babylon. Hold this. Give me the book of Psalms 137. Give me Psalms 137. Okay. Psalms 137 to prove that. Psalms 137. Read verse 7. Watch this. The book of Psalms, chapter 137, verse 7. Come on. Remember, O Lord, mm -hmm. the children of Edom. Remember, O Lord, the children of what? The children of Edom. The children of Edom. Edom. Go ahead. In the day of Jerusalem. In the day of Jerusalem. Come on. Who said, mm -hmm. raise it, raise it. Raise it, raise it. I mean, destroy it, destroy it. Come on. Even to the foundation thereof. Read. O daughter of Babylon. You see that? You see what Esau, Edom, Idumia is called? The daughter of Babylon. You understand? When it says the king of Babylon, it's not talking about Nebuchadnezzar. It's talking about the daughter of Babylon, which is who? The United States of America. Esau, Edom, Idumia, the great city. Okay? Read again. The book of Psalms, chapter 137, verse 8. Read. O daughter of Babylon. O daughter of Babylon. Go ahead. Who ought to be destroyed. Who must be destroyed. Ray. Happy shall he be that rewarded thee as thou hast served us. Because they served us with what? Slavery, captivity, dashing our little children against the stones. Read. Happy shall he be mm -hmm. that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones. You see what they did? They dashed our children, the heads of our children against the stones. The Spaniards was doing that. The Spaniards were cutting our children in half and feeding them to the dogs. That's what they were doing. They're going to pay. They're going to pay for what they did to us. Children, just like my, the, the daughters here, that's what they did. They're going to pay. You understand? They are going to pay for what they've done to us. Isaiah chapter 14 verse 4 again. The book of Isaiah chapter 14 verse 4. Read. That thou shalt take up this prophet Against the king of Babylon. Against the king of Babylon. Come on. And say, mm -hmm. how had the oppressor seized? How had the oppressor seized? Read. The golden city seized. The golden city seized. It's called the golden city. Watch this. Give me Revelation 18. Okay. Revelation chapter 18. He's saying that the, John the Revelator is saying the same thing here that Isaiah is saying. Okay. Watch this. Revelation chapter 18. Okay. Read verse 2. Watch this. Start of verse 1. The book of Revelation, chapter 18, verse 1. Go ahead. After these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven. Read. Having great power. Uh-huh. And the earth was lightened with his glory. Watch this. Read. And he cried mightily with a strong voice. So the angel cried mightily with a strong voice. Go ahead. Say, mm -hmm. Babylon the great. Babylon the what? Babylon the great. Babylon the great. The greatest city on earth is Babylon, America. Read. Babylon the great is fallen. Is what? Is fallen. Is seized. How had the oppressor seized? Isaiah is saying the same thing that John the Revelator is saying here. Go ahead. Say, mm -hmm. Babylon the great is fallen. Babylon the great is fallen. How had the oppressor seized? The golden city seized. Go ahead. Is fallen. Mm -hmm. And it's become the habitation of devils. It's become the habitation of devils. Come on. And the hold of every foul spirit. Mm -hmm. 
and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. You see that thing? Jump down to verse 10. Watch this. Verse 10. Uh -huh. Standing afar off. The nations will be standing afar off. Come on. For the fear of a torment. Because they're going to be afraid seeing America being destroyed because they realize they're no longer going to eat no more. Read. Say. Mm -hmm. Alas, alas. Alas, alas. Go ahead. The great city. The great city. Babylon. Babylon. That mighty city. That mighty city. Come on. For in one hour. For in one hour. That's beautiful stuff right there. Go ahead. Is thy judgment come. Is thy judgment come. We're waiting for that thing, man. We want Babylon the Great to be wiped out when the Lord returns. That's glorious. Music to my ears. You understand? This demonic kingdom that's ruling over us with a rod of iron, they're going to be destroyed. Understand that? Okay, go back to Isaiah 14. Isaiah chapter 14, read verse 4 again. The book of Isaiah chapter 14, verse 4. Read. That thou shalt take up this proverb. Against the king of Babylon. Against the king of Babylon. Come on. And say, mm -hmm. how have the oppressor seized? How have the oppressor seized? That great city has fallen. Read. The golden city seized. The golden city seized. Read. The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked. You see what it's called? Babylon, now in verse 5, is called the wicked. He's talking about the same man here. I'm showing you different names that this man is called because they try to hide themselves. But they are forefathers, our forefathers, the prophets, they were always talking about him. They were using different names to describe who he is and what he is. Go ahead. And the scepter of the rulers. Mm -hmm. And the scepter of the rulers. Because why? America is the police of the world. They rule everybody with the rod of iron. Now watch this. Jump down to verse 12 now. Because in verse 4, is called the king of Babylon. Verse 5 is called... The wicked, which we read in Malachi 1 verse 4. Now read verse 12. Watch this. I'm showing you another name, which this one right here is many of our people, they fall off the horse right here. Watch this. Come on. The book of Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12. Go ahead. How art thou fallen from heaven? How art thou fallen from heaven? Go ahead. O Lucifer. O what? O Lucifer. O what? O Lucifer. O Lucifer. You see what the, this white man is called? He's called Lucifer. In verse 4, it's called the king of Babylon. In verse 5, it's called the wicked, the oppressor. Verse 12, one more again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 12. Read. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? You see that? How had the oppressor seized? That great, that great serpent, that great dragon was cast out. How art thou fallen from your rulership, O Lucifer? Because he has not fallen from his rulership yet. He's still in rulership right now. Go ahead. Son of the morning. You see, he's also called son of the morning because he's, he says he's that bright and morning star. He says he's the star of wisdom. You want to learn anything? Come to me. That's what he says. You want to learn anything? You must come to him. He's the bright star of wisdom. That's why he says son of the morning. Go ahead. How art thou cut down to the ground? How did you, how were you cut down to the ground? Read. Which did has weakened the nation. Because America is weakening all these nations on earth. How? They steal their resources. Particularly us. They weakened us so much so that now we are impoverished now. We don't have nothing. You understand? Our inheritance is turned to strangers. Give me Lamentations 5 and 1. Watch this. Come on. Because Jeremiah spoke about this thing. Lamentations 5 and 1. The book of Lamentations, chapter 5, verse 1. Go ahead. Remember, O Lord, mm -hmm. what is come upon us. Remember, O Lord, what is come upon us. Read. Consider mm -hmm. and behold our reproach. Look at our reproach. Look at the way we live. Read. Our inheritance is turned to strangers. You see that? Our inheritance is turned to strangers. You understand? Because that's how America weakens the nations, particularly the dark nations. Because wherever we are, minerals are there. And, and the, the white man knows that. They will know that. That's why wherever we are, they always, they always seem to find themselves there in the midst of us. Read. Our inheritance is turned to strangers. Our inheritance is now turned to strangers. Read. Our houses mm -hmm. to aliens. Our houses to aliens. Because they're the real aliens of this, of, this, of this country, of this land. They don't belong here. They belong in the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. But now they're in South Africa. They say, no, they're South Africans now. You see that? Leo, skip your Africana conquered 
Carthage, which is modern day Tunisia, and then later on, the whole continent became to be known as Africa. Now they say, we own this now. We name it after ourselves. That's what they do. Read. We are orphans and fatherless. We are orphans and fatherless. Come on. Our mothers are as widows. You see that? Because they were killing the children. Read. We have drunk our water for money. Our water. Because the Lord brings the water down on the earth. The oceans are filled with water. which are, which are is These are all natural resources for us. But guess what? We're buying the things that belong to us now. That's what we're doing. We're buying water. You understand? Which comes from the sky by the Mosa. It comes from the ocean. It comes from the earth. Which is by the Mosa. Read. Our wood is sold unto us. You see that? Our wood is sold unto us. Wood goes into what? Because some places where we are, where we are scattered, people build houses using wood. People make fire using wood. The wood also goes into what? Electricity. We make fire, we cook and all that. Yes, today is electricity. We're paying for them. The white man is not making electricity. Electricity is created out of natural resources. But they say, no, no, you must pay for it. But you didn't create electricity in the first place. You see how demonic these nations are? Demonic. And guess what? You've got our brothers and sisters in politics, in, econ in, the, in the economic sector and all that. They support this white man. You cannot make this up. You understand? Okay. That, keep reading. Read verse 5. Watch this. Our necks are under persecution. We are oppressed and crushed always. Read. We labor and have no rest. You see that? We labor, but we have no rest. Because we labor, we labor, they pay us little. That's what happened to Marika Anane. That's why Ramaphosa gave the command to shoot and kill our forefathers that were wanting more money because they were being paid in peanuts. And he's the president. You cannot make this shit up. You understand? Don't excuse my French. I mean what I said. Understand that? He's the one that gave the command to shoot and kill our forefathers in Marigan in 2012. And he's the president of the country. But, and you black people are still voting for that demon. You better learn. You better learn. This king that you've, you, you've chosen for yourself, he's going to oppress you and your children. Understand that thing. Okay? Now, let's go back. Where was we at? Isaiah 14 verse 12. The book of Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12. Read. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Because this man is going to be destroyed. And his, one of his other names is called Lucifer. Lucifer is not some puff of smoke. Lucifer is not, is not, was not an angel like they teach in the Christian church. They say Lucifer was an angel. Lucifer was up there playing the piano and the organ. No, 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 that's not in the Bible. Lucifer is the white man. The white man is Lucifer. That's one of his names. Read. Son of the morning. Son of the morning, come on. How art thou cut down to the ground? Uh-huh. We did it. Did us weaken the nations. You've weakened the nations by robbing them of their resources. Go ahead. For thou hast said in thine heart. Because this white man, Lucifer, he has said in his mind. You know what? Drop that. Jump down to verse 15. I think that's what I want. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Yep. Jump down to verse 16. Read that. The book of Isaiah chapter 14 verse 16. Come on. They that see thee. They that see Lucifer. How are we going to see Lucifer? Because Lucifer is a man on this earth. Is a race of people. On this planet. Read. Shall narrowly look upon thee. With Elon Musk. That our people are worshipping. Because our people they worship that demon. They worship that man uh, Elon Musk. They worship Bill Gates. They worship Einstein. Just go to universities. Black men are idolizing Einstein. Black men idolizing Isaac Newton. Black men idolizing Gauss. Black, Because we know this. Because we studied. We know this thing. Who Gauss? Black men idolizing who, who kneels ball. Black men be doing that. You understand? Them days are over. You understand? Them days are over. They are the wicked. I don't care if they say they split the atom. Satan told them that. I'm coming to that. Let me take a step back. I'm coming to that. Read verse 16. Come on. The book of Isaiah chapter 14 verse 16. Read. They that see thee. They that see Lucifer. Go ahead. Shall narrowly look upon thee. We're gonna be like, what? Are you kidding? We, huh? This guy right here, this good for nothing 
scum of the earth. He is the one that is loose. Yes. Read. And consider the same. We're going to consider him saying, like, what? Are you kidding? This man right here? Read. Is this the man? Is this the what? Is this the man? The what? The man. The what? The man. The what? The man. The man. Because Lucifer is a man. Lucifer is not a puff of smoke. Lucifer is a man on earth. Lucifer is the white man. Okay? Read, read, read. Come on. Is this the man uh -huh. that made the earth to tremble? Is this the man that made the earth to tremble? That's how, guess what? When me, when I discovered this truth, when I looked at them, I'm like, that, listen, it makes so much sense. I'm like, you know, I never understood, like, how are these people better than us? It never made sense, even though I didn't know who I was, but it didn't make sense. I'm like, these people that don't bath, you understand, that eat garbage, how are they better than us? We're at the job, they are on top of us. You understand? We're in the media, they are on top of us. How the hell are they on top? Is because, mm, read that verse again, verse 16. The book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 16. Watch this. They that see thee, they shall, that see Lucifer, shall narrowly look upon thee. We're going to narrowly look upon Lucifer and say what? And consider thee, say, uh, is this the man? Is this the what? Is this the man? Is this the man? Come on. That made the earth to tremble. That made the earth to tremble. That weakened the nation. Go ahead. That did shake kingdoms. That did shake kingdoms. Is this the man? Because we're going to look at him and be like, what? That's why the people when they come in here, listen, we tell you, don't be here because the white man is the devil. But that's another motivator for you to be in here. I'm not saying don't use it because it is what we must teach. You understand? That the white man is the biblical devil. He is the biblical devil. I don't care if they build Google. I don't care if they create iPhones. I don't care if they build an Android. I don't care if they went to the moon. They are the devil the Bible speaks of. Understand that. Now, watch this. Give me the book of Genesis 27 verse 38. Now, I went through some of the names that this white man is called in the Bible by the prophets. So we know. Now, I'm going to go into their blessing. The blessing that was given to this white man. Watch this. Give me that in Genesis 27 verse 38. Genesis chapter 27 verse 38. Okay. Because these prophecies will not come to pass, brothers, if we don't teach them. They are written in the Bible for us to teach them for them to come to pass. The reason why we go to the streets is to fulfill prophecy. If we don't go to the streets, who's going to bring the prophecies out? Think about it. Now read that. The book of Genesis, chapter 27, verse 38. Go ahead. And Esau said unto his father. And Esau said unto his father Isaac. Go ahead. Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Do you have only one blessing, my father? Go ahead. Bless me, even me also. Bless me, even me also. Go ahead. Oh, my father. Uh -huh. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept, meaning he cried. Yeah. He was crying. You understand? He was crying because he did not receive a blessing. Watch this. Go ahead. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him. Now our forefather Isaac is going to give him the blessing. But this blessing is not coming from our forefather Isaac really. You understand? Somebody else is going to be blessing this white man. Keep reading. Behold, uh -huh. thy dwelling. Thy dwelling now, he's been given a blessing. Your dwelling, come on shall be the fatness of the earth. He says, your dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. Meaning you and your descendant, Esau, you're going to live on the best places on earth. Look at where they live. Look at America. Look at Europe. Hmm? Look at Cape Town. You understand? Look at Orania. Hmm? Look at Stellenbosch. Look at Houghton. Look at Santon. Look at Waterfall. Look at Morelita Park in Pretoria. They live on the best places on earth. We live in the ghettos. We're reading about the history here. So you, you know, when you go outside, you understand why they live on the best places on earth. This is the prophecy. Read again. The book of Genesis, chapter 27, verse 39. Go ahead. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, uh -huh. Behold, mm. thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. There's another one. What do they call it? Um, I think the guy is, is connected somehow with um, Otto in general. Stain, ne? Stain City. Oh, yeah, Stain City. He's building, I mean, he even has an, a city after himself. Here in Joburg, 
They building stainsy. There's another one by him. They even building a man-made beach. He ain't Jobek. It's huge. I mean, it's humongous. It you is a huge piece of property. Thousands and thousands of hectares. He owns that. Stain city. You understand? That's what we're reading here. Read again. The book of Genesis, chapter 27, verse 39. Go ahead. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, mm. Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. Your dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. You and your descendants will live on the best places on earth. So because back in the day before this truth, I didn't understand. How is it that we live, we are here at the bottom, they are up there. They live on the best places. You go to their houses, man, mansions, you understand? The yard is so huge, you can put five houses in there with yards hmm? and swimming pools. But it's owned by one person. Ray. Thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth mm -hmm. and of the dew of heaven from above. Meaning they're going to be everywhere. You ever wake up in the morning, that dust, the, the water on the grass and all that, it's everywhere. They are going to be like that on the planet earth. Hold that. Give me Isaiah 5 and 8. Because Isaiah, he spoke about this thing. He prophesied about it. Watch this. The book of Isaiah, chapter 5, verse 8. Come on. Woe unto them mm -hmm. that join house to house. Woe unto him that join house to house. Go ahead. That lay field to field. They lay field to field. Come on. Till there be no place. Till there be no place. Because when they come, they conquer, they, took, they take over. They grab the land because that's what they did. They took over our land and our resources upon the land and they enslaved us. They said, no, young Van Riebeke came here looking for spices. There was even a movie that was made that we went and watched called Dune. Dune. And they were showing all these big machinery mining spices. I'm like, spices with this big machinery? No, no, no. That was a metaphor for the white man coming on the continent, building machinery to mine our gold, our diamond, our platinum, our uranium. Yes. Read. Woe unto them that join house to house. Come on. That lay field to field. Ray. Till there be no place. Till there be no what? Till there be no place. Till there be no place. Come on. That they may be placed alone in the midst of the earth. You see that? That they may be placed alone in the midst of the earth. That's why you find one white man, he's got 30, 40, 100 hectares of land. And he's just sitting there by himself. He's just by himself. Right now we are packed up here in the Geros Kokasi, in the Lokshins, like rats. You understand that? That's what we're reading here. That's the blessing. Okay? Now go back. Go back. Genesis chapter 27. Read verse 40 now. Let's see how he's going to attain, excuse me, how is he going to get to have, how, how is he going to get to live on the best places on earth? How is he going to do it? Is he going to ask for it? Is he going to vote? You understand? Is he going to cast lots for it? No. Let's see how he's going to do it. Read. The book of Genesis chapter 27 verse 40. Go ahead. And by the sword shall thou live. By, the, by thy sword shall thou live. That's how they'll be able to live on the best places on earth. By war. Warfare. That's how they'll be able to own everything. That's how they'll be able to conquer all nations and weaken them, like Isaiah was saying, by the sword. War. They don't vote. They don't cast laws for nothing. They don't ask permission. They, don't, they signed treaties. They broke all the treaties they signed with the Hoshit Bevalimu. That's what they did. Read that again, verse 39. No, verse, verse 40. Come on. The book of Genesis, chapter 27, verse 40. Watch this. And by thy sword shalt thou live. By thy sword shalt thou live. Go ahead. And shall serve thy brother. But guess what? They wanna, they are our servants. Right now they are just slaves on the loose. That's what they are. Slaves on the loose. You understand? They are looking for bounty hunters. That's us. Hunters. Right now we are fishers. Afterwards, we're gonna be hunters. Mm, hold that. Let's get it. I think I'm making it up. I'm not making it up. I think it's in Jeremiah, right? Oh, yes. Jeremiah 16, verse 16. Watch this. Right now, we are fishers of men. You understand? We have to negotiate with the Negro, 
giving you attitude when we are on the streets. <laughs> Read that. <laughs> Go ahead. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 16, verse 16. Watch this. Come on. Behold, mm -hmm. I will send for many fishes. I will send for many fishes. That's why Christ says, I will make you fishers of men. Go ahead. Say of the Lord. Uh -huh. And they shall fish them. They shall fish them. That's what we're doing, brothers. When we go to the street corners to teach the gospel, we fishermen. Go ahead. And after. And after we after we done with the fishing, go ahead. Will I send for many hunters? Will I what? Will I send for many hunters? The Lord says He's gonna send for many hunters. We're gonna hunt them. Bounty hunters. Go ahead. And they shall hunt them. They shall what? And they shall hunt them. On that day, you're gonna have a two-edged sword in your hand. Not this one. No, 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 no. This is a spiritual sword that we have now. But on that day, we're going to have that golden sword that comes from on high. Go ahead. From every mountain. From every mountain because they're going to be hiding. They're going to be in hiding, hiding under the clefts of the rock. You know, they call them underground bunkers. Doomsday bunkers. We're going to hunt them. We're going to find them there. We're going to destroy them. Read. And from every hill. And from every hill, wherever they're going to be hiding. Read. And out of the holes of the rock. Out of the clefts of the rocks. Read. Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Okay, that's it. Drop that. Go back. Okay, I just wanted to mention that. Okay, go back to where it was at now. Genesis 39 verse 40. 27 verse 40. The book of Genesis chapter 27 verse 40. Go ahead. And by thy sword shalt but, thou live. And by thy sword shalt thou live. Go ahead. And shall serve thy brother. Because they're supposed to serve us. It's not the time yet, but we're getting into those days. Watch this. Give me a book of chapter 1 verse 6. Okay, it says, by thy sword shall thou live. I'm going to show you how they will be able to get access to the best places on earth. You understand? And they'll be, they'll be able to conquer and be everywhere on the earth. Watch this. Habakkuk, chapter 1, verse 6. Read that. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 1, verse 6. Mm -hmm. For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans. He says, I what? I raise up the Chaldeans. I raise up the Chaldeans. Go ahead. That bitter. That end. what? That bitter. That what? That bitter. It says, I raise up the Chaldeans. That what? That bitter. That bitter, come on. And hasty nation. That bitter and hasty nation. But hold that. Give me the book of Isaiah, chapter 13. I think it's verse 19. Okay, watch this. Because it says the Chaldeans here. Remember, I, show, I told you. I'll show you in the Bible that the, the most High God calls this white man by different names. You understand? Isaiah chapter 13, read verse 19. Watch what is called here. The Chaldeans. Watch this. The book of Isaiah chapter 13, verse 19. Whoa, go on, come on, come on. And Babylon. And what? And Babylon. And Babylon. The same Babylon, the great, that we was reading about in Revelation 17, verse 5. Revelation 18, verse 3 and 10. Revelation 18, verse 2 and 10. Read. The glory of kingdoms. The glory of kingdoms. That mighty city. That golden city. Come on. The beauty of the Chaldees' excellency. You see that the beauty of the Chaldeans' excellency. Go ahead. Shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. Because the ancient Babylon was not overthrown the way Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. So he's letting you know, Isaiah is not talking about the Babylon of Nebuchadnezzar. He's talking about Babylon the Great. Because Babylon the Great is going to be destroyed like Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. Understand that. So let's go back now. Habakkuk, chapter 1, verse 6 again. Okay, come on. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 1, verse 6. Read. For lo, mm -hmm. I raise up the Chaldeans. The Chaldeans, that's Babylon the Great, the United States of America, Esau, Edom, Idumia, the wicked, the great dragon, the serpent. You understand? Read. That bitter and hasty nation. Why is he calling them bitter and hasty? I'm going to show you why he's calling them that. Hold that. Give me Genesis 27 verse 34. Let's go back there. I'm going to show you something. Why is he calling America, this white man, they, he says they are bitter and hasty nation. Genesis 27 verse 34. Read that. The book of Genesis chapter 27 verse 34. Go ahead. And when Esau heard mm -hmm. the words of his father. When he heard the words of his father after he blessed our forefather Jacob. Read. He cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry. There it is right there. 
Read that again. Verse 34. The book of Genesis, chapter 27, verse 34. Watch this. And when Esau heard the words of his father. When he heard the words of his father that he blessed Jacob. Watch this. He cried. He cried. Come on. With a great. With a great. And exceeding. Bitter cry. An exceeding bitter cry. That's why he's bitter and hasty. When it comes to conquering us, especially destroying us, listen, he comes with the quickness, he comes with all power and might of Satan. Read that again, verse 34. Come on. And when Esau heard mm. the words of his father, read, he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry. Go ahead. And said unto his father, mm -hmm. Bless me. Even me also, oh my father. You see that? Bless me, even me also, oh my father. Read verse 41. This is after the blessing was given to Jacob, our forefather. What happened to Esau's spirit? Watch this. Verse 41. Read. And Esau hated Jacob. Esau did what? And Esau hated Jacob. You don't see anywhere where Jacob hated Esau. You don't see it because Esau hated his birthright. He didn't give a damn about his birthright. You understand? But he did what? And Esau hated Jacob. Because he hated his brother without a cause. He hated his brother without a cause. You understand? Read. Because of the blessing. Because of the blessing. Come on. Wherewith his father blessed him. You see that? The reason why the white man hates our guts is because of the blessing that was given to us. And this blessing was predestinated. The blessing was prepared before the world was, we was given this. We just reading the history of the details what happened when we were here on earth. But this was given to us already before the world began. And Esau knows that, by the way. Not only that, but Esau knows that he lied. He said, no, Jacob supplanted him. No, Jacob didn't supplant him. Jacob said, sell me your birthright, I'll give you the meat. He said, I don't care about this birthright. I'm hungry. Even before that, it was prophesied that the elder shall serve the younger. We read the prophecy already. You understand? Verse 41 again. Come on. The book of Genesis, chapter 27, verse 41. Read. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. Read. And Esau said in his heart. Esau said in his mind. What did he say? The days of mourning for my father at hand. You see that? The days of mourning for my father at hand, meaning my father is about to die. Go ahead. Then. Then. Go ahead. Will I slay my brother Jacob? You see that premeditated murder. He's been wanting to destroy us from the jump. Go ahead. Verse 42. Watch this. And these words of Esau, her elder son, were told to Rebecca. Who told our foremother Rebecca the words of Esau, the Mosai? The Mosai told our foremother Rebecca what Esau was planning in his mind. Read. And she sent and called Jacob, her younger son, mm -hmm. and said unto him, Read. Behold. Thy brother Esau, as touching thee, as touching you, meaning he wants to put you to death, go ahead, doth comfort himself, does what? Doth comfort himself, to do what? Purposing to kill thee. You see how these nations, they come, this, this is how the white man comforts himself. The white man comforts himself by killing us. Why do you think they are killing our brothers and sisters in the, in the, in the US? They are killing our brothers and choking them in, in China. They are killing our brothers and sisters here in South Africa. There's a, there's a, listen, what are, many of our people don't know that during apartheid, an apartheid is still alive and well. Don't get it twisted. There was a, there was a biological and nuclear, there was a biological and nuclear warfare war that was poured upon us by the Buddhists. Chemical and biological warfare here in South Africa. I'm going to go into that history, not today. Lord's will. You understand? I'm going to show you how the Buddhists you understand? They worked together under with what? Voder Basson. Voder Basson was a chemist. You understand? So he was launching chemical and biological warfare on, South, on black people here in South Africa. That's the history you don't know. So all the tear cases that they were pushing, when they were saying, no, we're doing it to di disperse the crowds. No. When you read the history, it tells you that in the tear cases, there were actually agents in the chemical agents to make sure that our sisters were barren. To make sure that our brothers were sterile. They could not conceive. They could not produce seed. That's the history you don't know. That's why many of our brothers and sisters, they could not have children during that time. You understand? 
Although the white men tried, many of them, they did not have kids. But the majority were kids because we multiplied it, the more they oppressed us. But the point is, there was a chemical and a biological warfare that was launched against us here in Mzanzi. Guess what? Now there's a chemical and a biological warfare launched around the earth. By who? Still Esau. Now he's killing us with diseases. COVID-19. You understand? Smallpox. When they killed the Native American Indians, when they accepted them and gave them blankets, they, were in, they infected them with what? Smallpox. Because when you read the history, when they conquered the, 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 the tribe of Gad, they say they never seen cockroaches before until the Christopher Columbus and them showed up. They never saw roaches before until Christopher Columbus and them showed up. They never saw mosquitoes before until the white men showed up in the Americas. So that means that they were carrying these, 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 uh, these animals with carrying diseases with them to the Americas to infect our brothers and sisters over there. You can't make this up. Because you go to Alexander, you see a Likundwani is bigger than a is bigger than a Corolla. The Gundwan is bigger than a than a than a than a Picanto. Huge rats. <laughs> Listen, man, go to Alexander, you see the roach, the, the red is big as a picanto. You can see those are not normal reds. And they are not afraid of the people either. They are not even afraid of a cat. Cats run away from those rats. I've seen it with my own eyes. I've seen it. I'm not making it up. I've seen cats run away from a, from, a, from a rat in Alexander. Because those were what? Those are engineered. Those rats were engineered in the lab by Voder Basson during the apartheid. Don't get it twisted. Do not be fooled. Okay? Now, um, let's go back. Go back to Habakkuk. Chapter 1 verse 6. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 1 verse 6. Mm -hmm. For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans. I raise up the Chaldeans, go ahead, meaning Babylon, the great, go ahead. That bitter, that and, bitter hasty. and hasty nation because of what Esau was crying with an exceeding bitter cry because he did not get the blessing that our forefather the Jacob got. Read. Which shall march through the breadth of the land. They will march through the breadth of the land, meaning they're going to conquer. Read. To possess. To what? To possess. To own. To take over. To conquer. Read. The dwelling places that are not there. You see that? They're going to conquer and possess the dwelling places that don't belong to them. That's why it says, by thy sword shall thou live. That's how they're going to be able to get to live on the best places on earth. Because why? They're going to bring war upon the, upon the dark nations, which is us. And they're going to possess their dwelling places. When it says dwelling places, that means people were dwelling there. There was people upon the land. But in the history, they say Christopher Columbus discovered the Americas. But how can you discover a place where people are already staying there? That's why it says the dwelling places that are not theirs because people were staying over there. Read. Come on. They are terrible and dreadful. This nation, the white man is terrible and is dreadful. Go ahead. Their judgment and their dignity shall proceed of themselves. They don't care. Whoever they come across, especially us, they destroy, they rape, they rob, they murder, they hang us in Pretoria. Go ahead. Their horses also are swifter than the locusts. You see the leopards. Because they came with what? They came with horses and chariots. Read. And are more fierce than the evening wolves. You see that? They are fierce. They didn't care. They, they didn't care about the old. They didn't care about the young. Read. And their horsemen shall spread themselves. Their horsemen, their shall, meaning their soldiers will spread themselves up across the, 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 bread, the, the best places of the earth. Read. And their horsemen shall come from far. They shall come from far. Where did they come from? Rome. Greece. The Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. Read. They shall fly as the eagle that hasteth to eat. Because that's their symbol. They've got the symbol of the eagle. The eagle is a bear of prey. You understand? And we are the prey. They're the predator. They prey on the poor, which is us. Read. They shall come all for violence. You see that? No, no, no. They came for spices. They shall come all for violence. No, they came to make friendships with us. They shall come all for violence. They came for violence because they came with the sword because that's their blessing. War. They didn't ask for the land. They took it by force, by violence. Read. Their faces shall sub up 
as the east wind. They're gonna conquer everywhere. Go ahead. They shall gather the captivity as the sand. You see that they're gonna gather the captivity as the sand because they're not. They didn't come here for spices. They didn't come here because they were looking for water. They didn't come here because they wanted to to join along with us. Mm -mm. They came here because they wanted to what? Gather the captivity as the sand. They wanted to take over. Go ahead. And they shall scoff at the king. They shall scoff at the kings. Our kings that they found over here, they scoffed at them. Read. And the princes shall be a scorn unto them. You see that the princes shall be, a, our princes will be a, was a scorn unto them. The kings that they found here. You understand? Go ahead. Boom, answer Musa. Read. They shall derive every stronghold. What verse you at? Verse 10, sir. Read that verse again. Verse 10. The book of Abaku, chapter 1, verse 10. Come on. And they shall scoff at the king. Mm -hmm. And the princes shall be a scorn unto them. Read. They shall deride every stronghold. They shall deride every stronghold because they destroyed our city. They bent up everything. Look at what D.F. Malan did during his time. He bent up Sophia Town. How did they do? They came with bombs. They bombed it from with the aeroplanes. Letting you know that we really had something going. It took them bombing us to destroy it. We had banks. We had hotels. We had restaurants. We had property. You understand? The thing that we build ourselves, they said, no. Destroy them all. Destroy it and destroy it. They came with guns and bombs and they dropped bombs on Sapphire Town. That's what they did. Even in 1960 during Sharpville, they dropped bombs on us. Go ahead. For they shall heap dust and take it. They shall heap dust and take it. That's going into what? Us. They took over everything. Now watch this. Give me the book of Revelation now, chapter 13, verse 2. Revelation 13, because we read Revelation 13, verse 1. Now I'm going to go back to Revelation 13 now, verse 2 now. We're going to read verse 2. Watch this. The book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 2. I'm showing you their blessing. Their blessing is the spirit of war on them. The house of the dragon. In the house of the dragon is war. There's no voting. In the house of the dragon, there's war. There's no voting. There's violence in the house of the dragon. Understand that? Go ahead. The book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 2. Watch this. Come on. And the beast which I saw mm -hmm. was like a leopard. The, the, and the beast which I saw was what? Was like a leopard. No, no. Read that right. Verse 2 again. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. Was like unto a leopard. Is as the beast. Remember, what color is this beast? It's red. Jump up to chapter 12, verse 3. So we don't get confused here. We need to understand the color of this beast is red. Read it. The book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 3. Go ahead. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Read. And behold, uh -huh. a great red dragon. A great what dragon? A great red dragon. So now we know that the, the beast is red. So don't forget that. In chapter 12, it's called the dragon. In chapter 13, it's called the beast. Okay? Chapter 13, verse 2 now. The book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 2. Read. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. Because when you read the history in Daniel 7, Alexander, the so-called, the Alexander the gay, was compared to as a leopard. You understand? So the Greeks is part of this beast. You follow? Remember, the beast is red. So the beast is part of this dragon. Go ahead. And his feet were as the feet of a bear. There, there is feet as the feet of a bear. Because when you read in Daniel 7, who was given the symbol of the bear? It was Persia. The Persians. In chapter 8, the Persians are given another symbol. The ram with two horns. But in chapter 7, is referred to as what is given the symbol of the bear. But remember, this beast is red. Because the Persians were not red. They were dark-skinned people. So they're letting you know that they took attributes or characteristics of the, the Persians. You understand? Because the Persians have the dual kingdom. You understand? The Persians and the Medes. America today, they have what? Republicanism and democratic. Democratic and Republican. Democrats and Republicans. You understand? So... They, meaning what? They took attributes or characteristics of the Persians. But who has the symbol of the bear today? Russia. Russia. They even have a vodka called Russian bear. Yep. Russian bear. Okay, go back. Revelation 13 verse 2 again. The book of Revelation chapter 13 verse 2. Wait, we didn't go anywhere. So read verse 2 again. And the beast 
which I saw was like unto a leopard. Go ahead. And his feet were as the feet of a bear. Russia. The meaning what? Russia is part of this dragon. Go ahead. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion. When you read Daniel 7, the symbol of the lion was given to who? Babylon. You understand? The Babylon of Nebuchadnezzar. But we know this dragon is what color? Is red. So he's letting you know that they took attributes of ancient Babylon. You understand? The attributes of ancient Babylon was what? Worshipping what? Worshipping of idols, which is all these nations was doing. But Babylon, remember, it says what? The daughter of Babylon. They are the daughter of Babylon. That's why they took the symbol here of the lion. You understand? The daughter of Babylon, because why? They took attributes of ancient Babylon. Now, today who took the symbol of the lion? Great Britain. Great Britain. You understand? Okay, go ahead. Meaning, the Great Britain is part of this dragon. Because it's part of the what? The seven heads of the dragon. Don't forget now. Go ahead. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion. So, Great Britain is part of this dragon, which America springs out of. Read on. And the dragon. And the what? And the dragon. Now, this dragon here is not talking about the white man. This dragon here is talking about the spiritual demon Satan. That's the dragon here. Read that paragon and the what? And the dragon mm -hmm. gave him his power. And the dragon gave him his power. Whoa. The spirit of war upon him. So when we read in Genesis 27, when it says, By thy sword shalt thou live, it wasn't really our forefather Isaac giving him that blessing. He was the Lord was showing us that he's gonna have an owner that is gonna bless him with the spirit of war. The dragon, the spiritual demon Satan. Read that part again. And the what? And the dragon. And the dragon. Gave him his power. And the dragon gave him. The dragon gave this white man the power he has. War. The power of the power and the spirit of war upon him. Read. And his seed. And his what? And his seed. His seed goes into what? His position. To be the top kingdom on earth. His seed. Because they are the ruler of all nations on earth. His seed. Go ahead. And great authority. Great influence. The great authority goes into America's influence. America has, in, it has influence all over the earth. America's influence, he influences all nations on earth. I'm going to prove that. Give me Second Ezra chapter 11 verse 39. Watch this. Second Ezra chapter 11 verse 39. Come on. Second book of Ezra chapter 11 verse 39. Go ahead. Add not doubt. Add not, add, not thou it, add not thou it, go ahead, that remainest of the four beasts. Are you not the one that remains of the four beasts that he showed in Daniel, that he showed to our forefather Daniel, go ahead. Whom I made to reign in my world. So America was made to rule in this world. Go ahead, by the Most High. go ahead. That the end of their time. That the end of their rulership, go ahead. Might come through them. Because their, the end of their rulership will come through when they are ruling. And they are the ones that are going to want, going to be responsible for studying the end of their rulership. Read. And the fourth came. And the fourth came. The fourth beast came. Go ahead. And overcame all the beasts that were past. The, all the beasts that were before it. He says it overcame all of them. The fourth beast is wrong, Ben. Go ahead. And had power over the world with great fear. And have power over the world. Influence. Over the whole world. Because Rome didn't influence the whole world back then. But today America influences the whole planet Earth. Read. And over the whole compass of the Earth. That's it right there. And over the whole compass of the Earth. Read. With much wicked oppression. With much wicked oppression. Come on. And so long time dwelt he upon the Earth with deceit. You see that thing? Which deceiveth the whole world. Read. For the Earth. As thou not judge with truth. There is, there is, they are not judging the earth with truth because they are pushing lies. Read. For thou hast afflicted the meek. They afflicted the meek. We are the meek. The meek that they also found in the Americas, the tribe of Gad, northern kingdom. Read. Thou hast had the peaceable. They, they had the peaceable. 
they presented them with gifts and food. They gave them blankets with smallpox instead. Go ahead. That was loved liars. That was loved liars. That's why you've got Columbus Day, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Valentine's Day, Christmas. They love liars. Read. And destroyed the dwellings of them that brought forth fruit. You see that? They destroyed the dwelling of them that brought forth fruits. Our brothers and sisters in the Americas, the tribe of Gad, they met them with fruits, with food and all that. They met them with violence and disease. Read. And has cast down the walls of such as did see as did thee no harm. They, they, didn't, they, didn't do no, they didn't do them no harm. You understand? Go ahead. Therefore is thy wrongful dealing come upon the highest. You see, their, their wrongful dealings will come upon them. They come to the most high. Watch this. Because their sins, America's sins, has not reached unto heaven yet. This hasn't taken place. You understand? Their, America's wrongful dealings has not come up to the most high to say, it's time, my son, leap down to heaven and destroy them all. That hasn't happened yet. But that day is coming. Go ahead. Therefore, if thy wrongful dealing come up unto the highest, uh -huh. and thy pride unto the mighty. Because they are a very proudful nation. They are a very prideful nation. Understand that. Okay. So go back. Go back to uh, Revelation 13. Verse 2 again. The book of Revelation chapter 13 verse 2. But now we went over this right. I want you to pay close attention now. Verse 2 again. Watch this. And the beast which I saw uh -huh. was like unto a leopard. Was like unto a leopard. Go ahead. And his feet were at the feet of a bear. Read. And his mouth. As the mouth of a lion. Come on. And the dragon. And the what? And the dragon. The dragon goes into, this is the spiritual demon Satan. Go ahead. Gave him his power. Did what? Gave him his power. And the dragon gave him. The dragon gave him. Pay attention to that word. Read. Gave him his power. His power meaning what? He is what? The spirit of war upon him. Go ahead. And his seat. His position upon the earth as the greatest kingdom on earth. And great authority. Great authority meaning what? His influence. Read. And I saw. No, no, that's it on that. And great authority. Now let's see who's the dragon that gave this beast, this red beast, their power. Their position, their seat, and their great authority. Give me Luke 4. Watch this. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. I'm going to show you something. Pay close attention. Okay, Luke chapter 4. You know what? Before you go there, go back to Revelation 13. Revelation chapter 13. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to read it in a parable form and I'm going to read it in plain form. Watch this. Read that. Revelation 13 verse 2. Then we're going to jump down to verse 4. We're going to connect 2 and 4 together. Watch this. The book of Revelation chapter 13 verse 2. Pay close attention. Come on. And the beast which I saw was and, like, and the beast which I saw, read on, read on, was like unto a leopard, mm -hmm. and his feet were as the feet of a bear, read, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, mm -hmm. and the dragon gave him his power, and the what? And the dragon gave him his power, and the dragon gave this white man the power that he has. Go ahead, and his feet uh -huh. and great authority. Jump down to verse four now. Watch this. Verse 4. Mm -hmm. And they worshipped the dragon. They did what? And they worshipped the dragon. They worshipped the dragon that gave him the power, the seat, and the great authority that they had. Go ahead. Which gave power unto the beast. Which gave power unto the white man. Now, when you watch that movie Transformers, then, you see that man goes and speaks to the, the, the dragon. Uh, the, the dragon is red, by the way. You understand? The Transformer is like, is red. You see that they didn't even show his face. They only show the feet down. And they show him with the, they show him giving um, what melon, right? They give him melon the staff. He says the dragon is yours to command. That's what they said. You understand? The IT team is not advanced yet, but we need to show these things that I'm talking about. Okay, read that verse. Read that verse 4 again. Come on. The book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 4. Go ahead. And they worshipped the dragon. They worshipped the dragon. Go ahead. Which gave power unto the beast. Read. And they worshipped the beast. They worshipped the beast. Meaning the nations now worship the beast. Because the beast worships the dragon. Read. Say. Mm. 
who is like unto the beast? Who is like unto this beast now? Who is like who is like the white man? Read. Who is able to make war with him? Who is able to make war with this white man? Why? Because he's got the what? He's got the bombs, nuclear bombs. That's right. That's why they ask us. They've got the listen. They've got the, their nuclear arsenal is is unmatched. America's nuclear arsenal is unmatched. Even the secret type of weaponry that they have developed that nobody knows about it yet. You only see the glimpse of them in sci-fi movies. You understand? Go ahead. Who's able to do what? Who is like unto the beast? Mm -hmm. Who is able to make war with him? Who's, who can make war with this white man? Because they just dropped the atom bomb. But I'm moving ahead. Let me go back. Now give me Luke 4. Luke chapter 4. We're going to read it plainly now. This white man, the power that he has, the influence that he has, the seat of authority that he has, he is because he worships the dragon. Let's find out who the dragon is. Read that. Luke 4 verse 4. The book of Luke chapter 4 verse 4. Watch this. And Jesus answered him saying, mm -hmm. It is written that man shall not live by bread alone. Is that verse 4? Yes. No, no, verse 5. Verse, I'm sorry, verse 5. Verse 5 is what I want. The book of Luke, chapter 4, verse 5. Watch this. And the devil. And the what? And the devil. The devil. This is the spiritual demon Satan here. Tempting our Lord and Savior. Read again. Watch this. And the devil. And the what? And the devil. And the devil. Taking, taking him up into a high mountain. He took him into a high mountain. The pinnacle of the temple. Go ahead. Showed unto him. All the kingdoms of the world. He showed him all the empires of the world, including America. Go ahead. In a moment of time. Split of a second. Read. And the devil said unto him, mm -hmm. All this power. All this what? All this power. All this power. All this power and influence. Go ahead. Will I give thee? Will I what? Will I give thee? Will I what? Will I give thee? Will I give thee? Will I give thee? All that. Go back to Revelation 13 verse 2. Read 2 and 4 together, again. The book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 2. Read. And the beast, which was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, mm -hmm. and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. Read. And the dragon gave him his power. And the dragon did what? And the dragon gave him his power. That's the same thing that the devil said to Christ. All this power will I give thee. Will I give thee. Okay, come on. And his seat mm -hmm. and great authority. You see that? Verse 4 now. Come on. Verse 4. Mm -hmm. And they worship the dragon. They worship the dragon that gave them power. Go ahead. Which gave power we, unto the beast. Which did what? Which gave power unto the beast. Which did what? Which gave power unto the beast. Go back to Luke now. Chapter 4 verse 5 again. Watch this. The book of Luke chapter 4 verse 5. Read. And the devil mm -hmm. taking him up. Into a high mountain. Read. Showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world. Come on. In a moment of time. Split of a second. Come on. And the devil said unto him, mm -hmm. All this power will I give thee. All this power I'm going to give you, the white Mr. White. Uh, he's talking to Christ here. All this power I'm going to give you, Christ. And the glory of them. And the riches of them. Power and riches. Money, power, and respect. Isn't that what they say in the hip hop world? Money, power, and respect. Yeah, they get it from Satan. Read. For that is delivered unto me. Because that the money and power and the respect and the great authority was delivered unto the spiritual demon Satan. Hold that, Job 9.24. The power and the riches that is God was delivered unto him. He says, because this was delivered unto him, unto me. Watch this. Because, I mean, you, you know, you read... The, the, the net worth of Google. But they are worth 400 billion. I'm like, what? How in the hell does that happen? Like a company, I'm sure they are more now. I'm sure they are more than 400 billion. Maybe their net worth now is more than 400 billion. Because I'm talking about six, seven years ago. They were worth 400 billion. I mean, that doesn't make any sense, man. It's not normal. There's some spirit going on here. All praise to the Mosai for this book. 
Read that Bible again. Job 9.24. The book of Job chapter 9 verse 24. Read. The earth is given unto the hand of the wicked. There it is. The wicked. The wicked. The earth is given. Remember it says, all this power will I give thee. You see that? All this power will I give you. Read that part again. And the earth is what? And the earth. For you said the book of Job, chapter 9, verse 24. Read. The earth is given. Is what? Is given. Is given. Come on. Unto the hand of the wicked. Unto the hand of the wicked. We know who the wicked is. That's why I went to different names. The white man is referred or referred to in the Bible. The wicked. Go ahead. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. How did he cover the faces of the judges? He changed all the pictures in the Bible, all our images in the Bible, and made them white. Give me that in First Maccabees 3, 3 verse 48. You understand? They cover the faces of the judges. It, they call it iconoclasm. The whitewashing of images. Iconoclasm. Read that. First Maccabees 3 48. First book of Maccabees, chapter 3, verse 48. Watch this. And laid open the book of the law. And laid open the book of the law is the Bible. Go ahead. Wherein the heathen. The what? The heathen. The Greeks. Go ahead. Had sought to paint the likeness of their image. You see that? That's how they covered the faces of the judges. Okay, go back. Luke 4. What verse we had? Which verse, verse 6? Read verse 5 again. Luke 4 verse 4. Luke, Luke, Luke 4 verse 5 again. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. The book of Luke chapter 4 verse 5. Go ahead. And the devil mm -hmm. taking him up into a high mountain. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain. Go ahead. Showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world. All the empires of the world. Read. In a moment of time. Come on. And the devil said unto him. And the devil said unto Christ, read. All this power. All this power, come on. Will I give thee. Will I give thee. Go ahead. And the glory of them. And the riches of them, read. For that is delivered unto me. You see that? Because the, hair, the earth is given unto the hand of the wicked. Read. And to whomsoever I will give it. And to whomsoever I will give it. Go ahead. What's the condition? If thou therefore. If thou therefore will do what? Will worship me. If you worship me, Christ, what's going to happen? All it's, shall be done. I'm going to give you all this power and riches. But Christ obviously didn't take that demonic, um, you know, the demonic uh, offer. Because he's the son of God. He knows the true riches. These are not the true riches. These are crumbs. Hmm? These are crumbs falling from the master's table. Now give me Matthew 4. The same account. Matthew chapter 4, read verse 8 now. The book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 8. Read. Again, mm -hmm. the devil. The take, what? The devil. The devel, read. Taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain. Into an exceeding high mountain, read. And showed him all the kingdoms of the world. All the kingdoms of the earth, Russia, Germany, America, so on and so forth. Come on. And the glory of them. The riches of them, read. He saith unto him, mm -hmm. all these things will I give thee. Will I what? Will I give thee. Will I give you, go ahead. If thou wilt. Fall down and worship me. You see that if thou will fall down and worship me, go ahead. Then said Jesus unto him, mm -hmm. Get thee hands, Satan. That's how we deal with it. Get thee hands, get thee hands, Satan. But guess what? Listen, but Christ didn't take the deal, but the white man did. You see that? Jesus Christ, the black Messiah, he did not take Satan's deal, but the white man did though. The white man took the deal. To worship Satan. That's why he's got the power, the riches, the seat, the great authority that he has today. It's not because he's clever. No, it's because he worships the devil. What you want, what you what you're gonna come to find out is that in the house of the dragon, they worship the devil. That's what they worship. In the house of the dragon, they worship the devil. Go back to Revelation 13, verse 4 again. The book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 4. Watch this. And they worship the dragon. They did what? And they worship the dragon. They worship the devil. The white man worships the devil. That's what you need to understand. The white man worships the devil. I know some people are upset right now. Not my Jesus. Yes. You understand? 
I know you are worried right now. You are upset. Mm -mm. The Bible is telling you, verse 4, one more again. The book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 4. Brothers, are we good here? Oh, please, keep going. And they worship the dragon. They did what? And they worship the dragon. They worship the devil. Read. Which gave power unto the beast. Which gave power unto the white man. So all the power that the white man has is because they worship the devil. Read on. And they worship the beast, say, mm. who is like unto the beast? So the nations worship the beast. These other nations, they bow down to America. They bow down to the Europeans. Why? Because the Europeans worship the devil. Read. Who is able to make war with him? Who is able to make war with him? Read. That's it on that. That's it on that. Drop that. Give me th Second Thessalonians 2 verse 10. Second Thessalonians now. Chapter 2 verse 10. Now we have a better understanding how the white man got the power that he has. is because he worships Satan. So guess what? All the technological advancements that they've made. The touch screen. Hmm? The infrared. How did they get to the moon? Hmm? Because they worship the devil. The devil is the one that gave them the knowledge of science. To get to the moon. Hmm? To build nuclear bombs. Where did he get this knowledge from? Satan. Where did he get the knowledge to build Wi-Fi. Think about it. Wi-Fi. You can browse wirelessly. I can talk to somebody who's in the US right now. Somebody who's in China. Who's in Russia. How did he manage to do all that? Satan. The devil. You understand? How did he manage to build Microsoft? Hmm? Bill Gates. So he just came up, you know, I was sleeping and then this idea came. No, Satan came to you. And you build Microsoft. Elon Musk. The biblical devil. That's why he wants to escape, he wants to go to Mars. Hmm? To escape the judgment that's coming upon him. Because they worship Satan. Satan is the one that, what? That whispers in their ears to come up with these ideas. Because me, I used to ask myself, well, at work, how does this white man know to build the Linux operating system? How did he come up with that? Hmm? How did he come up with that? How did he come up with the Kali operating system? It even has a dragon on it. <laughs> you can't make this up. It's got the dragon on it. Listen, how did he come up with that? The devil. The devil. You understand? Now, Give me the book of 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 10. Let's get some more. 2 book of Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 10. One thing you need to be going to come to realize is that in the house of the dragon, they worship the devil. Read what you got. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse, verse 10. No. no. That's not the one I want. Verse 9. I'm sorry, verse 9. That's the one I want. Verse 9, verse 9. Let me fix my notes here. Second Thessalonians 2, verse 9. Watch this. Second book of Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 9. Go ahead. Even him. Even him, the wicked, in verse 8. Read verse 8 so we know who this is. Who is the him? Verse 8. Uh -huh. And then shall the wicked be revealed. And then shall that wicked be revealed. That wicked. Read again, read it right. Verse 8. Come on. Second book of Th Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 8. Watch this. And then shall that wicked be revealed. Then shall that wicked be revealed. Because the wicked is going to be revealed after they come at the falling away first. After Israel goes into captivity, uh, then Israel is in captivity. Israel don't know who he is. Then the Lord stirs up the spirit of Judah to wake up Israel. Then the wicked be then the wicked is revealed. By who? The prophets. That's what we're doing right now. Revealing who the wicked is in the spirit of Christ. Read that verse 8 again. Second book of Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 8. Go ahead. And then shall that wicked be revealed. Then shall that wicked be revealed. Go ahead. 
whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. The spirit of the Lord's mouth is this Bible. Go ahead. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Next verse. Watch this. Even him. Even him, the wicked in verse 8. Read. Who's coming. Who's what? Who's coming. Watch this. Come on. Is after the waking of Satan. Oh, praise to the most high God. Read again, read again, verse 9. Come on. Second book of Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 9. Watch this, come on. Even him. Even him, the wicked. Who's coming. Who's coming. Is after the waking of Satan. Because Satan is his father. He works for the devil. He worships the devil. Now watch this. Hold that. Give me the book of Revelation 18, verse 7. Now we're going to deal with what? I'm going to deal with all power. What is that power goes into? It goes into what? The power to make war with the people on the earth. Particularly the dark nations. Read that. The book of Revelation chapter 13 verse 7. Watch this. Come on. And it was given unto him. It was given unto this white man by the devil. To make war with the saints. The power that this white man has was given unto him by Satan. To do what? To make war. To make what? To make war. To make what? To make war. To make war with the who? With the saints. With the saints. I know some of you forgot already who the saints are. Go back to Psalms 148, verse 14. Power. The devil gave this white man the power he has to make war with the saints. Who the saints? Read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 148, verse 14. Come on. He exalted the horn of his people. He also exalted the horn of his people. Go ahead. He also exalted the horn of his people. Read. The praise of all his saints. The praise of all his saints. Come on. Even of the children of Israel. The saints are the children of Israel. Come on. A people near unto him. A people near unto him. Read. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. That's the saints. That's who the saints are. The saints are the 12 tribes. Now go back. Go back. Revelation 13 verse 7. Come on. The book of Revelation chapter 13 verse 7. Read. And it was given unto him uh -huh. to make war with the saints. To make war with the Israelites. To make war with us. Read. And to overcome them. And to do what? And to overcome them. Now I'm going to deal with that. When he made war with us and to overcome us. That's when they conquered us. The war they started to make with us is during the Spanish and the Portuguese Inquisition. You understand? The Spanish and the Portuguese Inquisition, that's when they started to make war with us. You understand? That's when they started to make war with us. Following what? Their innocence. 1453. When they came back into power. Okay? Hold that. Go back to Malachi 1 verse 4. Because I said I'm going to come back to that. I'm going back to that now. Malachi 1 verse 4. Watch this. When they started to make war with us, it's during the Renaissance, when they came back into power. Malachi chapter 1, verse 4. Watch this. The book of Malachi chapter 1, verse 4. Read. Whereas Edom said, Esau Edom said, read. We are impoverished. We are poor. Read. But we will return. But we will what? But we will return. They returned during the Renaissance. 1453. Go ahead. And build the desolate place. And do what? And build the desolate place. You see, the white man says they will return and build the desolate places. Because their desolate places was when? When Rome fell in 193 AD. That's when they became poor. They became impoverished. They lived in the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia. Go ahead. Thus says the Lord of hosts. Uh -huh. They shall build. They shall build. They begin to build. Okay, when Rome came back into power. You understand? When they took over Constantinople, this our city of Byzantine, because we were ruling over the Byzantine Empire, the Byzantine Empire that was our city. You understand? They came in 1453 with the Turks as the Turks. They took over the city of Constantinople and they took over Spain too. Read. But I will throw down. The Lord says, but He will destroy them. Go ahead. And they shall call them the border of wickedness. Read. And. The people against whom... And the nation, the nation against whom what? The Lord has indignation forever. The Lord has indign indignation forever. Go back now to where he was at. Okay? Pay close attention here. So, Linnea, be ready with that book. All right? Read that. The book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 7. Read. And it was given unto him 
to make war with the saints to make war with the saints come on and to overcome them. and to overcome us to conquer us come on and and power was given was given him over all kingdoms over all kindreds come on and tongues and tongues and nations and nations so they rule over all nations on earth but the people that they made war with from the get go was us starting with constantinople byzantine okay watch this give me malachi give me micah 2 verse 1 because how did they make war with us how did they do it we are reading we are reading the continuation of the of the blessing that we read about in genesis 27 Read that. The book of Micah, chapter 2, verse 1. Watch this. Woe to them that devise iniquity. Woe to them that devise iniquity, meaning what? They devise sin. They come up with sin. Read. And work evil upon their bed. This white man, when we kneel and face towards Jerusalem and pray, no, they don't do that. They pray to Satan. When we kneel and pray towards Jerusalem, no, 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 they kneel and pray to Satan before they go to sleep. Read. When the morning is light. When the morning comes, what do they do? They practice it. They do what? They practice. They practice the evil they concocted the night before, praying to Satan. Read. Because it is in the power of their hand. Because it is in the what? Because it is in the power of their hand. Because this power was given to him by Satan. He had power because he's got power to pray to Satan, and Satan gives him the gives him the blessing. You understand? So now, go back to Micah, chapter 2. No, no, verse 2. Keep reading. Micah 2 and 2. Verse 2. Uh -huh. I'm and looking at Malachi. Micah 2, verse 2. Read that. And they covered field. They did what? And they covered field. And they covered field. They saw our land. They marched through the, the, what? the fatness of the land. Read. And take them by violence. How did they take it? And take them by violence. We read it in Habakkuk. It says, they shall come all for violence. Read. And houses. And our houses, Sophia Town, Alexander, you understand, Pretoria, Sharpville, which was taken over by John Lily Sharp and named after him. Read. And take them away. And take, they took our houses away. Read. So they oppress a man in his house. You see what happens when they took over? They oppress us. They oppress a man in his what? They oppress, so they oppress a man in his house. A man in his house, go ahead. Even a man in his heritage. They took our heritage too. Our land, our resources upon the land. They took our Bible too and made it an international book when the Bible is the book of the 12 tribes of Israel. You understand? So now, go back to Revelation 13, verse 2 again, verse 7 again. The book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 7. Read. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. So power was given unto this white man to make war with us. Read. And to overcome them. And to overcome us. Go ahead. And power was given him uh -huh. over all kindred, kindreds, and tongues, and tongues, and nations, and nations. Now watch this, because they started with what the Portuguese Inquisition. Write that down. Then the Spanish Inquisition, and guess what? 1492, they went to the Americas. They call it the Age of Discovery. You understand? When Christopher Columbus was going to North, Central, and South America to conquer Northern Kingdom. Watch this. Give me now. Give me the book. Let me show the audience the book that we're reading from. This is the book right here. The name of the book is called Apartheid, the Story of a Dispossessed People. This book right here. Okay? This is the book we're reading from by Motsoko Peku. This is our forefather from Zanzi for sure. Now read that. Go into the book. Okay? I'm going to show you the Spaniards that came over here also on the continent. Now read that. What pay? What read the title of the book? Reading from Apartheid: The Story of a Dispossessed People uh -huh. by Mutsuku Peg. By Mutsuku Peg, our great forefather. Go ahead. Page twelve. Page twelve. Now watch this. Read. In 1487. What is the title? Is there anything written on top there? Yes, sir. Now read that. Portuguese met Azanians in 1497. Portuguese met Azanians, meaning quote-unquote South Africans, because the, 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 this part of the continent was called Azania, actually. Azania. He pronounces Azania because we venek now, but it's Azania. It was called Azania, and when they conquered it, they called it South Africa. Read that. Portuguese met Azanians in 
For your teeth met as alliance in 1497. 1497. Now watch this. Go ahead. In 1487. In 1487, read. Captain Bartholomew Diaz. Bartholomew Diaz. This was a Portuguese, a Spaniard. So now this is before they even went to the Americas. You understand that? Because they went to the Americas in 1492. You understand? Read that again. In 1487. 1487. Read. Captain Bartholomew Diaz. Bartholomew Diaz. Go ahead. Reached the Cape Coast. He, he did what? Reached the Cape Coast. He arrived here in South Africa. Go ahead. Situated at the southern tip of Africa. The South Africa. As an eye. Go ahead. His successor. Mm -hmm. Vasco da Gama. His successor. Vasco da Gama. Because we learned about this in history. In history, when I was in high school, we learned about Bartholomew Diaz. We learned about Vasco da Gama. These demons, read. Who landed in Azania uh -huh. on Christmas Day, 1497. You see that 1497. You see that five years after the Christopher Columbus and the Conquistadors went to the Americas. Because these are the same families here. Spain. You see that? We just read that, that we read the first two years of the dragon plus Spain. We're reading about them in the history books now. Okay, go ahead. And called it Natal. And called it Natal. Read. Land of nativity. Land of nativity. Go ahead. In commemoration of Christ's birthday. You cannot make this up. And Christ was not born on December 25th. He was born on the Passover, the beginning of the year, which is March. Read it. Jan van Riebeck. Jan van Riebeck. Now here comes Jan van Riebeck. Jan van Riebeck is the forefather of the Bures now. You understand? Jan van Riebeck comes later on. Remember, Jan van Riebeck is the Dutch, right? But they remember, these are all the same nation here. They call themselves Portuguese or Spaniards, but these are all the same nation. Read. Jan van Riebeck himself uh -huh. met the Khoisan people in 1652. You see that? He met the Khoisan in 1652. Go ahead. Is He's, that it on that? No, sir. Read. He says that the Hottentots, mm -hmm. Khoi, and at first provided the gamma with beef. With what? With beef. You see that? We just read, go back to 2nd Ezra now. 2nd Ezra, okay. 2nd Ezra chapter 11. Might be verse 40. Let me hear verse 40. 2nd book of Ezra chapter 11 verse 40. No, 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 no. Verse 42. That's the one. Read that. 2nd book of Ezra chapter 11 verse 42. Go ahead. For thou hast afflicted the meek. Thou did what? For thou hast afflicted the meek. Thou hast afflicted the meek. Because that's the forefathers of who? Sarah Batman. Our sister. Who was paraded by the French in France to be what? To be put on display naked. You see, these white people, man, they're going to get it when the Lord returns. I'm telling you. Read. Thou hast had the peaceable. Thou hast had the peaceable. Because the Khoisan and the, they were peaceable unto them. Read. Thou hast loved liars. Thou hast loved liars. They love liars because they came with their own demonic doctrines. Read. And destroyed the dwellings of them that brought forth fruit. You see that? The dwellings of them that brought forth fruit. Because they what? The Khoisans, they gave them fruits. They said they gave them beef. But remember, it wasn't, the Khoisans, it wasn't just the Khoisans that they met. Before they met the Khoisans, they met our brothers and sisters in Limpopo and in Inhambani. They met our brothers and sisters in Inhambani. Understand that? Okay, come on. And has cast down the walls of such as did thee no harm. Go back to the book now. Yeah, Laurence Marquis, the brother from Mozambique says, he says, Laurence March. That's what they call it. That's how it's pronounced. Lorenke March, not Lorenke Maki. The hell is this? Read that. Jan van Riebeck himself met the Khoisan people. Portuguese is not my native, obviously. Read that. Jan van Riebeck himself met the Khoisan people in 1652. In 1652, go ahead. He says that the Hottentots, Khoi, had at first provided the gamma with beef. Read. Which he described as sweet as, sweet as that of Portugal. Mm, because... Guess, guess who was in Portugal? The Portuguese Inquisition. Who did they, who did they kick out under Isabella and King Ferdinand of Aragon? Because you had Isabella of the Castile, 
you were uh, Ferdinand of Aragon. You must watch the documentaries on YouTube. You must watch the documentary when Spain came to be. Very, because I was watching it, I think it was two days ago. You understand? Right? Yeah. Read that. And entertained his crew. And did what? And entertained his crew. Watch this. With pastoral flutes. Mm. Making pretty harmony for Negroes. You, oh. You see that thing right there? Negroes. Black people. Israelites. Understand that? Because they met Negroes. Because the term Negro comes from Spain, by the way. The term Negro and the term Gero come from Spain. These two terms don't come from the Americas. No, they come from Spain. Negro and Geros, they that term come from Spain and Portugal. During the Portuguese and the what? The Spanish Inquisition. Okay. Is that it on that? No, sir. Go ahead. And entertain his crew with pastoral flutes, making pretty harmony for Negroes. Mm, go ahead. Who are not expected to be musicians. You see that? You can't make this up. Go ahead. That's it on that. That's it on that? Okay, all places. So I just wanted to touch on that to re go over Vasco da Gama, Bartholomew Diaz, okay, Jan van Riebeck, and all that. Because these are the figures that we know of. So I'm going to talk about them to connect your history in the Bible to show you that Jan van Riebeck was not coming here for spices. He came here for what? For war. You understand? Vasco da Gama, Bartholomew Diaz, they did not come here for spices. They came here for war. Understand that? Okay, now watch this. Give me the book of Deuteronomy 28. Verse 48. We're still dealing with they made war with the saints. They started in Portugal, in Spain, they went to the Americas, and they came over here at the same time. Okay, to 20, 20, verse 48. Now, this goes into what? From the 1400s, now we fast forwarding to 1600s now. Okay? Because we went over 1652. Before that, it was 1619 with the transatlantic slave trade. I'm going to touch on that. Read that. To 20, 20, Verse 48. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 48. Go ahead. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies. Therefore shalt thou serve thy what? Shalt thou serve thy enemies. So the Lord is telling us these nations, they are not our friends. They are our enemies. Go ahead. Which the Lord shall send against thee. Because the Lord sent these nations against us, the Spaniards. Bu Vasco da Gama. Bu Bartholomew Diaz. You understand? Go ahead. We Jan van Riebeck. Read. In hunger. In what? In hunger. In hunger, we're going to serve them for food. Read. And in fact, for water, we're going to serve them for water, read. And in nakedness. For clothes, we're going to serve them for that, read. And in want of all things. Anything we lack, we're going to have to go to, we're going to go to them for all that. Basic necessities of life, read. And ye shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Meaning on thee, our enemies, the Spaniards, the Portuguese, you understand? They will put yokes of iron upon our necks, read. Until he have destroyed them. Until the yokes of iron are no longer necessary. Now they've destroyed our minds with politics, religion, and democracy. Understand that? Okay? Now, watch this. Give me to Tommy 28 verse 49. I'm going to touch on this right here. Because what happens is that, yes, the 16, this is 1619 I'm going over, which is the transatlantic. Let me fast forward a little bit, which I touched on it earlier, which is Jan van Riebeck in 1652. Because his forefathers... Later on, what did they do when they arrived here? Read that. Deuteronomy 28, verse 49. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 40, 28, verse 49. Watch this. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. You see that? The Lord shall bring a nation against you, Israelite, from far. They were coming from Spain. They were coming from Portugal. They were coming from Britain. They were coming from Netherlands. They were coming through the Dutch East India Company, the Vogue. Read. Read. From the end of the earth, mm -hmm. as swift as the eagle flies. Because they have the symbol of the eagle, because the eagle is a bear of prey. Read. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. You see that? A nation whose tongue we shall not understand. Because they were speaking what? Latin. They were speaking Latin. We didn't understand Latin. That's the that says, that says, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. But later on, what happened in 1976 here? Yeah? You understand? During the Soweto uprising, Bush, T.A.T. Machinini, what were they fighting for? Away with Africans, away. Because they were forcing Africans on us. That's why our forefathers rose up, Bush, T.A.T. Machinini, to fight that we're not going to speak Africans. Away with Africans, away. Yes, I'm saying it. 
Away with Kafir Khans, away. Read again, verse 49. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 49. Read. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. Go ahead. From the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flies. As swift as the eagle flieth. Go ahead. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. We got, we're not going to understand. We didn't understand Latin. Neither did we understand Africans. Read. A nation of fierce countenance. A nation of fierce countenance. This nation, they are fierce. Meaning they have no mercy. No pity. Go ahead. Which shall not regard the person of the old. They didn't care about our grandmothers and our grandfathers. Read. No show favor to the young. They didn't care about our sons and our daughters. They were raping them and hanging them. And chopping them in half to feed them to the dogs. That's what they were doing. And dashing our little ones against the stones. Read. And ye shall eat the fruit of thy cattle. In a ye shall what? And ye shall eat the fruit of thy cattle. I thought Jan van Riebeck was looking for spices. Jan van Riebeck will do what? And ye shall eat the fruit of thy cattle. He will eat the fruit of our cattle. And that's what he did. He ate the fruit of our cattle. You understand? They took our land because that's where our cattle and our, 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 our goats and all that they fed on our livestock. The fruit of our cattle. Go ahead. And the fruit of thy land. And the fruit of our land. No, he was looking for spices. He will do what? And the fruit of thy land. They took the fruit of our land. The gold, the platinum, the diamonds. You understand? The uranium, the oil. They took the fruit of our land. They didn't come here for spices. Read. Until thou be destroyed. Until we are destroyed. Until we are poor and impoverished. Just like they were. Read. Which also shall not leave thee either corn. They didn't leave either corn because they took our land. Like, you know, that's where we planted our corn. Though they took the land wherewith we planted corn. Read. Wine. Wine. They took our wine too. Go ahead. Because oil. we planted olive trees. Read. Or oil. Or oil. Come on. Because there's oil in Nigeria. They want that. There's oil in where? In Haiti. That's why Haiti now is under what? Duress. Because there's oil down there. Why do you think Haiti is so poor? Because there's minerals down there. Oil. Apparently that oil down there is more than the one in Nigeria. It's a lot of it. That's why the white men don't want to end out down there. They over there. Read. Or the increase of thy kind. Or the increase of our cattle. They took all that. Read. Or flocks of thy sheep. Or the flocks of our sheep. Remember, we read it even in, when we were in high school. In primary, they were saying that we, our forefathers, they had hundreds of thousands of sheep, of cattle, of goat, of cows. You understand? They say they gave our forefathers a mirror. And he gave, he gave up a, a thousand cows. They gave our forefathers a comb to comb his head. And he gave up a hundred thousand sheep. That's what they told us in, in the history. That's not what happened. That's garbage. Our forefathers understood what wealth meant. Wealth was in flocks, was in sheep. You understand? Was in livestock and minerals and land. And the fruits of the land. That's the world. We understood that already. You telling me what we didn't have mirrors? We had mirrors. How? Read. Until ye have destroyed it. Until they've destroyed us. And that's what we're reading in the Holy Bible. Understand that thing. Now watch this. Now go back to the book now. The second part now in the book. Now read that for me. What page you at? Page 149. Read. Bantu stands. Bantu stands. Now I'm going to show you that they came for land. Remember it says they made war with us. I'm showing the history that happened here in South Africa. What happened and we're reading it in the Bible. Read that part again. What did you say? Page 148. Page 148. What's the title name? Bantu stands. Bantu stands. Bantu stands. Watch this. Come on. A plot against Africans. A plot against the Israelites. Because the Bantus, we are the Israelites. They call us Bantus. They changed our names and renamed us and enslaved us. Because why? They didn't want us to remember who we are. But we remember who we are now. You understand? They call us Bantus. And they set up Bantu stands. And who was in the forefront of this? Uh, Jan, Fen Jan, Jan Hendrik Fervut. That was him, ne? Uh -huh. With D.F. Malan. Dear Francois Malan, read that. In 1835, in the 1800s, read. Jan van Riebeck's descendants, the Boer trekkers. Stop right there. So Jan van Riebeck's descendants is the Boers. The ones that you see in where? Stellenbosch. 
the ones that you see were in Orania, the ones that you see were in Pretoria, the ones that you see were in um, in Centurion. That's them. Okay, go ahead. The Buddha trekkers. The Buddha trekkers. They are the descendants of Jan van Riebeek. Read. Left the Cape Colony. They left the Cape Colony. Come on. To start a process of national dispossession. Stop right there. To do what now? To start a process of national dispossession. To start a process of national dispossession of land. To take to take away our land by violence. Go back to Michael two verse two. I'm going to show you what Jan van Riebeek's descendants did. The Boers, the Boer trekkers. This is what they did. You understand? Watch this. Read. The book of Micah, chapter 2, verse 2. Go ahead. And they covered fields. They did what? And they covered fields. They, you see that? They started a process of national dispossession of land. They covered fields, meaning lands. Read. And take them by violence. How did the Boers take our land? And take them by violence. They took our land by violence. That's what Micah is saying. That's what Mutsuku Pego is recording in the Holy Bible. Read. And houses. And they took our houses. Go ahead. And take them away. They took our houses away. And they gave them to, they gave our houses to themselves. Read. So they oppressed a man and his house. They oppressed us, meaning they, they were kicking us out of our houses, Pell. That's what they were doing. They were kicking us out of our houses. Burning our houses down. Read. Even a man and his heritage. Because our heritage is what? Our land. Our resources. The fruits of the land. The livestock. The minerals underground. That's our heritage. You understand? Go back to the book. Because remember, in the 1800s, the Boers, they started a process of national dispossession of land, right? To take our land from us by violence. To kill our fathers and mothers that own land. And later on, in 1913, they what they, they set up a what they, they what the Native Land Act of 1913. But they had to steal it first by violence and set up laws on top of it. Read. In 1835. In 1835, go ahead. Jan van Riebeck's descendants, the Bure Trekkers, mm. left the Cape Colony. Read. To start a process of national dispossession. Read. Of all the indigenous people of Azania. You see that? Of all the indigenous people of Azania, meaning what? Bantus, Israelites. Read. Petri Thief. Petri Thief, that demon. Read. The Bure leader. The leaders of the the leader of the Boers. Petri Thief. Come on. Later killed by King Dingan. All praises to the Most High for that thing. Go ahead. Spoke of the determination of his people. The determination of his people to take land from us by violence. Read. To preserve proper relations between master and servant. You see that? To preserve what? To preserve. Proper relations. Proper relationships between what? Between master and Meaning they're, they're the masters. Go ahead. And servants. And slaves, meaning us. The natives. Bantus. Israelites. Read. Today, the racist policy of Bantu stands. You see that Bantu stands was a racist policy. Bantu stands was a racist, was the apartheid racist policy. Go ahead. Today, the racist, the racist policy... Of the Bantu stands. Stop right there. Give me Daniel 8.25. The racist policy of the Bantu stands. Because Bantu stands is a racist policy. You know what the Bantu stands are called today? Dekasi. Dekasi. Lokshin. In the Kazis. In the Lokshins. That's the Bantu stands today. Read that. The book of Daniel chapter 8 verse 25. Read and through his policy, through his what? And through his policy, through his racist policy of Bantu stands, come on. Also, he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. Because he prospered in his hand with the Bantu stands. Read. And he shall magnify himself in his heart. He's going to magnify himself in his heart, meaning, but they are superior than us. That's why they say, Hien, what? What? Um, what's the word? Um... What's the word in Africans meaning no, 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 no blackies? Come on, brothers. You what? Yeah, Hien Swart Mense. That's what they call us. They say no, no, no blackies over here. Whites only, blacks only. Hien Swart Mense. Read that. And by peace. And by peace. By what? And by peace. Because they said they were civilizing us. They said they were civilizing us. 
You understand? Go ahead. Shall destroy men. They destroyed us. They destroyed us. That's why now we are destroyed. But we're waking up. In the ghettos, they said nothing good came out of Galilee. Something good is coming out of Galilee this day. Now go back to the book. The racist policy, come on. Today, the racist policy. The, the, the what? The racist policy. So the Bantu stance is a racist policy. Go ahead. Of the Bantu stance. Of the Bantu stance, read. Involves not only white supremacy. You see that Bantu stance is white supremacy. That's what I want you to understand. Bantu stance is white supremacy. Understand that. Read. Political oppression. Bantu stance was political oppression. Why? Because Deuteronomy 28 verse 32. Watch this. Bantu stands racist policy. Bantu stands white supremacy. Bantu stands political exploitation and oppression. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 42. 32. Watch this. Excuse me, sir. Verse 32. Uh -huh. Thy sons and thy daughters. Thy sons and daughters, read. Shall be given unto another people. We're going to be given unto another people, our sons and our daughters. Read. And thine eyes shall look and fade with longing for them. All the day long. We're going to look and fail with longing for our sons and daughters because why? Read. And there shall be no might in thine hand. We're not going to have might in our hand. We didn't have political might. We didn't have economic might. We didn't have military might to get our sons and our daughters back. Read. The fruit of thy land. Now jump down to verse 41 now. Verse 41. Go ahead. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters. We're going to beget sons and daughters. Read. But thou shalt not enjoy them. We are not, not going to enjoy out seeing our sons and daughters grow up. Why? For they shall go into captivity. They shall go into slavery. They are going to suffer political oppression, white supremacy, and Bantu stands. That racist policy by who? Petri Thief. Go back to the book. Today, the racist policy of, Ban of the Bantu stands. The racist policy of the Bantu stands. Go ahead. Involves not only white supremacy. Oh, please. Come on. Political oppression. Ray. And economic exploitation. And economic exploitation. Brothers and sisters, we're back online. Everything is good. Some technical issues. Low cheering. But the mission is a go. Keep reading. And economic exploitation. And economic exploitation. Because oh. why? They wanted to exploit us economically. That's why they pushed us into the ghettos. And in the ghettos, they build what? They build supermarkets. They destroy these puzzle shops. You understand? They build, they build their supermarkets. Now they are building malls in the gases to shut down the supermarkets now and puzzle shops. Read. Of the indigenous African people. Of Bantus, so-called. Meaning what? Israelites. So that in Kantalax, this Operation to Dula that he pushed, that demonic movement called Operation to Dula, their job was to do what? Was to disrupt the township economy. That's what the, that was their job for the for the what? For the benefit of the white man. Because the white man started to realize that his his bottom line is being affected by the by the gas economy. Because guess what? The street vendors they are making a killing. You understand? The spaza shops are making a killing. People don't no longer even the if the fruits on the streets they are actually fresher than the ones at pick and pay. They are actually fresher than the ones at ShopRite. They are fresher than the ones at Spa, for the most part. You understand? So he was realizing that he's losing money. So he set up a, a what? The fall guy. Who was the name of the fall guy? Ngankalax. Because you can see Operation to Dula, the white man is reading all over it. Because the white man, while the people are focusing on Operation to Dula, causing problems in the community, the white man is building, building malls in our community. He's, he is what? He's upgrading his supermarkets. Meaning what? His shop rights. He's building those shop rights now inside malls. He's building those pick and pays now inside malls. While we're busy focusing on the operation to do the noise, guess what? He's building malls. That's what he's doing. Uh-huh. Read. But the land question is central. Because the land is quite, the land is central. Because everything you need, you find it on the land. Get that into 2020 verse 33 real quick. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 verse 33. I'm showing you how they made war with the saints and to overcome them. Read. The fruit of thy land. The fruit of our land. Because it says, the land question is central. 
Jan van Riebeck was not here for spices. He was here for land, minerals, livestock, and fruits upon the land. Go ahead and slaves too. Read. The fruit of thy land. The fruit of our land. And all thy labor. Uh -huh. Shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. The nation that we know not that ate up the fruit of our lands. The fruit of our lands is the gold, the platinum, the diamonds. You understand? The precious minerals upon this earth. That's the fruit of our lands. Read. And thou shalt be only oppressed. The nations are going to oppress us. Jan van Riebeck and his descendants, they will oppress us in this country. Read. And crushed always. And they are crushing us. When we rise up, our black leaders that rose up, what did they do to them? They crushed them. Who is the Biko? You understand? Boo um, Chris Hani. Okay? Boo Oliver Tambo. They crushed them. You understand? Who's the other one? Robert Sobukwe. They crushed them. You understand? And on the continent, you had what? Kwame Nkrumah of Ghana. You had um, Patrice Lumumba of, of the Congo. Okay? You had Soma Sankara of Burkina Faso. So on and so forth. Read. Go back to the book. But the land question is central. Uh -huh. The total population of South Africa is 30 million people. 30 million people. Now it's more. Because the 30 million people is the number that was given during the time he wrote the book. Now we are more than 30 million people. Go ahead. Of these 4 million are white settlers. Stop right there. 4 million out of 30 million people is the invaders of the land. White people. Iso Irom Idumia. The sons of the devil. 4 million. Read. 3% of the population are Indians. 3% 3 3 is Indians. Is Indians. Go ahead. While the vast majority of the population are indigenous African. Israelites. Bantus. Go ahead. The settlers have allocated to themselves. Now stop right there. The settlers, this is 4 million out of 30 million. 4 million out of 30 million. What do they do? Have allocated to themselves 87% uh -huh. of the total land area. You see that? 87% of the total land area. Hold that. Go back to Abaku chapter 1 verse 6. They took 87% of the total land area. Because the Bible, the Abaku prophesied about that thing. Read. The book of Abaku chapter 1 verse 6. Read. For lo, I raise up the Chaldean, mm. that bitter and hasty nation. The bitter and hasty nation, read. Which shall march through the breath of the land. That's the breath of the land. 87% of the total land area is owned by 4 million people. Out of a population of now 50 million, eh? Close to 50 million in South Africa. But 4, 4 million owns 87% of the total land area. Read. To possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. Now they possess the dwelling. They own the dwelling places that don't belong to them. That's what we're reading here. It's lining up with the history. Go back to the book now. Go ahead. Come on. The settlers have allocated to themselves but, but how did they allocate to themselves because that's the question ask yourself how did these white people these Bures, these dutchmen these these portuguese these british how did they allocate 87 percent of the land to themselves did they ask for it did they vote did they negotiate no micah 2 verse 2 again The book of Micah, chapter 2, verse 2. Watch this, read. And they covered fields. They covered our fields, read. And take them by violence. They took them by what? And take them by violence. By violence. By violence. That's how they allocated to themselves 87% of the total land area in South Africa. Because they took it by violence. That's how they got access to the land. By thy sword shall thou live. You understand? That's what we read in Genesis 27. Go back to the book now. Come on. Don't forget, they made war with the saints and overcome them. Read. The settlers have allocated to themselves 87% of the total land area. 87%. Come on. While 25 million Africans. While 25 million Israelites. Read. Are expected to occupy the homelands or Bantustans. Or Bantustans, which is how many percentage? The remaining 
13% of land. Whoa, whoa. So 25%, no, no, no. So 25 million people, they are all allocated 13% of the land. How the hell are we supposed to live like that? Where 25 million people, they only supposed to allocate, they are, they've allocated to us 13% of the total land area. Where before they came, we had 100% access to our land. But when they came, Jan van Riebeek's descendants, these white people, the Buddhists, the Dutchmen, the British, you understand? They took 87% of the land by violence. Read that part again. While 25 million Africans mm -hmm. are expected to occupy the homelands of Bantu states. So 25 million, we are expected to occupy the homelands, which is what? Of Bantu stands. Of Bantu stands or the Kasis, Lokshin, the Geros, right? The remaining 13% of land. The remaining 13% of the land. Now think about it. We are no longer 25 million anymore. We are more than that. We outnumber them. So that means close to 30 to 40 million people, mm -hmm. they are still expected to occupy 13% of the land. Give me Isaiah 5 verse 8. Read that verse again. We read it earlier, but I want to read it again. You understand? So, Julius Malema, when he talks about expropriation of land without compensation, I understand what he's saying. What he doesn't understand is that we're not going to get access to that, uh, that land until the Lord returns. That's the only difference. But he is speaking truth what he's saying. Read. Okay, Isaiah 5 and 8. Come on. The book of Isaiah, chapter 5, verse 8. Read. Go unto them mm -hmm. that join house to house. They join house to house. Read. That they feel to feel. They feel to feel. So they join, they make sure that we join house to house. Meaning we live like rats. There's no space. The RDP houses that was given after 1994. Listen, these RDP houses, ne, that was given in 1994, after 1994. Listen, the RDP houses, the RDP house occupies the whole yard. You can't plant anything. You've seen that, right? The RDP houses, it occupies the whole yard and there's nothing left. And so our people that actually want to expand the RDP houses, they have to do upstairs. They have to push the house next to the, to, to the fence. And when you go in, I mean, I see it in the car. You see it everywhere, right? There's no space. That's what we're reading here. They, they forced us to join house to house. Read. Go unto them that join house to house. Mm -hmm. That they fill to fill. They lay the 13% of the land they allocated to us fill to fill. We are joined one to another, don't we? Till there be no place. Till there be no place, meaning there's no there's not even a room for you to plant a, a tomato. You can't do that. Read. That they may be placed alone in the midst of the earth. Because they wanted 87% of the land allocated to themselves. And they took it by violence. That they may be placed alone in the midst of the earth. Read. Go back to the book. Come on. 25 million Africans are expected to occupy the homeland Ray? of Bantu State. Come on. The remaining 13% of the land. The remaining 13% of the land is occupied by more than 30 million people. 30 million Israelites. Read. As one writer has observed, mm. the white farmers in South Africa. The white people in South Africa, Iso Irom Idumia, the sons of the devil, read. Occupy. 92.2 million hectares. Whoa, whoa, whoa. They occupy what? 92.2 million hectares. 92.2 million hectares. And they don't have papers for it. They never bought it. They don't, they, list, they never spend a cent to own this 92, 92.2 million hectares. 87%. Read. Which amounts to 75% of the total land surface of the country. 87%. Read. Of these white owned farms, mm. 106,001 live off the exploitation of the cheap black labor. You see that? That's it right there. Jan van Riebeck wasn't looking for spices, he was looking for slaves. He was looking for the resources that the slaves owned. He was looking for the livestock that our forefathers owned. He was looking for the mineral resources that we owned. You understand? Read. 68.5% of these farms mm. are bigger than 80 hectares. You Listen, is a 65% of the farms are bigger than 80 hectares. 
rate. And 23.9% are over 860 hectares. Yo, go ahead. The Bantu stand. The Bantu stand, which is the cases now. Ray. Or reserves. Or reserves. Reserved for who? Black people. Israelites. Ray. Of the Transkai created by the by the South African fascist fascists. 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 Fascists, read. In accordance with their policy of separate development. Separate development. What does that mean, Micah 2 verse 4? Of separate development. What is that talking about? Separate development. I'm going to show you that. The book of Micah chapter 2 verse 4. Read. In that day shall one take up a parable against you. Because the white men took up a parable against us. They came together. The 13 European colonies, the 13 European nations, they came together under the, under the League of Nations, the scramble for Africa, under Otto von Bismarck, to do what? And lament with a doleful lamentation. Read. And say, mm. we be utterly spoiled. Because they spoiled us utterly. Read. And he has changed the portion of my people. Because they took our land. Read. How have he removed it from me? Read. Turning away. When me. he went back to his own land, this white man. Because he is occupying here. You understand? Not only that. But he's going back to where he comes from with the riches he steals from here. And he leaves his own sons and daughters here to look after the riches, the land, the resources that they stole from our forefathers and foremothers. Read. Turning away, he has divided our field. They did what now? Turning away, he has divided our field. They created Bantu stands because they wanted to make sure that when they go back to their own land, we are divided. We don't come together and say, listen, we're going to overthrow them. They wanted to make sure that before they leave, and they leave their sons and daughters here because they cannot leave their sons and daughters here while we're still together. The reason why they leave their sons and daughters here and they go to where they come from is because they know we are divided. That's why it's easy for them to, for them to, uh, to conquer us, to control us, to fight us, uh, to make us fight against each other. That's what you see. Operation Tudula is of the devil. It's of Satan. It's of the white man. He set that thing up to what? To have us focus on this while he's doing this over here. You understand? He's the master manipulator. The white man is the worst, is the master manipulator. That's what they do. Read. The book of Micah, chapter 2, verse 4. Uh, turning away. Turning away, mm -hmm. he has divided our field. He did what now? He has divided our field. Watch this. Give me Daniel chapter 11. Read verse 27. Turning away. He had what? Start at verse 23. Daniel 11 verse 23. I want to touch on that. Because what we're reading here is also goes, goes back to what? Goes back to what? The scramble for Africa. Okay? In, the, in 1884. Read that. The book of Daniel. Chapter 11 verse 23. Watch this. And after the, after the league made with him. He after the league this white man made with him. You understand? The league goes into the league of nations. You understand? The League of Nations, the Berlin Conference. Go ahead. He shall work deceitfully. They, they work deceitfully. What is the deceit? I'm going to deal with the deceit later. Read. For he shall come up and shall become strong with the small people. Because, listen, the, listen they, they are a very small population. So how were they able to conquer hundreds of millions of us all over the world? Is because they were working with Satan. And because we're no longer keeping God's laws, now we are weak as a nation and they knew it. Read. He shall enter peaceably. He shall what? He shall enter peaceably. The missionaries, they came with white Jesus. That's how they entered peaceably. Read. Even upon the fattest places of the province. You see that? And even upon the fattest places of the provinces, he shall walk through the breadth of the land and possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. That's what we're reading here. Go ahead. And he shall do that which, that which his father's have not done. He is going to do more than what Jan van Riebeck did. His descendants, they did more than Jan van Riebeck did. You understand? The, 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 the Spaniards, the Spaniards, because the descendants of the Spaniards, the, 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 the descendants of the Spaniards is Amalek. That's them. Jewish people in our land today, you understand? Israelis, that's their, that's their forefathers, the Spaniards. Read? Because they did more. They took the land, they took the resources, they even changed our identity. So they did more than what their forefathers did. Read. 
You see that because the Bures over here in South Africa, they did more than what Jan van Riebeck did. They did more than what Fervut did. They did more than what Petri Tip did. They did more than what uh, D.F. Malan did. They did more than that. Read? That's why they built banks. Standard Bank. You understand? That's an apartheid bank. FNB, another apartheid bank. You understand? ABSA, another But These are all apartheid banks. Where did they get the money from? They robbed us. It's not because they, they were... Mm -mm, they robbed us. Read. He shall scatter among them the prey. Yeah. Uh -huh. And spoil. What verse you in? Verse 24, sir. Yeah, read. The book of Daniel, chapter 11, verse 24. Go ahead. He shall enter peaceably, even upon the fattest places of the province. Read. And he shall do that which his fathers have not done. Go ahead. No, his father's fathers. Read. He shall scatter among them the prey. He's, because we, he scatter us. They scatter us. They divide us. That's why they created Bantu stands. Read. And spoil. And they spoil us of our resources, our land, and our minerals upon the land, and our livestock. Read. And riches. And our riches that we had. Read. Yea, and ye shall forecast these devices. What verse? Wait, what verse? Okay, I keep reading. Ye shall what? Yea, and ye shall forecast these devices against the stronghold, mm -hmm. even for a time. You see that even for a time, because they wanted to make sure that when they go back, their sons and daughters remain here. Because they, but, but they made sure that we are divided as a race. That's what they did. Jump down to verse 27. Watch this. Verse 27. Go ahead. And both these kings, mm -hmm. and both these kings' hearts shall be to do mischief. Shall be to do mischief, to divide us, that the name of Israel be no more in remembrance. Go ahead. And they shall speak lies at one table. You see that? That's the Berlin Conference. They shall speak lies at one table. The Berlin Conference, not only the Berlin Conference, but what? Goes into what? The Christian Church. Yeah, because they are pushing lies in the Christian Church. They shall speak lies at one table. You understand? The League of Nations, the United Nations, that's them. The EU, that's them. You understand? And here's another lie that they speak at one table. Brexit. Brexit, that's it, ne? Yes, sir. Brexit, yeah. That's what they call it again. Yes, sir. Brexit. That's the lies they speak at one table. You understand? Burama Poso convincing themselves that at least we are part of Russia. We are part of Britain. The same people that oppressed you from the jump. You are in bed with them. They made league with them. Read. But it shall not prosper. They're not going to prosper because the Lord is going to destroy them. Read. For yet the end shall be at the time appointed. Go ahead. Then... Shall he return unto his own land with great riches? You see that? That's what I was saying. He will return back to his own land with great riches that they steal from here. That's why America is the greatest city on earth. Because they get the riches from the continent of Africa. They rob us. They steal from us. Read. And his heart shall be against the holy covenant. His heart shall be against this Bible. His mind, they are against this. That's why after they rob, they rob us, they take our land. Then they change their mind. They give us white Jesus. They say, come together. Let's pray. Everyone. Read. And ye shall do exploit. He shall do what? And ye shall do exploit. Economic exploitation that Motoko Peku was mentioning about. Read. And return to his own land. And return to America, Europe, Britain, Russia, Germany, Portugal, Spain, Italy, Belgium, Netherlands. You see that? Greece. Rome. That's what they do. Now watch this. Go back to the book now. Go back to the book. This separate development, I think that's where we were. Yes, sir. Read that. The, ban the Bantu stands or reserves of the Transcri Transcai created by South African physicists in accordance with their policy of separate development. Because that, 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 that this, this road, re, a Bantu stand didn't only happen to Transkai and Transkai. It happened on the whole of South Africa. Bantu stands were all over there. They happened all over South Africa. They, but they were doing it in phases. Because they didn't do it all at once. They were conquering us in phases, in sections. Okay, come on. Half of 41% of the African population. Read. Really? And comprise only 13.5 million hectares. You see that? Go ahead. Okay, there's another part on the other side there. 
Yeah, right there. Read that. In the opinion of the majority of the day, mm. the Bantu. The majority, what it says, in the opinion of the majority of the day, meaning black people that was rising up. That's what we're reading here. That's what he's saying here. Read. The Bantu, African. The Bantu meaning Israelites. Read. Gains his freedom. Mm. Gains his freedoms will mark the end of white civilization. You see that? He says, when we get our freedom, will mark the end of what? Will mark the end of white civilization. That's it right there. Wisdom of Solomon 18 verse 7. Read that thing for me. You see, our forefathers were in the spirit. You understand? We co-signing it with the Bible now. All oh, praise to the Mosai. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon 18 verse 7. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 18, verse 7. Read. So of thy people. Of our people, read. Was accepted. We must accept, like just like our forefathers. You know, it's crazy. Our forefathers understood them. And they accepted them. It's only our brothers and sisters in the Christian church that have been bewitched by white Jesus. Read. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 18, verse 7. Read. So of thy people. So of thy people, come on. Was accepted. Uh -huh. Both the salvation of the righteous. The righteous must be delivered. Read. And destruction of the enemy. The end of white civilization as we know it. And destruction of our enemies. That's how we're gonna get. De de that's how we're gonna get delivered. That's how the black man is gonna get his freedom back. If the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. And when that happens. That it will be the end of white civilization as we know it. Go back to the book now. Read. In the opinion uh -huh. of the majority, the day of the majority, the day the Bantu African gains his freedom. The day the Israelites gains their gain their freedom back, read. Will mark the end of white civilization. Will will mark the end of white civilization. Where did we read this? Second Ezra 6, verse 9. You see, our forefathers was in the spirit, man. They just didn't have the holy book with them to see inside of to what's written. Read it. Don't forget, power was given unto him to make war with the saints. Don't forget the point. Read it. Second book of Ezra, chapter 6, verse 9. Read. For Esau is the end of the world. There's, there it is right there. Esau is the end of the world. Go ahead. And Jacob. And who? And Jacob. And Jacob, the 12 tribes of Israel. The so-called Bantus is the beginning of it that follows. You see that thing? Is the beginning of the empire of Esau. That when Esau's empire fall, falls, the Bantu, quote-unquote, Israelites will get their freedom. That's what we just read in the book. Go back to the book. In the opinion of the majority, mm. the day the Bantu gains his freedoms Ray. will mark the end of white civilization. You see that thing? And Esau shall be the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Give me that in Obadiah verse 21. Our forefather Obadiah says the same thing here. Watch this. Read. Because some of these precepts now, they are not in, the, in my notes. I need to come back now. Come on, read them. Read. Verse 9, sir. Yes, Obadiah verse 21. The book of Abadiah, verse 21. Watch this. And saviors. And what? And saviors. The saviors. How many of them, brothers? 144,000 saviors. Read. Shall come up on Mount Zion. Shall come up upon Mount Zion. Read. No, no, no. Read that again. Read that again. Read it right. Let me not butcher it. The book of Abadiah, chapter verse 21. Read. And saviors shall come up on Mount Zion. Read. To judge the Mount of Esau. To judge the kingdom of the white man. Read. And the kingdom. And the what? And the kingdom. And the kingdom that shall be established upon this earth to rule forever and ever. Come on. Shall be the Lord. Shall be the Lord. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. That's what we just read. Go back to the book now. In the opinion of the of the majority. The day the Bantu gains its freedom mm. will mark the end of white civilization on the African continent. Not just on the African continent, all over the world. Read. The color bar and, and all that it implies mm. must be upheld at all costs. All praise to the Most High God. Our forefathers were in the spirit. You understand? Now, give me the book of Second Ezra. Okay, give me the, the read the other page now. 
Is it 101? Yes, sir. Let's read that. Now, I'm going into 1960. The Sharpville Massacre. Okay? Read that. To, mo to make war with the saints and to overcome them. Read. Page 101. We're still reading in the book now. The apartheid book. Go ahead. Paul, Paul. The manners of apartheid South Africa. You see, if Porco was a movement, Porco. Rico Porco. <laughs> Read that. Come on. Come on, come on. That is to say, in 1960. In 19 what? In 1960. Read the read read that paragraph again. Read it right. Come on. That is to say, in 1960. No, no, start where you say Porco. That part right there. That's the heading, sir. Read it. Paul, go. Uh -huh. Paul, go. <laughs> oh, praise to the most high man. Read that. Read the highlighted part. That is Paul, go. Oh, Paul, Paul go. Oh, Paul, go. Read that. Come on. That is to say, uh -huh. in 1960. In 1960, go ahead. We went to the police stations. The, our forefathers went to the police station in 1960. Go ahead. We left our passes. They they left the, the don't pass. Because Mdala still has his don't pass. You understand? He, still, he showed it to me. The big book like this, we had to carry around. So that they, they say you have permission to walk. In your own land, you must be given permission. You cannot make this up. Read. We left our passes with our women at home. Uh -huh. The settler police. The settler police means the apartheid police. Read. Answer to our action was bullets. You see that? You see how they responded to our forefathers with bullets. And they came unarmed. But they responded with bullets. You know why they, were, they responded like that? Because this was the time where Israel is waking up. The 60s. The 60s palace was a very hot time for the white man. That's why they were making sure with any type of black consciousness movement that is rising up, shut it down, shut it down. Look what happened to Enoch Mkijima and them. So later on, black consciousness movement and all that, they were shutting them down because they knew it's time for Israel to wake up. Understand that? They knew it. Read. They killed us. They what? They killed us. They put our forefathers and foremothers to death. Read. We have a question to put to you, Fervut. Fervut, because Fervut was in the forefront during this time. Go ahead. And Foster. Mm. We, John Foster. Read. We were shot at Sharpville and we, Langa. They were, our forefathers were shot at Sharpville and Langa. Go ahead. What happened to the blood of those African people? What happened to the blood of the Israelites? What happened to them? Revelation 17 verse 6. Let me show you what happened to the blood of the Israelites. Because they say they keep saying African people. Why? Because he didn't know he was an Israelite. That's why he's writing African there. So just keep that in mind. Read. The book of Revelation, chapter 17, verse 6. Read. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints. You see that thing right there? The woman was drunken with the blood of the saints. Remember, the headquarters of the woman is America. But guess what? All these the race, the, 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 the European race, they are all over the earth, but their headquarters is where? The Americas. Read. And with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. The, 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 the martyrs of Jesus, meaning our forefathers that died to defend this book. Read. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Mm -hmm. Because why? Because he, it was the first time he saw this great dragon, which was decorated with what? Purple and gold and all that. Now watch this. Go back to where he was at. The book, sir. Yeah, go back to the book. What happened to the blood of those African people? Read. They pointed out that the 1910 Union of South Africa... Mm, the, the 1910 Union of South Africa, because it was a republic. The Union of South Africa means... It means what? These European nations working together. That's what it means, the Union of South Africa. The Union of South Africa is talking about the Buddhists, the Dutch, the British working together to destroy and oppress us in South Africa. That's what it's talking about, the Union of South Africa of 1910. Three years later, they set up the, the Native Land Act. Read. 
had been a union of oppression and suppression. You see that they knew what it was. It was a, it was a union of oppression and suppression. And that's what the EU and America is about. They are a union of oppression and suppression. Read. Really. And the fact that South Africa was then becoming a republic. It was becoming a what? Was, was then becoming a republic. Remember, is, is, this beast took the attributes of what? The Persians. Republicanism and Democrat. Read. Made no difference. It made no difference because it didn't change anything. We're still oppressed. You understand? That's why the DA, what is it called? The Democratic Alliance. Ne? They're against, remember the ANC is under what? A republic. The Republic of South Africa, the DA, what are they forming? What was the National Party about? The National Party was not a republic. It was a democratic, it was a democratic, they were pushing democratic system. While the Union of South Africa, they were put, pushing what? Republicanism. So don't get it twisted. So when you see the DA, the DA is a rhythm of the National Party of uh, Fervut. Don't be, don't be fooled. Understand that. Okay. Um, is that it on that? No, sir. Keep reading. Africans had been as oppressed. Israelites have been as what? Had been as oppressed under the British monarchy. Under the what? Under the British monarchy. We're still oppressed under the British monarchy unto this day because they're still paying colonial tax. Really? And the governor general. And the governor general. So Ramaphosa and them, remember when Ramaphosa came into power, there was a, what was his, what was his name? The British prime minister. It was a woman. What's her name, Gonje? I forgot her name. But the British Prime Minister, she came over here. She met with Sir Ramaphosa to maintain that colonial stronghold that they have over us. So Ramaphosa, they are sellouts. Those are not the leaders of the people. Those are those wicked Israelites that join themselves to the heathens to oppress their own people because they hate their own people for the dollar, for the almighty dollar. Understand that? Now, um... Give me 2nd Ezra chapter 15, verse 17. I'm going to deal with the 1960, the past laws and all that. Watch this. I need to speed up now. I'm almost done. I still have a lot to cover. Read. 2nd book of Ezra chapter 15, verse 19. Verse 17. Verse 17. Go ahead. A man shall desire to go into a city. During the apartheid in 1960, our forefathers desired to go to other neighborhoods, but they could not. Why? And shall not be able. They will not be able because why? You needed to carry a pass. You needed to carry that dumb pass. You understand? To show them that you got a letter from Master Van Veiki that you are allowed to go to Pretoria. And when you are going to go back. Read. For because of their pride. Because of the pride of the white man. Read. The cities shall be troubled. The cities were troubles. Who saw fire town? Who Alexander? Who saw You understand? These cities were troubled. And it's not just them. It's even in the rural areas. Because I remember my mother telling me that she doesn't know how many times she survived the gun. Being chased by white men on the plantation on a horse. And the name of that white man, they used to call him Molongwano because he didn't have a mouth. You understand? You know why people don't have mouths? They don't have lips. We've got lips. That's why they put red lips on their lips because to make it look bigger. That's why they do uh, plastic surgery and liposuction and whatnot to make their lips to be bigger. And they put red lipstick on it because our, our lips, they are bigger. They are red by nature. So, because we're the daughters of Zion. What the hell is this? So, that's why they called him Molongwana because they don't have lips. You understand? She was telling me that she used to run in the middle of the night in the cotton fields, in the maize plantation, running away from a what? From a burro on a horse, shooting them. When you hear the story, I was still a child, but she told me those stories. She used to tell us the story. Now they're coming back, I understand now. Now it makes more sense. Read. For because of their pride. Because of their pride. Read. The cities shall be troubled. The cities were troubled. Go ahead. Even in the rurals. Read. Their houses shall be destroyed. Our houses were destroyed by them, read. And men shall be afraid. Uh-huh. Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Okay, now, drop that. Now, give me Jeremiah 22, verse 13. 
The last one that I want to talk about is the American 2012, the American massacre at the command of Cyril Ramaphosa. Cyril Ramaphosa gave the command to the police to go and gun down our forefathers that wanted wages because they work in mines and they were paid nothing. Jeremiah 22, verse 18. Watch this. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 22, verse 18. Watch this. Read. Woe unto him. Destruction unto the white man. Read. Thou buildest his house by unrighteousness. Because they build their empires on top of sin. By exploitation of our forefathers and foremothers. They are still doing it today. Read. And his chambers by wrong. And his chambers, they are, they are what? They are wrong. They build them by wrongful dealings. Read. That uses his neighbor's services. They use our services, our labors, read. Without wages. Without what? Without wages. Without what? Without wages. Without wages. Because our forefathers during Mar in Marikana, they wanted money. They wanted to be well compensated for going down there in the mines. And they didn't pay them nothing. They couldn't even take their children to school. You understand? They couldn't even build their, themselves houses. They are still living in shacks. Not only that, there is no electricity where they are. There is no sanitation where they are, but they work in mines. You see gold, you see diamonds every day, but they don't pay them nothing. This is crazy, but this is the reality that, you see, how soon we forget. Our people forgot and they voted that demon into office. But guess what? Their vote don't mean nothing. It's the elect electoral college that decides, the IEC, ne? the Independent Electoral Commission ne? or Election Commission. Read that. And given him not for his work. And given him no wages for his work. That's why our forefathers revolted. James chapter 5 verse 4. Watch this. The book of James chapter 5 verse 4. Read. Behold, mm -hmm. the hire of the laborers. The hire of the laborers, read. Who have ripped down your fields. Who have ripped down your fields. And guess what? It's our field that we've ripped down. These diamond, these mines, they are ours. But Anglo American, every Anglo American was shutting down every black, every black business that was trying to go into mining. They were shutting them down. Not only they were not doing it, they were not only doing it here in South Africa. They went to Zimbabwe, they went to Mozambique, they went to the Congo, they went to Gabon, they, they went to Rwanda, they went to Haiti. They are always they're over there in Haiti. That's Anglo American over there. Okay, read. Anglo-American, it's Anglo, which is who? It's the, it's the British and the Americans. You see that? Mm -hmm. EU and the beast. These shall have one mind. Read. Which is of you, which is of you kept back by fraud. They kept back the wages that they were supposed to pay our, our fathers and mothers in Marikana. They kept it back by fraud. They defrauded them of their wages. Read. Cry and the cries of them which have read uh -huh. are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. Of Sabaoth. Meaning the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts. That's what he's talking about. Give me that in Sirach 18, verse 3. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 13, verse 3. Watch this. Read. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 13, verse 3. You know what? Hold that. Give me 2nd verse 1646, real quick. Second as a sixteen verse forty six. Come on. Second book of Ezra, chapter sixteen, verse forty six. Read. For strangers shall reap their fruit. For strangers shall reap their what? For strangers shall reap their fruit. Strangers shall reap our fruits. Go ahead. And spoil their goods. And spoil our goods. Read. Overthrow their houses. You see that strangers shall reap our what? Read that verse again, verse 46. For strangers shall reap their fruit. Our the strangers they reap down our fruits. That's the man, the fruits of our land, our minerals, even our avocados and our mangoes. Read. And spoil their goods. They spoiled our goods because we had possessions. They spoiled that too. They stole that too. Read. Overthrow their houses. They overthrew our houses, Sophia Town as an example. Read. And take their children captive. They, they enslaved our sons and our daughters to work in those fields. Read on. For in captivity. Because in slavery. Read. And famine. And poverty. Come on. Shall they get children. That's what we're getting children now. We're getting our children in slavery and in poverty. Read. 
And they that occupied their merchandise. They occupied our merchandise, which is the merchandise of gold and silver and diamond and platinums and whatnot. Read. With robbery. With what? With robbery. Because they took it by violence. Go ahead. The more they deck their cities. The more they decorate their cities. Come on. Their houses. Their houses. Their possessions. Oh, go ahead. And their own persons. Because their own persons. The queen that dropped dead. The queen of England that dropped dead. Oh, praise to the Lord. She had the biggest diamond on her crown. Where did she get it from? She got it from South Africa. And I'll tell you where. In the Kalinan mine in Pretoria. The Kalinan mine produced the biggest diamond you understand ever found in Zanzi. Where did it end up? On the crown of the queen of England. That's why said they decorate their own persons also. Read. That's it, that's it on that. Now give me Zerak 18 verse 3. You understand? They decorate themselves with our riches. They decorate their cities with our riches. Read. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 18 verse 3. Read. The rich man has done wrong. The rich man has done wrong. Who's the rich man? Esau, 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 Esau. Go ahead. He's the rich man. Read. And yet he threatened without. That's what they did in Marikan. The rich man done, done wrong to our people that wanted more wages. But he, was, he threatened our people with guns and he put our people to death with guns by the police at the command of Sir Ramaphosa. Read. The poor is wronged. The poor was wronged in Marikana 2012. The poor of our people was wronged. Read. And he must entreat also. And they want our people to humble down. Read. If that be for his profit. Because they were profiting because they were getting money for nothing. They were exploiting cheap labor in Marikana. Read. He will use them. They used our forefathers in Marikana. Go ahead. But if thou hast nothing. If they don't have nothing, because if they have nothing to offer, read. He will forsake thee. They will forsake you. They put guns on them. They, they, they put their forefathers to death. Read. If thou have anything, he will live with thee. You see that? If we have anything, meaning what? They still can exploit us. They're going to what? They're going to still allow us to work. Read. Yea, he will make thee bad. They will, they will strip us of everything that we have. They, they remember, this nation, this, the white, this white man, he came into our land. He came to the continent. Not only that, but in 70 AD, he destroyed our city of Jerusalem. They came into our land. They kicked us out of our land. They robbed us of the positions that they had. They stole the resources that were sitting upon the land. They stole our land. They enslaved our people. They enslaved our sons and daughters and all that. That's what they did. Ray. And will not be sorry for it. And they are not sorry for it. They hold themselves not guilty. Zechariah 11 verse 5. They will not be sorry for it. They hold themselves not guilty. Read. The book of Zechariah chapter 11 verse 5. Read. Whoso possesses, whose possessors slay them. They are, they are our possessors is our enslavers, our oppressors, the white men, the Europeans. Go ahead. And hold themselves not guilty. You see that? And they shall not be what? They shall not be sorry for it. And they hold themselves not guilty. They kill us. They put us to death. They kill our forefathers and foremothers. They rape our daughters. And they will not be sorry for it. They hold themselves not guilty. Read. And they shall sell them away. They shall. No, no. And they that what? And they that sell them say. And they that sell us. Because the nation sold us in slavery. Read. Blessed be the Lord. They, you see, after they sell us, they say, Blessed be the Lord. Who are they talking about? Hold that now. Go back to Abaku Guan. Read verse 11. I'm going to show you. After they do, they do all this to us, they say, Blessed be the Lord. Who are they, who, 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 which Lord are they referencing to? Which Lord are they making reference to? Their father, the devil. Abaku Guan verse 11. The book of Abaku chapter 1 verse 11. Read. Then shall his mind change. Then shall his what? Then shall his mind change. After they conquer us, after they kill us and rob us and rape and take everything by violence, our resources, our livestock and enslave us, then shall his what? Then shall his mind change. Then he's going to act like, you know, he's holier than thou. He's going to act like he and his God on earth. Watch what he does. Read. And he shall pass over and offend. He shall pass over and offend. Watch this. Imputing this is power unto his God. Stop right there. Doing what? Imputing 
This is power unto his God. He says, imputing this, his power unto his God. Who's the white man's God? Satan. So, what did they do after they robbed us? They gave us white Jesus. After they robbed us, they gave us white Jesus and, say, and said what? And say all nations can be saved. After they did, after they gave us white Jesus, they say, love your neighbor as yourself. No, they say, love your enemies. Forgive your enemies. That's the scriptures they started to teach in the Christian church. After they robbed us, they say, no, uh, you must love your enemies. Perverting the scripture because it's not talking about that. But that's what they did. Okay, go back to where was that now? Zechariah 11 verse 5. Read. The book of Zechariah chapter 11 verse 5. Go ahead. Whose possessors slay them. Whose possessors slay them, read. And hold themselves not guilty. And hold themselves not guilty. You see that? And shall not, shall feel, shall not feel sorry for it. Okay, read. And they that sell them are... And they that sell them say. So because the nations that the ones that sold us in captivity, our sons and daughters, okay, they sold us and what did they say? Blessed be the Lord. Imputing this his power unto his God, meaning Satan. Read. For I am rich. Because they are rich now, because of what? The reason why the white man is rich is because of what? The slave trade. Because of rape, robbery, and murder. That's why they are rich. I don't care how can they how they can spin it. They say, no, we started this company in a garage. Listen, that's old money. It's called apartheid money. It's called slave money. No, we started in our garage. We didn't have anything. I was sleeping in my car. Those are just lies they are telling you. They want you to do that. And you end up dying in that car. No. Because they don't want us to go into the Bible to see, really, was it? Did they really start in the garage? No. But they're going to give those soap stories. They say, no, Amazon was started in a garage. Now Amazon is... Listen, those are just lies. Don't believe that crap. Those are lies they are telling us. Read again. The book of Zechariah, chapter 11, verse 5. Read. Whose possessors slay them? Whose possessors slay them? Come on. And hold themselves not guilty. Read. And they that sell them say. No, no, they that study in the garage. And they that sell them say. You see that? They that sell us say. They that sold us. What did they say? Blessed be the Lord. Blessed be Satan. Read. For I am rich. You see how they got rich? Not because they started in a garage. But because they were selling us. So they've got slave money. They call it old money. Read. And their own shepherds pity them not. Our own shepherd is these leaders. So called. The politicians. The pastors. Bumutsipe. Their own shepherds pity them not. And these so-called leaders, they don't give a damn about us. They don't. They don't care about us. They don't give a damn. Isaiah 28 verse 14. They don't care. They don't care. Read that. Watch this. I'm going to show you that they don't care. The book of Isaiah chapter 28 verse 14. Read. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men. These scornful men, give one of these politicians. Give one of these pastors, these businessmen, read, of our people. Come on. That rule. Celebrities and soccer players. Go ahead. That rule, these people, which is in Jerusalem. You see that, that rule these people, because there's these politicians, they say, they are the leaders of the people. They are not the leaders. Those are not the leaders of the people. The real leaders of the people, they were killing them. Okay, come on. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death. Because they see that's why they don't pity us. Because they've made a covenant with death. Who's the who's he making reference to? The white man. Esau Edom. You understand? Watch this. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, I think it's in a back hook. It might be in a back hook. Mm, yep. Habakkuk chapter 2. Yep. Habakkuk chapter 2. Read verse 4. Start there. When I read down, watch this. The book of Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4. Read. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. You see what the Bible is saying? It says the, the, white, the soul of the white man that is lifted up in him is not right. He says his soul is not upright. He's not right. Something wrong with him. Read. But the just 
shall live by his faith. That's why we keep the commandments because we the just. We live by the faith we have in our Lord and Savior the Christ. Go ahead. Yea, also, mm -hmm. because he transgressed by wine. Because he transgresses by lies. He pushes lies throughout the earth. Read. He is a proud man. He is a what? He is a proud man. This white man is a proud man. Read. Neither keepeth at home. He is in everybody's land doing what? Stealing, robbing, murdering, deceiving, and setting, uh, what, what do they call him? An overthrow, a coup. They call it a coup d'etat. An overthrow. Read. Who enlarges his desire as hell. You see that he enlarges he enlarged his desire as hell, meaning he's greedy. He goes into a land, he destroys the land and leaves the people impoverished. Read. And is as death. And is as death. And he leaves the people in a death and hellish estate. He kills the people also to get what he wants. He will stop at nothing to get what he wants. Is that it on that? No, sir. Read. And cannot be satisfied. You see, he's telling you this white man is not is not he's greed. You, you see, you know what? You know when you want to see it at work, at the plantation, they'll tell you, no, we've reached our target this year. And our this this is the slide number one will say, No, we reached our target. We even went beyond our target. So today, this month, this year, financial year, we're gonna give you bonuses. Ne? And then the following slide, they've got new targets for the next year. And it's triple the amount. And you ask yourself, for work, where's the workforce that's going to accomplish all this? No, it's the same workforce with the same pay. And then they butter you with a bonus. That bonus, you're going to take that bonus and spend and pay all your debts. And then you're back to square one. Now, you have to work three times harder to achieve that goal to get the same bonus that you got last year they are not satisfied you understand read but gather unto him all nations because after he destroys us he says come to america come to canada here's a passport here's a visa that's what they do ne? come to the uk read and he peth unto him all people and he peth unto him all people that's why america is called the great melting pot now go back now Go back to, uh, go back to where was it? Where was we? At? Zechariah. Zechariah chapter one. Eleven. Sir. Verse five. Yes, no, no, no. Isaiah twenty-eight, verse fourteen. That's where we were. I'm almost done. I'm gonna do part two of the class because you see, I still have plenty, plenty of notes to go through. Okay, which will take another hour or two. You understand? Okay. Oh, please. Now read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 28, verse 14. I'm going to do part two of this. Okay? I still have a lot to cover. Part two, Lord's will, next week, Sabbath. Read. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, uh -huh. ye scornful men. Come on. That rule this people, which is in Jerusalem. Go ahead. Because he has said, uh -huh. we have made a covenant with death. We have made a covenant with death. The death and hell is talking about the white man. Read. And with hell are we at agreement. You see that? And with hell are we at agreement. They made an agreement with the U.S. That's what South Africa has done. They made an agreement with Britain. That's what South Africa has done. They made an agreement with Russia. That's what South Africa has done. And what's really disturbing is this. I, you see black people saying they support Ukraine. You can't make this up. Because Russia is invading Ukraine. They support Ukraine. But they forgot or Ukraine was kicking black people out of the train. They say, if you're not black, get back. Don't get into the train. That's what they were saying. When the war was, war was popping off in Ukraine, they said, no, you cannot come into the train because you're black. And black people, they are praying for Ukraine. You cannot make this up. Read. We have made a covenant with death. We have made a covenant with death. Go ahead. And with hell are we at agreement. And with hell are we at agreement. That's what, black, that's what these so-called leaders have done. Read. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, Read. it shall not come unto us. They, that's what they say. It says, when judgment comes, we are not going to be affected. Why? Because they are eating. Because again, they made a league with the white man. Now they are eating through him. They say, when judgment comes, they are not going to get affected. When famine comes, they're going to be good. You understand? That's what they are saying. When war comes, they will be protected. They think they are going to be in those underground bunkers. They're wrong. 
They're going to be put to death just like the scribes and Pharisees were put to death in 70 AD when Rome was destroying us. Read. For we have made lies our refuge. You see that? He says we have made lies our refuge. What are those lies? The white man says he'll protect them. He's lying to them. He just, it's, just an, it's just a means to an end with him. Read. And under falsehood have we hid ourselves. Under falsehood have we hid ourselves. Is that it on that? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, go back to Revelation now. Revelation chapter 13, verse 7. Okay. Revelation 13, verse 7. You see that Revelation 13, verse 7? There's a Lord in there. There's a Lord in there. And guess what? I cut it short. There's a Lord. There's much more in that verse. Read verse 7 again. The book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 7. Read. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. To make war with the saints, meaning our people. Go ahead. And to overcome them. and to overcome as they conquer us, read. And power. And what? And power. And the spirit of war was given unto them, and the kingdoms of the earth was given unto him to rule over. Read. Was given him uh -huh. over all kingdoms. Over all kindreds of the earth. And tongues. And tongues, because we speak, we are scattered among all nations, we speak in different languages now. Read. And nations. And nations, because we are Israel is scattered among all nations. So they made war with us. You understand? Why? Because the devil gave this man the power that he has. He did not get this power because he's clever. He did not get the riches that he's got because he's a genius, he's smart. No. The power and the riches and all the signs that he's able to do, the breakthrough of signs that he's able to do is because of what? Is because the devil gave him his power. Jump up to verse 4. Verse 4. Uh -huh. And they worshipped the dragon. They did what? And they worshipped the dragon. They worshipped the dragon. Read. Which gave power unto the beast. Which gave power unto the beast. Read. And they worshipped the beast. Uh -huh. The nations now, because they, this white man has power, now they worship this white man. Read. Say. Mm -hmm. Who is like unto the beast? Who is like unto the beast? Who is like this white man? Who is able to make war with him? Nah, no one. So, now, jump up to verse 2 now. Verse 2. Go ahead. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. Read. And his feet were as the feet of a bear. Go ahead. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion. Read. And the dragon. The what? And the dragon. And Satan. Gave him his power. Satan gave this white man the power that he has. Go ahead. And Meaning the, the, the power that he has upon this earth. The spirit of war and the empires that he owns. Read. And his seat. And his seat. His, posi his great position on this earth. Read. And great authority. And what? And great authority. Great influence. He's got great influence because what? He worships the devil. That's why. That's why they were able, they are able to do so. These technological advancements. Who Sputnik? Hmm? Who Apollo 11? Landing on the moon. Landing on Mars in 2004, I think. With spirit and opportunity, those two rovers. Yes. That's not because they're smart, because I used to follow those things. I wanted to do that stuff. That stuff. Now all the praise, I don't need to go up there. The most I will pick me up. I don't need to go up there. Listen, we don't need to go up there. The Lord will pick us up with the chariots. Understand that. We don't need to try to, uh, no. Keep the commandments, and the Lord will beam us up. Understand that thing. Let's give the Lord a hand for that. All praises. All praises to the Most High. So, brothers and sisters, I'm going to end the class here. I'm going to do part two because I still have a lot to cover. I still have a lot to cover. I have not covered World War I. I have not covered World War II. I have not covered World War III. That's coming. I have not covered Esau's science. I have not covered none of that. I'm still going to go over all that. You understand? I still need to deal with all that stuff. I still need to deal with... Go back to um, 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 10 because... I'm going to show you something. 2 Thessalonians 2, because I still need to deal with those things, which I'll deal with them next week on the Sabbath again, Lord's will, Lord's will, if it be the Lord's will. Okay, read that. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 10. Watch this. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10. No, no, verse 9, verse 9. Verse 9. Uh -huh. Even him mm -hmm. who's coming. The him, read verse 7. I'm going to show you another name that this white man is called in the Bible. Verse 7. Verse 7. Go ahead. For the mystery of iniquity. For the what? 
for the mystery of iniquity. That's another of his name. The mystery of iniquity. This white man's called the mystery of iniquity. Or what? The abomination that make it desolate. That's his name. Read again. Verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity. Uh -huh. That already went. The mystery of iniquity is already in rulership. Rome. Go ahead. Only he. Only he which is the Mosai. Who now let him will let. The Mosai is allowing this man. Is giving his, his man extra time to rule. You understand? Go ahead. Until he be taken out of the way. Until he is wiped out. He's taken out of his kingdom. Read. And then shall that wicked be revealed. You see what is called in verse 8? The wicked. Verse 7 was called the mystery of iniquity. Verse 9, verse 8 is called what? The wicked. Read. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. You see that the Lord is going to consume this white man with the spirit of his mouth. Hold that. Give me, give me um, Hebrews 4 and 12. It's not in my notes. Hebrews 4 verse 12. He says, whom the Lord will consume with the spirit of his mouth. Because we need to wake up and go out to the street corners and consume this white man with the spirit of the Lord's mouth. When we teach the people on the street face to face. Read. The book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. Go ahead. For the word of God is quick and powerful. The word of God is quick and powerful. Come on. And sharper than any two-edged sword. Watch this. Read. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Stop right there. Dividing what? Piercing even what to the dividing asunder of what? Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Stop. Soul and spirit. That's our job. To deal with the man's spirit and the man's soul. We don't want to take physically. You understand? But watch what happens when the Lord returns. Keep reading on that verse. And of the joints and marrow. And, and of the what? And of the joints and marrow. That's physical. The joints and marrow, that's physical. That's when the Lord returns. You understand? And he gives us power to become hunters. That's what he's talking about right there. Okay? Go back now. Second Thessalonians 2. Read verse 8. Second book of Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 8. Read. And then shall that wicked be revealed. And then shall that wicked be revealed. Go ahead. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. Through the prophets. Read. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. When the, the, that's, that, that's, the, that's the marrow and joints now. Read. Watch this. Even him. Even him. The him is this, the mystery of iniquity in verse 7. The wicked in verse 8. The him. Read. Who's coming. Who's coming. Come on. Is after the waking of Satan. You see that? This man is operating, is operating with a different spirit with him. If this man operates with a different spirit that many, many of our people don't know or understand or can even comprehend. He is operating with a different spirit. When they come together in some kind of a meeting and all that, Satan is in the midst of them. When we come together in the spirit of the Lord, the most like God and his angel is in the midst of us. Read. With all power. With all power, we went over that. He was, power was given unto him to make war with the saints. Read. And signs. And what? And signs. We have not dealt with that. Go ahead. And lying wonders. We have not dealt with that. So signs and lying wonders, that's going to go into part two of the series. You understand? So this end the part one of the house of the dragon. You understand? Here's the things to take away. In the house of the dragon, the house of the, the dragon, we know who the dragon is now. The dragon is the white man. Okay? And he's got many names in the Bible. The wicked. The dread dragon. You understand? You understand? The wicked. The son of perdition. The man of sin. You okay? What am I missing? Uh, Lucifer. The beast. The serpent. Yes, the serpent. He's got many names. The Chaldeans. You see that? He's got many names in the Bible. But he's all making reference to one race on this earth. The wicked. You understand? Satan. The devil. He's also called Satan. He's called the devil. You see that? He's got many names. One thing, another thing to take away is that in the house of the dragon, they worship Satan. 
In the house of the white man, the entire Caucasian race, they worship the devil. Understand that. Okay? Not only that, but the power and riches that they have upon this earth is because why? They worship the devil. And in the house of the devil is what? Is violence, is robbery, is murder, and they hold themselves not guilty. Is riches also, which they got by robbery and murder and deceit and oppression. Understand that? So, I'm going to end the class right there. Oh, praise the Lord. Let's break bread. Let's break bread. Sisters, get the wine ready. Get the wine ready. Okay, let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Okay. For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed to pray, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had sat, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as he drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as he eat this bread and drink this cup, he do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. All praises to the Most High, all praises to the Lord.